Section 1 of The Complaint, or Night Thoughts, by Edward Young. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Complaint, or Night Thoughts. Preface. As the occasion of this poem was real, not fictitious, so the method pursued in it was rather imposed by what spontaneously arose in the author's mind on that occasion, than meditated or designed, which will appear very probable from the nature of it. For it differs from the common mode of poetry, which is, from long narrations to draw short morals. Here, on the contrary, the narrative is short, and the morality arising from it makes the bulk of the poem. The reason of it is, that the facts mentioned did naturally pour these moral reflections on the thought of the writer. Night First On Life, Death, and Immortality To the Right Honorable Arthur Onslow, Esquire, Speaker of the House of Commons Tired nature's sweet restorer, balmy sleep, He, like the world, his ready visit pays, Where fortune smiles, the wretched he forsakes. Swift on his downy pinion flies from woe, and lights on lids unsullied with a tear. From short, as usual, and disturbed repose, I wake. How happy they who wake no more! Yet that were vain, if dreams infest the grave. I wake, emerging from a sea of dreams tumultuous, where my wrecked desponding thought, from wave to wave of fancied misery, at random drove, her helm of reason lost. Though now restored, tis only change of pain, a bitter change, severer for severe the day too short for my distress and night even in the zenith of her dark domain is sunshine to the colour of my fate night sable goddess from her ebon throne in rayless majesty now stretches forth her leaden sceptre o'er a slumbering world silence how dead and darkness how profound nor eye nor listening ear an object finds creation sleeps tis as the general pulse of life stood still and nature made a pause, an awful pause, prophetic of her end. And let her prophecy be soon fulfilled. Fate, drop the curtain. I can lose no more. Silence and darkness, solemn sisters, twins from ancient night, who nurse the tender thought to reason, and on reason build resolve, that column of true majesty in man. Assist me. I will thank you in the grave. The grave your kingdom, there this frame shall fall a victim sacred to your dreary shrine. But what are ye, thou who didst put to flight primeval silence, when the morning stars, exulting, shouted o'er the rising ball? O thou, whose word from solid darkness struck that spark, the sun, strike wisdom from my soul, my soul which flies to thee, her trust, her treasure, as misers to their gold, while others rest. Through this opaque of nature and of soul, this double night transmit one pitying ray to lighten and to cheer o oh, lead my mind a mind that fain would wander from its woe lead it through various scenes of life and death and from each scene the noblest truths inspire nor less inspire my conduct than my song teach my best reason reason my best will teach rectitude and fix my firm resolve wisdom to wed and pay her long arrear nor let the file of thy vengeance poured on this devoted head, be poured in vain. The bell strikes one. We take no note of time but from its loss. To give it then a tongue is wise in man. As if an angel spoke, I feel the solemn sound. If heard aright, it is the knell of my departed hours. Where are they? With the years beyond the flood. It is the signal that demands dispatch. How much is to be done? My hopes and fears start up alarmed, and o'er life's narrow verge look down, on what? A fathomless abyss, a dread eternity, how surely mine! And can eternity belong to me, poor pensioner, on the bounties of an hour? How poor, how rich, how abject, how august, how complicate, how wonderful is man! How passing wonder he who made him such! Who centred in our make such strange extremes! From different natures marvelously mixed, connection exquisite of distant worlds! distinguished link in being's endless chain, midway from nothing to the deity, a beam ethereal, sullied and absorbed, though sullied and dishonored, still divine, dim miniature of greatness absolute, an heir of glory, a frail child of dust, helpless immortal, insect infinite, a worm, a god, I tremble at myself, and in myself am lost, at home a stranger, thought wanders up and down, surprised, aghast, 
and wondering at her own, how reason reels. Oh, what a miracle to man is man, triumphantly distressed, what joy, what dread, alternately transported and alarmed, what can preserve my life, or what destroy? An angel's arm can't snatch me from the grave, legions of angels can't confine me there. Tis past conjecture, all things rise in proof, while o'er my limbs sleep soft dominion spread, what though my soul fantastic measures trod o'er fairy fields, or mourned along the gloom of pathless woods, or down the craggy steep hurled headlong, swam with pain the mantled pool, or scaled the cliff, or danced on hollow winds, with antic shapes, wild natives of the brain. Her ceaseless flight, though devious, speaks her nature, of subtler essence than the trodden clod, active, aerial, towering, unconfined, unfettered with her gross companion's fall. Even silent night proclaims my soul immortal. Even silent night proclaims eternal day. For human weal, heaven husbands all events. Dull sleep instructs, nor sport vain dreams in vain. Why then their loss deplore that are not lost? Why wanders wretched thought their tombs around in infidel distress? Are angels there? Slumberers raked up in dust, ethereal fire? They live, they greatly live a life on earth, unkindled, unconceived, and from an eye of tenderness let heavenly pity fall on me, more justly numbered with the dead. This is the desert, this the solitude. How populous, how vital is the grave! This is creation's melancholy vault, the veil funereal, the sad cypress gloom, the land of apparitions, empty shades. All, all on earth, is shadow, all beyond is substance, the reverse is folly's creed. How solid all, where change shall be no more. This is the bud of being, the dim dawn, the twilight of our day, the vestibule. Life's theatre as yet is shut, and death, strong death, alone can heave the massy bar this gross impediment of clay remove, and make us embryos of existence free. From real life, but little more remote is he, not yet a candidate for light, the future embryo, slumbering in his sire. Embryos we must be, till we burst the shell, yon ambient azure shell, and spring to life, the life of gods, O oh, transport, and of man. Yet man, fool man, here buries all his thoughts, inters celestial hopes without one sigh, prisoner of earth and pent beneath the moon here pinions all his wishes winged by heaven to fly at infinite and reach it there where seraphs gather immortality on life's fair tree fast by the throne of god what golden joys ambrosial clustering glow in his full beam and ripen for the just where momentary ages are no more where time and pain and chance and death expire and is it in the flight of threescore years to push eternity from human thought, and smother souls immortal in the dust? A soul immortal, spending all her fires, wasting her strength in strenuous idleness, thrown into tumult, raptured or alarmed, at aught the scene can threaten or indulge, resembles ocean into tempest wrought, to waft a feather or to drown a fly. Where falls this censure? It o'erwhelms myself, how was my heart encrusted by the world? Oh, how self-fettered was my groveling soul! How like a worm was I wrapped round and round in silken thought, which reptile fancy spun, till darkened reason lay quite clouded o'er, with soft conceit of endless comfort here, nor yet put forth her wings to reach the skies. Night visions may be friend, as sung above, our waking dreams are fatal. How I dreamed of things impossible! Could sleep do more? of joys perpetual and perpetual change, of stable pleasures on the tossing wave, eternal sunshine in the storms of life. How richly were my noontide trances hung with gorgeous tapestries of pictured joys. Joy behind joy in endless perspective, till at death's toll, whose restless iron tongue calls daily for his millions at a meal. Starting I woke, and found myself undone. Where now my frenzy's pompous furniture? The cobwebbed cottage with its ragged wall of mouldering mud is royalty to me. The spider's most attenuated thread is cord, is cable, to man's tender tie on earthly bliss. It breaks at every breeze. O oh, ye blessed scenes of permanent delight, full above measure, lasting beyond bound. A perpetuity of bliss is bliss. Could you, so rich in rapture, fear an end, that ghastly thought would drink up all your joy? 
and quite unparadise the realms of light. Safe are you lodged above these rolling spheres, the baleful influence of whose giddy dance sheds sad vicissitude on all beneath. Here teems with revolutions every hour, and rarely for the better, or the best, more mortal than the common births of fate. Each moment has its sickle, emulous of time's enormous scythe, whose ample sweep strikes empires from the root. Each moment plays his little weapon in the narrower sphere of sweet domestic comfort, and cuts down the fairest bloom of sublunary bliss. Bliss! Sublunary bliss! Proud words and vain! Implicit treason to divine decree! A bold invasion of the rights of heaven! I clasped the phantoms, and I found them air. Oh, had I waited ere my fond embrace! What darts of agony had missed my heart! Death! Great proprietor of all! Tis thine to tread out empire and to quench the stars! The sun himself by thy permission shines, and, one day, thou shalt pluck him from his sphere, amid such mighty plunder. Why exhaust thy partial quiver on a mark so mean? Why thou peculiar rancor reeked on me? Insatiate archer, could not one suffice? Thy shaft flew thrice, and thrice my peace was slain, and thrice, ere thrice young moon had filled her horn. O oh, Cynthia, why so pale? Dost thou lament thy wretched neighbor? Grieve to see thy wheel of ceaseless change outworld in human life? How wanes my borrowed bliss! From fortune's smile, precarious courtesy, not virtue sure, self-given, solar ray of sound delight. In every varied posture, place, and hour, how widowed every thought of every joy! Thought, busy thought, too busy for my peace, through the dark postern of time long lapsed, led softly by the stillness of the night, led like a murderer, and such it proves, strays, wretched rover, or the pleasing past, in quest of wretchedness perversely strays, and finds all desert now, and meets the ghosts of my departed joys, a numerous train. I rue the riches of my former fate, sweet comfort's blasted clusters I lament. I trembled at the blessings once so dear, and every pleasure pains me to the heart. Yet why complain, or why complain for one? Hangs out the sun his luster but for me, the single man? Are angels all beside? I mourn for millions, tis the common lot. In this shape, or in that, has fate entailed the mother's throes on all of woman born? Not more the children than sure heirs of pain. War, famine, pest, volcano, storm, and fire, intestine, broils, oppression, with her heart wrapped up in triple brass, besiege mankind. God's image disinherited of day, here plunged in mines, forgets the sun was made. There, beings deathless as their haughty lord, are hammered to the galling ore for life, and plough the winter's wave, and reap despair. Some, for hard masters, broken under arms, in battle lopped away, with half their limbs, beg bitter bread through realms their valor saved, if so the tyrant or his minion doom. Want an incurable disease, fell pair, on hopeless multitudes remorseless seize at once, and make a refuge of the grave. How groaning hospitals eject their dead! What numbers groan for sad admission there! What numbers, once in fortune's lap high-fed, solicit the cold hand of charity, to shock us more, solicited in vain! Ye silken sons of pleasure, since in pains ye rue more modish visits, visit here, and breathe from your debauch, give and reduce surfeit's dominion over you. But so great your impudence, you blush at what is right. Happy did sorrow seize on such alone. Not prudence can defend, or virtue save. Disease invades the chastest temperance, and punishment the guiltless, and alarm through thickest shades pursues the fond of peace. Man's caution often into danger turns, and his guard falling crushes him to death. Not happiness itself makes good her name. Our very wishes give us not our wish. How distant off the thing we dote on most, from that for which we dote, felicity. The smoothest course of nature has its pains, and truest friends, through error, wound our rest. Without misfortune, what calamities, and what hostilities without a foe? Nor are foes wanting to the best on earth. But endless is the list of human ills, and sighs might sooner fail than cause to sigh. Apart how small of the terraqueous globe is tenanted by man, the rest a waste, rocks, deserts, 
frozen seas and burning sands, wild haunts of monsters, poisons, stings, and death, such as earth's melancholy map. But, far more sad, this earth is a true map of man. So bounded are its haughty lord's delights to woe's wide empire, where deep troubles toss, loud sorrows howl, envenomed passions bite, ravenous calamities are vital seas, and threatening fate wide opens to devour. What then am I who sorrow for myself? In age, in infancy, from others' aid is all our hope, to teach us to be kind, that nature's first last lesson to mankind. The selfish heart deserves the pain it feels, more generous sorrow, while it sinks, exalts, and conscious virtue mitigates the pang, nor virtue more than prudence bids me give swollen thought a second channel, who divide, they weaken too, the torrent of their grief. Take then, O world, thy much indebted tear, how sad a sight is human happiness, to those whose thought can pierce beyond an hour. O thou, whate'er thou art, whose heart exalts, wouldst thou I should congratulate thy fate? I know thou wouldst, thy pride demands it from me. Let thy pride pardon what thy nature needs, the salutary censure of a friend. Thou happy wretch, by blindness thou art blessed, by dotage dandled to perpetual smiles. No, smiler, at thy peril art thou pleased. Thy pleasure is the promise of thy pain. Misfortune, like a creditor severe, but rises in demand for her delay. She makes a scourge of past prosperity, to sting thee more, and double thy distress. Lorenzo, fortune makes her court to thee, thy fond heart dances, while the siren sings. Dear is thy welfare, think me not unkind, I would not damp, but to secure thy joys. Think not that fear is sacred to the storm, stand on thy guard against the smiles of fate. Is heaven tremendous in its frowns? Most sure, and in its favors formidable too. Its favors here are trials, not rewards a call to duty, not discharge from care, and should alarm us full as much as woes. Awake us to their cause and consequence, or our scant conduct give a jealous eye, and make us tremble, weighed with our desert. Ah, nature's tumult, and chastise her joys, lest while we clasp we kill them, nay, invert to worse than simple misery their charms. Revolted joys, like foes in civil war, like bosom friendships to resentment soured, with rage and venomed rise against our peace. Beware what earth calls happiness, beware all joys, but joys that never can expire. Who builds on less than an immortal base, fond as he seems, condemns his joys to death. Mine died with thee, Philander, thy last sigh dissolved the charm, the disenchanted earth lost all her luster. Where her glittering towers, her golden mountains, where? All darkened down to naked waste, a dreary veil of tears the great magician's dead, thou poor pale piece of outcast earth in darkness. What a change from yesterday! Thy darling hope so near, long labored prize. Oh, how ambition flushed thy glowing cheek! Ambition truly great of virtuous praise. Death's subtle seed within, sly, treacherous miner, working in the dark, smiled at thy well-concerted scheme, and beckoned the worm to riot on that rose so red. Unfaded ere it fell, one moment's prey, man's foresight is conditionally wise. Lorenzo, wisdom into folly turns, oft the first instant its idea fair to laboring thought is born. How dim our eye! The present moment terminates our sight. Clouds thick as those on doomsday drown the next. We penetrate, we prophesy in vain. Time is dealt out by particles, and each, ere mingled with the streaming sands of life, by fate's inviolable oath is sworn, deep silence, where eternity begins. By nature's law, what may be, may be now. There's no prerogative in human hours. In human hearts, what bolder thought can rise than man's presumption on tomorrow's dawn? Where is tomorrow? In another world. For numbers this is certain. The reverse is sure to none. And yet, on this perhaps, this peradventure, infamous for lies, as on a rock of adamant, we build our mountain hopes, spin out eternal schemes, as we the fatal sisters could outspin, and, big with life's futurities, expire. Not even Philander had bespoke his shroud, nor had he cause, a warning was denied. How many fall as sudden, not as safe. As sudden, though for years admonished home, 
of human ills the last extreme beware beware lorenzo a slow sudden death how dreadful that deliberate surprise be wise to-day tis madness to defer next day the fatal precedent will plead thus on till wisdom is pushed out of life procrastination is the thief of time year after year it steals till all are fled and to the mercies of a moment leaves the vast concerns of an eternal scene if not so frequent would not this be strange that tis so frequent this is stranger still of man's miraculous mistakes this bears the palm that all men are about to live for ever on the brink of being born all pay themselves the compliment to think they one day shall not drivel and their pride on this reversion takes up ready praise at least their own their future selves applaud how excellent that life they ne'er will lead time lodged in their own hands is folly's veils that lodged in fates to wisdom they consign the thing they can't but purpose they postpone tis not in folly not to scorn a fool and scarce in human wisdom to do more all promises poor dilatory man and that through every stage when young indeed in full content we sometimes nobly rest unanxious for ourselves and only wish as duteous sons our fathers were more wise at thirty man suspects himself a fool knows it at forty and reforms his plan at fifty chides his infamous delay pushes his prudent purpose to resolve in all the magnanimity of thought resolves and re-resolves then dies the same and why because he thinks himself immortal all men think all men mortal but themselves themselves when some alarming shock of fate strikes through their wounded hearts the sudden dread but their hearts wounded like the wounded air soon close where past the shaft no trace is found as from the wing no scar the sky retains the parted wave no furrow from the keel so dies in human hearts the thought of death even with the tender tear which nature sheds or those we love we drop it in their grave can i forget philander that were strange o oh, my full heart but should i give it vent the longest night though longer far would fail and the lark listened to my midnight song the sprightly lark shrill matin wakes the morn grief sharpest thorn hard pressing on my breast i strive with wakeful melody to cheer the sullen gloom sweet philomel like thee and call the stars to listen every star is death to mine enamoured of thy lay yet be not vain there are who thine excel and charm through distant ages wrapped in shade prisoner of darkness to the silent hours how often i repeat their rage divine to lull my griefs and steal my heart from woe i roll their raptures but not catch their fire dark though not blind like thee meanides or milton thee ah could i reach your strain or his who made meanides our own man too he sung immortal man i sing oft bursts my song beyond the bounds of life what now but immortality can please oh had he pressed his theme pursued the track which opens out of darkness into day or had he mounted on his wing of fire soared where i sink and sung immortal man how had it blessed mankind and rescued me end of section one section two of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this librivox recording is in the public domain on time death and friendship to the right honourable the earl of wilmington night second on time death and friendship when the cock crew he wept smote by that eye which looks on me on all that power who bids this midnight sentinel with clarion shrill emblem of that which shall wake the dead rouse souls from slumber into thoughts of heaven shall i too weep where then is fortitude and fortitude abandoned where is man i know the terms on which he sees the light he that is born is listed life is war eternal war with woe who bears it best deserves it least on other themes i'll dwell lorenzo let me turn my thoughts on thee and thine on themes may profit profit there where most thy need themes to the genuine growth of dear philander's dust he thus though dead may still befriend what themes time's wondrous price death friendship and philander's final scene so could i touch these themes 
as might obtain thine ear, nor leave thy heart quite disengaged. The good deed would delight me, half impress, of my dark cloud and iris, and from grief call glory. Dost thou mourn Philander's fate? I know thou sayest it. Says thy life the same? He mourns the dead who lives as they desire. Where is that thrift, that avarice of time, O glorious avarice, thought of death inspires, as rumoured robberies endear our gold? O time, than gold more sacred, more load than lead to fools, and fools reputed wise. What moment granted man without account? What years are squandered, wisdom's debt unpaid? Our wealth in days, all due to that discharge. Haste, haste, he lies in wait, he's at the door, insidious death. Should his strong hand arrest, no composition sets the prisoner free. Eternity's inexorable chain fast binds, and vengeance claims the full arrear. How late I shuddered on the brink, how late life called for her last refuge in despair. That time is mine, O Mead, to thee I owe. Fain would I pay thee with eternity. But ill my genius answers my desire. My sickly song is mortal, past thy cure. Except the will, that dies not with my strain. For what calls thy disease, Lorenzo? Not for Esculapian, but for moral aid thou thinkest it folly to be wise too soon. Youth is not rich in time, it may be poor. Part with it as with money, sparing, pay no moment, but in purchase of its worth. And what it's worth, ask deathbeds, they can tell. Part with it as with life, reluctant, big with holy hope of nobler time to come. Time higher aimed, still nearer the great mark, of men and angels, virtue more divine. Is this our duty, wisdom, glory, gain? These heaven benign and vital union binds, and sport we like the natives of the bow, when vernal suns inspire? Amusement reigns man's great demand, to trifle is to live, and is it then a trifle, too, to die? Thou sayest I preach, Lorenzo, tis confessed. What if for once I preach thee quite awake? Who wants amusement in the flame of battle? Is it not treason to the soul immortal, her foes in arms, eternity the prize? Will toys amuse when medicines cannot cure? When spirits ebb, when life's enchanting scenes their luster lose, and lessen in our sight, as lands and cities with their glittering spires, to the poor shattered bark by sudden storm, thrown off to sea and soon to perish there? Will toys amuse? No, thrones will then be toys, and earth and skies seem dust upon the scale. Redeem we time? Its loss we dearly buy. What pleads Lorenzo for his high-prized sports? He pleads time's numerous blanks. He loudly pleads the straw-like trifles on life's common stream. From whom those blanks and trifles but from thee? No blank, no trifle, nature made or meant. Virtue or purposed virtue still be thine. This cancels thy complaint at once. This leaves in act no trifle and no blank in time. This greatens, fills, immortalizes all. This the blessed art of turning all to gold. This the good heart's prerogative to raise a royal tribute from the poorest hours. Immense revenue every moment pays. If nothing more than purpose in thy power, thy purpose firm is equal to the deed. Who does the best his circumstance allows, does well, acts nobly. Angels could no more. Our outward act indeed admits restraint. Tis not in things or thought to domineer. Guard well thy thought, our thoughts are heard in heaven. On all important time, through every age, though much and warm the wise have urged, the man is yet unborn, who duly weighs an hour. I've lost a day, the prince who nobly cried, had been an emperor without his crown. Of Rome? Say, rather, lord of human race. He spoke as if deputed by mankind. So should all speak, so reason speaks in all. From the soft whispers of that god in man, why fly to folly? Why to frenzy fly? For rescue from the blessing we possess. Time the supreme, time is eternity. Pregnant with all eternity can give. Pregnant with all that makes archangels smile. Who murders time, he crushes in the birth a power ethereal, only not adored. Ah, how unjust to nature and himself is thoughtless, thankless, inconsistent man. Like children babbling nonsense in their sports, we censure nature for a span too short. That span too short, we tax as tedious, too. Torture invention, 
all expedients tire to lash the lingering moments into speed and whirl us happy riddance from ourselves art brainless art our furious charioteer for nature's voice unstifled would recall drives headlong towards the precipice of death death most our dread death thus more dreadful made oh what a riddle of absurdity leisure is pain takes off our chariot wheels how heavily we drag the load of life blessed leisure is our curse like that of cain it makes us wander wander earth around to fly that tyrant thought as atlas groaned the world beneath we groan beneath an hour we cry for mercy to the next amusement the next amusement mortgages our fields slight inconvenience prisons hardly frown from hateful time if prison set us free yet when death kindly tenders us relief we call him cruel years to moments shrink ages to years the telescope is turned to man's false optics from his folly false time in advance behind him hides his wings and seems to creep decrepit with his age behold him when passed by what then is seen but his broad pinions swifter than the winds and all mankind in contradiction strong rueful aghast cry out on his career leave to thy foes these errors and these ills to nature just their cause and cure explore not short heaven's bounty boundless our expense no niggard nature men are prodigals we waste not use our time we breathe not live time wasted is existence used is life and bare existence man to live ordained rings and oppresses with enormous weight and why since time was given for use not waste enjoined to fly with tempest tide and stars to keep his speed nor ever wait for man time's use was doomed a pleasure waste a pain that man might feel his error if unseen and feeling fly to labour for his cure not blundering split on idleness for ease life's cares are comforts such by heaven designed he that has none must make them or be wretched cares are employments and without employ the soul is on a rack the rack of rest to souls most adverse action all their joy here then the riddle marked above unfolds then time turns torment when man turns a fool we rave we wrestle with great nature's plan we thwart the deity and tis decreed who thwart his will shall contradict their own hence are unnatural quarrels with ourselves our thoughts at enmity our bosom broils we push time from us and we wish him back lavish of lustrums and yet fond of life life we think long and short death seek and shun body and soul like peevish man and wife united jar and yet are loath to part o oh, the dark days of vanity while here how tasteless and how terrible when gone gone they ne'er go when past they haunt us still the spirit walks of every day deceased and smiles an angel or a fury frowns nor death nor life delight us if time past and time possessed both pain us what can please that which the deity to please ordained time used the man who consecrates his hours by vigorous effort and an honest aim at once he draws the sting of life and death he walks with nature and her paths are peace our errors cause and cure are seen see next time's nature origin importance speed and thy great gain from urging his career all sensual man because untouched unseen he looks on time as nothing nothing else is truly man's tis fortune's time's a god hast thou ne'er heard of time's omnipotence for or against what wonders he can do and will to stand blank neuter he disdains not on those terms was time heaven's stranger sent on his important embassy to man lorenzo no on the long destined hour from everlasting ages growing ripe that memorable hour of wondrous birth when the dread sire on emanation bent and big with nature rising in his might called forth creation for then time was born by godhead streaming through a thousand worlds not on those terms from the great days of heaven from old eternity's mysterious orb was time cut off and cast beneath the skies the skies which watch him in his new abode measuring his motions by revolving spheres that horologue machinery divine hours days and months and years his children play 
like numerous wings around him as he flies or rather as unequal plumes they shape his ample pinions swift as darted flame to gain his goal to reach his ancient rest and join anew eternity his sire in his immutability to nest when worlds that count his circles now unhinged fate the loud signal sounding headlong rush to timeless nights and chaos whence they rose why spur the speedy why with levities new wing thy short short days to rapid flight knowest thou or what thou dost or what is done man flies from time and time from man too soon in sad divorce this double flight must end and then where are we where lorenzo then thy sports thy pomps i grant thee in a state not unambitious in the ruffled shroud thy period tomb's triumphant arch beneath has death his fopperies then well may life put on her plume and in her rainbow shine ye well arrayed ye lilies of our land ye lilies male who neither toil nor spin a sister lilies might if not so wise as solomon more sumptuous to the sight ye delicate who nothing can support yourselves most insupportable for whom the winter rose must blow the sun put on a brighter beam in leo silky soft favonius breathe still softer or be chid and other worlds send odors sauce and song and robes and notions framed in foreign looms o ye lorenzos of our age who deem one moment unamused a misery not made for feeble man who call aloud for every bauble drivelled over by sense for rattles and conceits of every cast for change of follies and relays of joy to drag your patient through the tedious length of a short winter's day say sages say wits oracles say dreamers of gay dreams how will you weather an eternal night where such expedients fail o treacherous conscience while she seems to sleep on rose and myrtle lulled with siren song while she seems nodding o'er her charge to drop on headlong appetite the slackened rein and gives us up to license unrecalled unmarked see from behind her secret stand the sly informer minutes every fault and her dread diary with horror fills not the gross act alone employs her pen she reconnoitres fancy's airy band a watchful foe the formidable spy listening or hears the whispers of our camp our dawning purposes of heart explores and steals our embryos of iniquity as all rapacious usurers conceal their doomsday book from all consuming heirs thus with indulgence most severe she treats us spendthrifts of inestimable time unnoted notes each moment misapplied in leaves more durable than leaves of brass writes our whole history which death shall read in every pale delinquent's private ear and judgment publish publish to more worlds than this and endless age in groans resound lorenzo such that sleeper in thy breast such is her slumber and her vengeance such for slighted counsel such thy future peace and thinkest thou still thou canst be wise too soon but why on time so lavish is my song on this great theme kind nature keeps a school to teach her sons herself each night we die each morn are born anew each day a life and shall we kill each day if trifling kills sure vice must butcher oh what heaps of slain cry out for vengeance on us time destroyed is suicide where more than blood is spilt time flies death urges knells call heaven invites hell threatens all exerts in effort all more than creation labors labors more and is there in creation what amidst this tumult universal wing dispatch and ardent energy supinely yawns man sleeps and man alone and man whose fate fate irreversible entire extreme endless hair hung breeze shaken o'er the gulf a moment trembles drops and man for whom all else is in alarm man the sole cause of this surrounding storm and yet he sleeps as the storm rocked to rest throw years away throw empires and be blameless moments seize heavens on their wing a moment we may wish when worlds want wealth to buy bid day stand still bid him drive back his car and re-import the period past re-give the given hour lorenzo more than miracles we want lorenzo oh for yesterdays to come such is the language of the man awake his ardour such for what oppresses thee 
And is his ardor vain, Lorenzo? No. That more than miracle the gods indulge. Today is yesterday returned, returned full power to cancel, expiate, raise, adorn, and reinstate us on the rock of peace. Let it not share its predecessor's fate, nor, like its elder sisters, die a fool. Shall it evaporate and fume, fly off fuliginous, and stain us deeper still? Shall we be poorer for the plenty poured, more wretched for the clemencies of heaven? Where shall I find him? Angels, tell me where. You know him, he is near you. Point him out. Shall I see glories beaming from his brow, or trace his footsteps by the rising flowers? Your golden wings, now hovering o'er him, shed protection. Now are waving in applause to that blessed son of foresight, lord of fate, that awful independent on to-morrow, whose work is done, who triumphs in the past, whose yesterdays look backwards with a smile, nor, like the Parthian, wound him as they fly, that common but opprobious lot, past hours, if not by guilt, yet wound us by their flight. If folly bounds our prospect by the grave, all feeling of futurity benumbed, all godlike passion for eternals quenched, all relish of realities expired, renounced all correspondence with the skies, our freedom chained, quite wingless our desire, in sense dark prisoned all that ought to soar, prone to the centre, crawling in the dust, dismounted every great and glorious aim, imbruted every faculty divine, heart buried in the rubbish of the world. The world, that gulf of souls, immortal souls, souls elevate, angelic, winged with fire, to reach the distant skies, and triumph there on thrones which shall not mourn their masters changed, though we from earth ethereal they that fell. Such veneration do, O oh man, to man, who venerate themselves the world despise. For what, gay friend, is this escutcheoned world which hangs out death in one eternal night, a night that glooms us in the noontide ray, and wraps our thought at banquets in the shroud? Life's little stage is a small eminence, inch high the grave above, that home of man, where dwells the multitude. We gaze around, we read their monuments, we sigh, and while we sigh, we sink, and are what we deplored. Lamenting or lamented, all our lot. Is death at distance? No, he has been on thee, and given sure earnest of his final blow. These hours that lately smiled, where are they now? Pallid to thought and ghastly, drowned, all drowned, in that great deep, which nothing disembogues. And dying, they bequeath thee small renown. The rest are on the wing, how fleet their flight. Already has the fatal train took fire. A moment, and the world's blown up to thee. The sun is darkness, and the stars are dust. Tis greatly wise to talk with our past hours, and ask them what report they bore to heaven, and how they might have borne more welcome news. Their answers form what men experience call, if wisdom's friend her best, if not worst foe. O oh, reconcile them, kind experience cries, there's nothing here but what as nothing weighs. The more our joy, the more we know it vain, and by success our tutor to despair. Nor is it only thus, but must be so. Who knows not this, though gray, is still a child. Loose then from earth the grasp of fond desire. Weigh anchor, and some happier climb explore. Art thou so moored thou canst not disengage, nor give thy thoughts a ply to future scenes? Art thou so moored thou canst not disengage, nor give thy thoughts a ply to future scenes? Since, by life's passing breath, blown up from earth, light as the summer's dust, we take in air a moment's giddy flight, and fall again. Join the dull mass, increase the trodden soil, and sleep, till earth herself shall be no more. Since then, as emmets their small world o'erthrown, we, sore amazed, from out earth's ruins crawl, and rise to fate extreme of foul or fair, as man's own choice, controller of the skies, as man's despotic will, perhaps one hour, oh, how omnipotent is time, decrees, should not each warning give a strong alarm? Warning, far less than that of bosom torn from bosom, bleeding o'er the sacred dead. Should not each dial strike us as we pass, portentous, as the written wall which struck o'er midnight bowls the proud Assyrian pale, erewhile high-flushed with insolence and wine? Like that the dial speaks, and points to thee, Lorenzo, loath to break thy banquet up. O man, thy kingdom is departing from thee, and while it lasts is emptier than my shade. Its silent language such, 
nor needest thou call thy magi to decipher what it means. No, like the median, fate is in thy walls. Dost ask how? Whence? Belshazzar like amazed? Man's make encloses the sure seeds of death. Life feeds the murderer. Ingrate, he thrives on her own meal, and then his nurse devours. But here, Lorenzo, the delusion lies. That solar shadow, as it measures life, it life resembles too. Life speeds away from point to point, though seeming to stand still. The cunning fugitive is swift by stealth. Too subtle is the movement to be seen. Yet soon man's hour is up, and we are gone. Warnings point out our danger, no man's time, as these are useless when the sun is set. So those, but when more glorious reason shines, reason should judge in all. In reason's eye, that sedentary shadow travels hard, but such our gravitation to the wrong, so prone our hearts to whisper what we wish, tis later with the wise than he's aware. A Wilmington goes slower than the sun, and all mankind mistake their time of day. Even age itself, fresh hopes are hourly sown in furrowed brows. To gentle life's descent we shut our eyes, and think it is a plain. We take fair days in winter for the spring, and turn our blessings into bane. Since oft man must compute that age he cannot feel, he scarce believes he's older for his years. Thus, at life's latest eve, we keep in store one disappointment sure to crown the rest, the disappointment of a promised hour. On this or similar, Philander, thou, whose mind was moral as the preacher's tongue, and strong to wield all science, worth the name, how often we talked down the summer sun, and cooled our passions by the breezy stream, how often thawed and shortened winter's eve by conflict kind that struck out latent truth best found so sought to the recluse more coy thoughts disentangle passing o'er the lip clean runs the thread if not tis thrown away or kept to tie up nonsense for a song song fashionably fruitless such as stains the fancy and unhallowed passion fires chiming her saints to cytherea's fane Knowest thou, Lorenzo, what a friend contains? As bees mixed nectar drawn from fragrant flowers, so men from friendship, wisdom, and delight. Twins tied by nature, if they part, they die. Hast thou no friend to set thy mind abroach? Good sense will stagnate. Thoughts shut up want air, and spoil like bales unopened to the sun. Had thought been all, sweet speech had been denied. Speech, thoughts canal, speech thought's criterion too thought in the mind may come forth gold or dross when coined in words we know its real worth if sterling store it for thy future use twill by thee benefit perhaps renown thought too delivered is the more possessed teaching we learn and giving we retain the births of intellect when dumb forgot speech ventilates our intellectual fire speech burnishes Speech burnishes our mental magazine, brightens for ornament and wets for use, what numbers, sheathed in erudition, lie, plunged to the hilts in venerable tomes, and rusted in, who might have borne an edge, and played a sprightly beam, if born to speech, if born blessed heirs at half their mother's tongue. Tis thought's exchange, which, like the alternate push of waves conflicting, breaks the learned scum, and defecates the student's standing pool. In contemplation is his proud resource, tis poor as proud by converse unsustained. Rude thought runs wild in contemplation's field. Converse the menage breaks it to the bit of due restraint, and emulation's spur gives graceful energy by rivals odd. Tis converse qualifies for solitude, as exercise for salutary rest. By that untutored, contemplation raves, and nature's fool by wisdom is undone. Wisdom, though richer than Peruvian mines, and sweeter than the sweet ambrosial hive, what is she but the means of happiness? That unobtained, than folly more a fool, a melancholy fool without her bells. Friendship, the means of wisdom, richly gives the precious end, which makes our wisdom wise. Nature, in zeal for human amity, denies or damps an undivided joy. Joy is an import, joy is an exchange, joy flies monopolists it calls for two rich fruit heaven planted never plucked by one needful auxiliars are our friends to give to social man true relish of himself full on ourselves descending in a line pleasure's bright beam is feeble in delight
delight intense is taken by rebound reverberated pleasures fire the breast celestial happiness whene'er she stoops to visit earth one shrine the goddess finds and one alone to make her sweet amends for absent heaven the bosom of a friend where heart meets heart reciprocally soft each other's pillow to repose divine beware the counterfeit in passion's flame hearts melt but melt like ice soon harder froze true love strikes writ in reason passion's foe virtue alone intenders us for life i wrong her much intenders us for ever of friendship's fairest fruits the fruit most fair is virtue kindling at a rival fire and emulously rapid in her race oh the soft enemy endearing strife this carries friendship to her noontide point and gives the rivet of eternity from friendship which outlives my former themes glorious survivor of old time and death from friendship thus that flower of heavenly seed the wise extract earth's most hiblian bliss superior wisdom crowned with smiling joy but for whom blossoms this elysian flower abroad they find who cherish it at home lorenzo pardon what my love extorts an honest love and not afraid to frown though choice of follies fasten on the great none clings more obstinate than fancy fond that sacred friendship is their easy prey caught by the wafture of a golden lure or fascination of a high-born smile their smiles the great and the coquette throw out for others hearts tenacious of their own and we no less of ours when such the bait ye fortune's cofferers ye powers of wealth can gold gain friendship impudence of hope as well mere man an angel might beget love and love only is the loan for love lorenzo pride repress nor hope to find a friend but what has found a friend in thee all like the purchase few the price will pay and this makes friends such miracles below what if since daring on so nice a theme i show thee friendship delicate as dear of tender violations apt to die reserve will wound it and distrust destroy deliberate on all things with thy friend but since friends grow not thick on every bough nor every friend unrotten at the core first on thy friend deliberate with thyself pause ponder sift not eager in the choice nor jealous of the chosen fixing fix judge before friendship then confide till death well for thy friend but nobler far for thee how gallant danger for earth's highest prize a friend is worth all hazards we can run poor is the friendless master of a world a world in purchase for a friend is gain so sung he angels hear that angels sing angels from friendship gather half their joy so sung philander as his friend went round in the rich ichor in the generous blood of bacchus purple god of joyous wit a brow salute and ever laughing eye he drank long health and virtue to his friend his friend who warmed him more who more inspired friendship's the wine of life but friendship new not such was his is neither strong nor pure oh for the bright complexion cordial warmth and elevating spirit of a friend for twenty summers ripening by my side all feculence of falsehood long thrown down all social virtues rising in his soul as crystal clear and smiling as they rise here nectar flows it sparkles in our sight rich to the taste and genuine from the heart high flavoured bliss for gods on earth how rare on earth how lost philander is no more thinkest thou the theme intoxicates my song am i too warm too warm i cannot be i loved him much but now i love him more like birds whose beauties languish half concealed till mounted on the wing their glossy plumes expanded shine with azure green and gold how blessings brighten as they take their flight his flight philander took his upward flight if ever soul ascended had he dropped that eagle genius oh had he let fall one feather as he flew i then had wrote what friends might flatter prudent foes forbear rivals scarce damn and zoilus reprieve yet what i can i must it were profane to quench a glory lighted at the skies and cast in shadows his illustrious clothes strange the theme most affecting most sublime momentous most to man should sleep unsung and yet it sleeps by genius unawaked pain him or christian to the blush of wit man's highest triumph 
man's profoundest fall. The deathbed of the just is yet undrawn by mortal hand. It merits a divine. Angels should paint it, angels ever there, there on a post of honour and of joy. Dare I presume, then? But philander bids, and glory tempts, and inclination calls. Yet am I struck, as struck the soul beneath aerial groves' impenetrable gloom. Or, in some mighty ruin's solemn shade, or, gazing by pale lamps on high-born dust, in vaults, thin courts of poor unflattered kings, or at the midnight altar's hollowed flame, is it religion to proceed? I pause, and enter, awed, the temple of my theme. Is it his deathbed? No, it is his shrine. Behold him there, just rising to a god. The chamber where the good man meets his fate is privileged beyond the common walk of virtuous life, quite in the verge of heaven. Fly, ye profane. If not, draw near with awe. Receive the blessing and adore the chance that threw in this Bethesda your disease. If unrestored by this, despair your cure. For here resistless demonstration dwells. A deathbed's a detector of the heart. Here tired dissimulation drops her mask. Through life's grimace, that mistress of the scene. Here real and apparent are the same. You see the man, you see his hold on heaven. If sound his virtue, as philanders sound. Heaven waits not the last moment, owns her friends on this side death, and points them out to men. A lecture silent, but of sovereign power, to vice confusion, and to virtue peace. Whatever farce the boastful hero plays, virtue alone has majesty in death, and greater still the more the tyrant frowns. Philander, he severely frowned on thee. No warning given, unceremonious fate, a sudden rush from life's meridian joy, a wrench from all we love, from all we are, a restless bed of pain, a plunge opaque beyond conjecture, feeble nature's dread, strong reasons shudder at the dark unknown, a sun extinguished, a just opening grave, and oh, the last, last, what? Can words express, thought reach it? The last, silence of a friend. Where are those horrors, that amazement, where, this hideous group of ills, which singly shock, demand for man? I thought him man till now. Through nature's wreck, through vanquished agonies, like the stars struggling through this midnight gloom, what gleams of joy, what more than human peace? Where the frail mortal, the poor abject worm? No, not in death, the mortal to be found. His conduct is a legacy for all, richer than mammon's for his single heir. His comforters he comforts, great in ruin, with unreluctant grandeur, gives, not yields, his soul sublime, and closes with his fate. How our hearts burned within us at the scene, whence this brave bound or limits fixed to man? His God sustains him in his final hour. His final hour brings glory to his God. Man's glory heaven vouchsafes to call her own. We gaze, we weep, mixed tears of grief and joy. Amazement strikes, devotion bursts to flame. Christians adore, and infidels believe. As some tall tower or lofty mountain's brow detains the sun, illustrious from its height, while rising vapors and descending shades with damps and darkness drown the spacious vale, undamped by doubt, undarkened by despair, Philander thus augustly rears his head at that black hour which general horror sheds on the low level of the inglorious throng, sweet peace and heavenly hope and humble joy divinely beam on his exalted soul, destruction gild and crown him for the skies, with incommunicable luster, bright. End of section 2section three of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this librivox recording is in the public domain narcissa to her grace the duchess of p ignoscenda quidem scirent si agnoscera manes virgil night third narcissa from dreams where thought in fancy's maze runs mad to reason that heaven-lighted lamp in man once more i wake and at the destined hour Punctual as lovers to the moment sworn, I keep my assignation with my woe. Oh, lost to virtue, lost to manly thought, lost to the noble sallies of the soul, 
who think it solitude to be alone. Communion sweet, communion large and high, our reason, guardian angel, and our God. Then nearest these, when others most remote, and all ere long shall be remote, but these. How dreadful, then, to meet them all alone, a stranger, unacknowledged, unapproved. Now woo them, wed them, bind them to thy breast. To win thy wish, creation has no more. Or if we wish a fourth, it is a friend. But friends, how mortal! Dangerous the desire. Take Phoebus to yourselves, ye basking bards, inebriate at fair fortune's fountainhead, and reeling through the wilderness of joy, where sense runs savage, broke from reason's chain, and sings false peace till smothered by the pall. My fortune is unlike, unlike my song, unlike the deity my song invokes. I to day's soft-eyed sister pay my court, and Dimian's rival, and her aid implore, now first implored in succor to the muse. Thou, who didst lately borrow Cynthia's form, and modestly forego thine own, O thou, who didst thyself at midnight hours inspire? Say, why not Cynthia, patroness of song? As thou her crescent, she thy character assumes, still more a goddess by the change. Are there demurring wits who dare dispute this revolution in the world inspired? Ye train Pyrian to the lunar sphere, in silent hour address your ardent call, for aid immortal, less her brother's right. She, with the spheres harmonious, nightly leads the mazy dance, and hears their matchless strain, a strain for gods, denied to mortal ear. Transmitted heard, thou silver queen of heaven, what title or what name endears thee most? Cynthia, Selene, Phoebe, or dost hear with greater gust, fair P. D. of the skies? Is that the soft enchantment calls thee down, more powerful than of old Circean charm? Come, but from heavenly banquets with thee bring the soul of song, and whisper in my ear the theft divine, or in propitious dreams, for dreams are thine, transfuse it through the breast of thy first votary, but not thy last, if, like thy namesake, thou art ever kind. And kind thou wilt be, kind on such a theme, a theme so like thee, a quite lunar theme, soft, modest, melancholy, female, fair. A theme that rose all pale, and told my soul, t'was night, on her fond hopes perpetual night, a night which struck a damp, a deadlier damp, than that which smote me from Philander's tomb. Narcissa follows, ere his tomb is closed, woes cluster, rare are solitary woes, they love a train, they tread each other's heel. Her death invades his mournful right, and claims the grief that started from my lids for him seizes the faithless alienated tear or shares it ere it falls so frequent death sorrow he more than causes he confounds for human sighs his rival strokes contend and make distress distraction o oh, philander what was thy fate a double fate to me portent and pain a menace and a blow like the black raven hovering o'er my peace not less a bird of omen than of prey it called Narcissa long before her hour, it called her tender soul by break of bliss, from the first blossom, from the buds of joy. Those few are noxious fate unblasted leaves in this inclement clime of human life. Sweet harmonist, and beautiful as sweet, and young as beautiful, and soft as young, and gay as soft, and innocent as gay, and happy, if aught happy here, as good. For fortune fond had built her nest on high, like birds quite exquisite of note and plume, transfixed by fate, who loves a lofty mark, how from the summit of the grove she fell, and left it unharmonious, all its charms extinguished in the wonders of her song. Her song still vibrates in my ravished ear, still melting there, and with voluptuous pain, oh, to forget her, thrilling through my heart. Song, beauty, youth, love, virtue, joy, this group of bright ideas, flowers of paradise, as yet unforfeit, in one blaze we bind, kneel, and present it to the skies, as all we guess of heaven, and these were all her own. And she was mine, and I was, was, most blessed, gay title of the deepest misery. As bodies grow more ponderous, robbed of life, good lost ways more in grief than gained in joy. Like blossom trees o'erturned by vernal storm, lovely in death the beauteous ruin lay, and if in death still lovely, lovelier there, far lovelier, pity swells the tide of love, 
and will not the severe excuse a sigh? Scorn the proud man that is ashamed to weep. Our tears indulged, indeed deserve our shame. Ye that e'er lost an angel, pity me. Soon as the luster languished in her eye, dawning a dimmer day on human sight, and on her cheek the residence of spring, pale omen sat, and scattered fears around on all that saw, and who had ceased to gaze that once had seen. With haste, parental haste, I flew, I snatched her from the rigid north, her native bed, on which bleak Boreas blew, and bore her nearer to the sun. The sun, as if the sun could envy, checked his beam, denied his wanted succor, nor with more regret beheld her drooping than the bells of lilies, fairest lilies, not so fair. Queen lilies, and ye painted populace, who dwell in fields and lead ambrosial lives, in morn and evening do your beauties bathe, and drink the sun, which gives your cheeks to glow, and outblush, mine excepted, every fair. You gladlier grew, ambitious of her hand, which often cropped your odors, incense meet to thought so pure. Ye lovely fugitives, coeval race with man, for man you smile, why not smile at him too? You share indeed his sudden pass, but not his constant pain. So man is made, not minister's delight, by what his glowing passions can engage, and glowing passions bent on aught below, must, soon or late, with anguish turn the scale. And anguish, after rapture, how severe! Rapture? Bold man, who tempts the wrath divine, by plucking fruit denied to mortal taste, while here presuming on the rights of heaven. For transport dost thou call on every hour, Lorenzo? At thy friend's expense be wise. Lean not on earth, twill pierce thee to the heart. A broken reed at best, but oft a spear. On its sharp point peace bleeds and hope expires. Turn, hopeless thought, turn from her. Thought repelled, resenting rallies, and wakes every woe. Snatched ere thy prime, and in thy bridal hour. And when kind fortune with thy lover smiled. And when high flavored thy fresh opening joys. And when blind man pronounced thy bliss complete and on a foreign shore where strangers wept, strangers to thee, and, more surprising still, strangers to kindness wept, their eyes let fall in human tears, strange tears that trickled down from marble hearts, obdurate tenderness, a tenderness that called them more severe, in spite of nature's soft persuasion steeled. While nature melted, superstition raved, that mourned the dead, and this denied a grave. Their sighs incensed, sighs foreign to the will. Their will the tiger sucked, outraged the storm. For, oh, the cursed ungodliness of zeal! While sinful flesh relented, spirit nursed in blind infallibility's embrace, the sainted spirit petrified the breast, denied the charity of dust, to spread o'er dust. A charity their dogs enjoy. What could I do? What succor? What resource? With pious sacrilege a grave I stole with impious piety that grave i wronged short in my duty cowered in my grief more like her murderer than friend i crept with soft suspended step and muffled deep in midnight darkness whispered my last sigh i whispered what should echo through their realms nor writ her name whose tomb should pierce the skies presumptuous fear how durst i dread her foes while nature's loudest dictates i obeyed pardon necessity blessed shade of grief and indignation rival bursts i poured half execration mingled with my prayer kindled at man while i his god adored half execration mingled with my prayer kindled at man while i his god adored sore grudged the savage land her sacred dust stamped the cursed soil and with humanity denied narcissa wished them all a grave glows my resentment into guilt what guilt can equal violations of the dead? The dead, how sacred! Sacred is the dust of this heaven-labored form, erect, divine. This heaven-assumed majestic row of earth, he deigned to wear, who hung the vast expanse with azure bright, and clothed the sun in gold. When every passion sleeps that can offend, when strikes us every motive that can melt, when man can wreak his rancor uncontrolled, that strongest curb on insult and ill-will then spleen to dust the dust of innocence an angel's dust this lucifer transcends when he contended for the patriarch's bones twas not the strife of malice but of pride 
the strife of pontiff pride not pontiff gall far less than this is shocking in a race most wretched but from streams of mutual love and uncreated but for love divine and but for love divine this moment lost by fate resorbed and sunk in endless night man heart of heart to man of horrid things most horrid mid stupendous highly strange yet oft his courtesies are smoother wrongs pride brandishes the favors he confers and contumelious his humanity what then his vengeance hear it not ye stars and thou pale moon turn paler at the sound man is to man the sorest surest ill a previous blast foretells the rising storm o'erwhelming turrets threaten ere they fall volcanoes bellow ere they disembogue earth trembles ere her yawning jaws devour and smoke betrays the wide consuming fire ruin for man is most concealed when near and sends the dreadful tidings in the blow is this the flight of fancy would it were heaven's sovereign saves all beings but himself that hideous sight a naked human heart fired is the muse and let the muse be fired who not inflamed when what he speaks he feels and in the nerve most tender in his friends shame to mankind philander had his foes he felt the truths i sing and i in him but he nor i feel more past ills narcissa are sunk in thee thou recent wound of heart which bleeds with other cares with other pangs pangs numerous as the numerous ills that swarmed o'er thy distinguished fate and clustering there thick as the locusts on the land of nile made death more deadly and more dark the grave reflect if not forgot my touching tale how was each circumstance with aspects armed an aspect each and all a hydra woe what strong herculean virtue could suffice or is it virtue to be conquered here this hoary cheek a train of tears bedews and each tear mounts its own distinct distress and each distress distinctly mourned demands of grief still more as heightened by the whole a grief like this proprietors excludes not friends alone such obsequies deplore they make mankind the mourner carry sighs far as the fatal fame can wing her way and turn the gayest thought of gayest age down their right channel through the veil of death the veil of death that hushed cimmerian veil where darkness brooding o'er unfinished fates with raven wing incumbent waits the day dread day that interdites all future change that subterranean world that land of ruin fit walk lorenzo for proud human thought there let my thought expatiate and explore balsamic truths and healing sentiments of all most wanted and most welcome here for gay lorenzo's sake and for thy own my soul the fruits of dying friends survey expose the vein of life weigh life and death give death his eulogy thy fear subdue and labor that first palm of noble minds a manly scorn of terror from the tomb this harvest reap from thy narcissus grave as poets feigned from ajax's streaming blood arose with grief inscribed a mournful flower let wisdom blossom from thy mortal wound and first of dying friends what fruit from these it brings us more than triple aid an aid to chase our thoughtlessness fear pride and guilt our dying friends come o'er us like a cloud to damp our brainless ardors and abate that glare of life which often blinds the wise our dying friends are pioneers to smooth our rugged path to death to break those bars of terror and abhorrence nature throws cross our obstructed way and thus to make welcome as safe our port from every storm each friend by fate snatched from us is a plume plucked from the wing of human vanity which makes us stoop from our aerial heights and damped with omen of our own decease on trooping pinions of ambition lowered just skim earth's surface ere we break it up or putrid earth to scratch a little dust and save the world a nuisance smitten friends are angels sent on errands full of love for us they languish and for us they die and shall they languish shall they die in vain ungrateful shall we grieve their hovering shades which wait the revolution in our hearts shall we disdain their silent soft address their posthumous advice and pious prayer 
senseless as herds that graze their hallowed graves, tread underfoot their agonies and groans, frustrate their anguish, and destroy their deaths? Lorenzo, no, the thought of death indulge, give it its wholesome empire. Let it reign, that kind chastiser of thy soul and joy. Its reign will spread thy glorious conquests far, and still the tumults of thy ruffled breast. Auspicious era, golden days begin. The thought of death shall, like a god, inspire. And why not think on death? Is life the theme of every thought, and wish of every hour, and song of every joy? Surprising truth! The beaten spaniel's fondness not so strange. To waive the numerous ills that seize on life as their own property, their lawful prey. Ere man has measured half his weary stage, his luxuries have left him no reserve, no maiden relishes, unbroached delights, on cold served repetitions he subsists, and in the tasteless present chews the past, disgusted chews, and scarce can swallow down. Like lavish ancestors, his earlier years have disinherited his future hours, which starve on orts and glean their former field. Live ever here, Lorenzo? Shocking thought! So shocking, they who wish disown it too, disown from shame what they from folly crave. Live ever in the womb, nor see the light? For what live ever here? With laboring step to tread our former footsteps? Pace the round eternal? To climb life's worn heavy wheel, which draws up nothing new? To beat and beat the beaten track? To bid each wretched day the former mock? To surfeit on the same and yawn our joys? Or thank a misery for change, though sad? To see what we have seen? Hear till unheard the same old slabber tale? To taste the tasted, and at each return less tasteful? Or our palates to decant another vintage? Strain a flatter year, through loaded vessels and a laxer tone? Crazy machines to grind earth's wasted fruits, ill ground and worse concocted, load, not life. The rational foul kennels of excess, still streaming thoroughfares of dull debauch, trembling each gulp, lest death should snatch the bowl such of our fine ones is the wish refined so would they have it elegant desire why not invite the bellowing stalls and wilds but such examples might their riot awe through want of virtue that is want of thought though on bright thought they father all their flights to what are they reduced to love and hate the same vain world to censure and espouse this painted shrew of life who calls them fool each moment of each day to flatter bad through dread of worse, to cling to this rude rock, barren to them of good, and sharp with ills, and hourly blackened with impending storms, and infamous for wrecks of human hope, scared the gloomy gulf that yawns beneath, such are their triumphs, such their pangs of joy. Tis time, high time, to shift this dismal scene, this hugged, this hideous state, what art can cure? One only, but that one, what all may reach." Virtue, she, wonder-working goddess, charms that rock to bloom, and tames the painted shrew, and what will more surprise Lorenzo, gives to life's sick, nauseous iteration, change, and straightens nature's circle to a line. Believest thou this, Lorenzo? Lend an ear, a patient ear, thou'lt blush to disbelieve. A languid, leaden iteration reigns, and ever must, or those whose joys are joys of sight, smell, taste. The cuckoo seasons sing the same dull note to such as nothing prize. But what those seasons from the teeming earth to doting sense indulge? But nobler minds, which relish fruits unripened by the sun, make their days various, various as the dyes on the dove's neck, which wanted in his rays. On minds of dove-like innocence possessed, on lightened minds that bask in virtue's beams, nothing hangs tedious, nothing old revolves in that for which they long for which they live. Their glorious efforts, winged with heavenly hope, each rising morning sees still higher rise. Each bounteous dawn its novelty presents to worth maturing, new strength, luster, fame, while nature's circle, like a chariot wheel rolling beneath their elevated aims, makes their fair prospect fairer every hour, advancing virtue in a line to bliss. Virtue, which Christian motives best inspire, and bliss which Christian schemes alone ensure. And shall we then, for virtue's sake, commence apostates, and turn infidels for joy? A truth it is, few doubt, but fewer trust. 
He sins against this life who slights the next. What is this life? How few their favorite know. Fond in the dark and blind in our embrace, by passionately loving life, we make loved life unlovely, hugging her to death. We give to time eternity's regard, and dreaming take our passage for our port. Life has no value as an end, but means, an end deplorable, a means divine. When tis our all, tis nothing, worse than not, a nest of pains. When held as nothing, much. Like some fair humorists, life is most enjoyed when courted least, most worth when disesteemed. Then tis the seat of comfort, rich in peace. In prospect richer, far, important, awful, not to be mentioned but with shouts of praise, not to be thought on but with tides of joy, the mighty basis of eternal bliss. Where now the barren rock, the painted shrew? Where now, Lorenzo, life's eternal round? Have I not made my triple promise good? Vain is the world, but only to the vain. To what compare we then this varying scene, whose worth ambiguous rises and declines, waxes and wanes? In all propitious, night assists me here. Compare it to the moon, dark in herself and indigent, but rich in borrowed luster from a higher sphere. When gross guilt interposes, laboring earth, or shadowed, mourns a deep eclipse of joy. Her joys at brightest pallid, to that font of full effulgent glory, whence they flow. Nor is that glory distant, O Lorenzo. A good man and an angel, these between, how thin the barrier. What divides their fate? Perhaps a moment, or perhaps a year. Or if an age, it is a moment still. A moment, or eternities forgot. Then be what once they were, who now are gods. Be what Philander was, and claim the skies. Starts timid nature at the gloomy pass? The soft transition call it, and be cheered. Such it, is, such it is often, and why not to thee? To hope the best is pious, brave, and wise, and may itself procure what it presumes. Life is much flattered, death is much traduced. Compare the rivals and the kinder crown. Strange competition, true, Lorenzo, strange. So little life can cast into the scale. Life makes the soul dependent on the dust. Death gives her wings to mount above the spheres. Through chinks, styled organs, dim life peeps at light. Death bursts the involving cloud, and all is day, all eye, all ear, the disembodied power. Death has feigned evils, nature shall not feel. Life, ill substantial, wisdom cannot shun. Is not the mighty mind that son of heaven? By tyrant life dethroned, imprisoned, pained? By death enlarged, ennobled, deified? Death but entombs the body, life the soul. Is death then guiltless? How he marks his way with dreadful waste of what deserves to shine. Art, genius, fortune, elevated power. With various lustres these light up the world, which death puts out and darkens human race. I grant, Lorenzo, this indictment just, the sage, pure, potentate, king, conqueror, Death humbles these, more barbarous life, the man. Life is the triumph of our mouldering clay, death of the spirit infinite, divine. Death has no dread, but what frail life imparts, nor life true joy, but what kind death improves. No bliss has life to boast, till death can give far greater. Life's a debtor to the grave, dark lattice, letting in eternal day. Lorenzo, blush at fondness for life, which sends celestial souls on errands vile, to cater for the sense, and serve at boards, where every ranger of the wilds, perhaps each reptile, justly claims our upper hand. Luxurious feast, a soul, a soul immortal, it all the dainties of a brute be mired. Lorenzo, blush at terror for a death, which gives thee to repose in festive bowers, where nectars sparkle, angels minister, and more than angels share, and raise, and crown, and eternize the birth, bloom, bursts of bliss. What need I more? O oh, death, the palm is thine. Then welcome, death, thy dreaded harbingers, age and disease, disease, though long my guest, that plucks my nerves, those tender strings of life, which, plucked a little more, will toll the bell, that calls my few friends to my funeral. Where feeble nature drops, perhaps a tear, while reason and religion, better taught, congratulate the dead, and crown his tomb with wreath triumphant. Death is victory. It binds and chains the raging ills of life. 
lust and ambition, wrath and avarice, dragged at his chariot wheel, applaud his power. That ills corrosive, cares importunate, are not immortal too, O death is thine. Our day of dissolution, name it right, tis our great payday, tis our harvest, rich and ripe, what though the sickle, sometimes keen, just scars us as we reap the golden grain? More than thy balm, O Gilead, heals the wound. Birth's feeble cry and death's deep dismal groan are slender tributes low-tax nature pays for mighty gain, the gain of each, a life. But, O, oh, the last the former so transcends, life dies, compared, life lives beyond the grave. And feel I, death, no joy from thought of thee? Death, the great counsellor? who man inspires with every nobler thought and fairer deed? Death the deliverer who rescues man, death the rewarder who the rescued crowns, death that absolves my birth, a curse without it, rich death that realizes all my cares, toils, virtues, hopes, without it a chimera, death of all pain the period, not of joy, joy's source and subject, still subsist unhurt, one in my soul and one in her great sire, though the four winds were warring for my dust. Yes, and from winds and waves and central night, though prisoned there, my dust too I reclaim, to dust when drop proud nature's proudest spheres, and live entire. Death is the crown of life. Were death denied, poor man would live in vain. Were death denied, to live would not be life. Were death denied, even fools would wish to die. Death wounds to cure. We fall, we rise, we reign spring from our fetters fasten in the skies where blooming eden withers in our sight death gives us more than was an eden lost this king of terrors is the prince of peace when shall i die to vanity pain death when shall i die when shall i live for ever end of section three chapter four of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Josh Kibbe. The Christian Triumph, containing our only cure for the fear of death, and proper sentiments of heart on that inestimable blessing, to the Honorable Mr. York. Night Fourth, The Christian Triumph. A much indebted muse, O York, intrudes, amid the smiles of fortune and of youth, thine ear is patient of a serious song. How deep implanted in the breast of man the dread of death! I sing its sovereign cure. Why start at death? Where is he? Death arrived is past. Not come or gone, he's never here. Ere hope, sensation fails. Black boating man receives, not suffers death's tremendous blow. The knell, the shroud, the mattock and the grave, the deep damp vault, the darkness and the worm. These are the bugbears of a winter's eve, the terrors of the living, not the dead. Imagination's fool and error's wretch, man makes a death which nature never made. Then on the point of his own fancy falls, And feels a thousand deaths in fearing one. But were death frightful, what is age to fear? If prudent, age should meet the friendly foe, And shelter in his hospitable gloom. I scarce can meet a monument, but holds my younger. Every date cries, come away. And what recalls me? Look the world around and tell me what. The wisest cannot tell. Should any born of woman give his thoughtful range On just dislike some bounded field, of things the vanity, of men the flaws, flaws in the best, the many flaw all o'er, as leopard spotted or as Ethiop's dark, vivacious ill, good dying immature, how immature Narcissus marble tells, and at his death bequeathing endless pain. His heart, though bold, would sicken at the sight, and spend itself in sighs for future scenes. But grant to life, and just it is to grant a lucky life, some perquisites of joy, a time there is when, like a thrice-told tale, long-rifled life of sweet can yield no more, but from our comment on the comedy, pleasing reflections on part well sustained, or purposed emendations where we failed, or hopes of plaudits from our candid judge, when, on their exit, souls are bid unrobe, toss fortune back her tinsel and her plume, and drop this mask of flesh behind the scene. With me that time has come. My world is dead. A new world rises, and new manners reign. Foreign comedians, a spruce band, arrive to push me from the scene, or hiss me there. What a pert race starts up! The strangers gaze, and I at them. My neighbor is unknown, nor that the worst. 
Ah, me, the dire effect of loitering here, of death defrauded long, of old so gracious, and let that suffice. My very master knows me not. Shall I dare say peculiar is the fate? I've been so long remembered, I'm forgot. An object ever pressing dims the sight, and hides behind its ardor to be seen. When in his courtier's ears I pour my plaint, they drink it as the nectar of the great, and squeeze my hand and beg me come to-morrow. Refusal, canst thou wear a smoother form? Indulge me, nor conceive I drop my theme. Who cheapens life abates the fear of death. Twice told the period spent on stubborn Troy, court favor, yet untaken, I besiege. Ambition's ill-judged effort to be rich. Alas, ambition makes my little less. Embittering the possessed, why wish for more? Wishing of all employments is the worst. Philosophy's reverse, and health's decay. Were I as plump as stalled theology, wishing would waste me to this shade again. Were I as wealthy as a South Sea dream, wishing is an expedient to be poor. Wishing, that constant hectic of a fool, caught at a court, purged off by pure air and simpler diet, gifts of rural life. Blessed be that hand divine, which gently laid my heart at rest beneath this humble shed. The world's a stately bark on dangerous seas with pleasure seen, but boarded at our peril. Here, on a single plank, thrown safe ashore, I hear the tumult of the distant throng, as that of seas remote or dying storms, and meditate on scenes more silent still. Pursue my theme and fight the fear of death. Here, like a shepherd gazing from his hut, touching his reed or leaning on his staff, eager ambition's fiery chase I see. I see the circling hunt of noisy men, burst law's enclosure, leap the mounds of right, pursuing and pursued each other's prey as wolves for raping, as the fox for wiles, till death that mighty hunter earths them all. Why all this toil for triumphs of an hour? What though we wade in wealth or soar in fame? Earth's highest station ends and here he lies, and dust the dust concludes her noblest song. If this song lives, posterity shall know one, though in Britain born with courtiers bred, who thought even gold might come a day too late. Nor on his subtle deathbed planned his scheme for future vacancies in church or state. Some avocation deeming it to die, unbit by rage canine of dying rich. Guilt's blunder, and the loudest laugh of hell. O oh, my co-evils, remnants of yourselves, poor human ruins tottering o'er the grave. Shall we, shall aged men like aged trees, strike deeper their vile root and closer cling, still more enamored of this wretched soil? Shall our pale, withered hands be still stretched out, trembling at once with eagerness and age? with avarice and convulsions grasping hard, grasping at air, for what is earth beside? Man wants but little, nor that little long. How soon must he resign his very dust, which frugal nature lent him for an hour? Years unexperienced rush on numerous ills, and soon as man, expert from time, has found the key of life, it opes the gates of death. When in this vale of years I backward look and miss such numbers, numbers too of such, firmer in health and greener in their age, and stricter on their guard, and fitter far to play life's subtle game, I scarce believe I still survive. And am I fond of life, who scarce can think it possible, I live? Alive by miracle, or what is next, alive by mead? If I am still alive, who long have buried what gives life to live, firmness of nerve, and energy of thought? Life's lee is not more shallow than impure and vapid, Sense and reason show the door, call for my beer, and point me to the dust. O oh, thou great arbiter of life and death, nature's immortal, immaterial sun, whose all-prolific beam late called me forth from darkness, teeming darkness, where I lay the worms inferior, and in rank, beneath the dust I tread on, high to bear my brow, to drink the spirit of the golden day, and triumph in existence. And could know no motive but my bliss, and hast ordained a rise in blessing, with the patriarch's joy, thy call I follow to the land unknown. I trust in thee, and know in whom I trust. Or life or death is equal, neither ways. All weight is this, O oh, let me live to thee. Though nature's terrors thus may be repressed, still frowns grim death. Guilt points the tyrant's spear, and whence all human guilt, from death forgot. Ah me, too long I set at naught the swarm of friendly warnings which around me flew and smiled unsmitten, small my cause to smile. Death's admonitions, like shafts upward shot, more dreadful by delay, the longer ere they strike our hearts, the deeper is their wound. 
Oh, think how deep, Lorenzo, here it stings. Who can appease its anguish? How it burns! What hand of the barbed and venomed thought can draw? What healing hand can pour the balm of peace? And turn my sight undaunted on the tomb? With joy, with grief, that healing hand I see. Ah, too conspicuous, it is fixed on high. On high? What means my frenzy? I blaspheme! Alas, how low, how far beneath the skies, the skies it formed, and now it bleeds for me, but bleeds the balm I want, yet still it bleeds. Draw the dire steel. Ah, no, the dreadful blessing, what heart or can sustain, or dares forego? There hangs all human hope. That nail supports the falling universe. That gone, we drop. Horror receives us, and the dismal wish creation had been smothered in her birth. Darkness his curtain, and his bed the dust when stars and sun are dust beneath his throne. In heaven itself can such indulgence dwell? Oh, what a groan was there, a groan not his. He seized their dreadful right, the load sustained, and heaved the mountain from a guilty world. A thousand worlds so bought were bought too dear. Sensations new in angels' bosoms rise, suspend their song, and make a pause in bliss. Oh, for their song, to reach my lofty theme. Inspire me, knight, with all thy tuneful spheres, whilst I with seraphs share seraphic themes, and show to men the dignity of man, lest I blaspheme my subject with my song, shall pagan pages glow celestial flame and Christian languish? On our hearts, not heads, falls the foul infamy. My heart, awake! What can awake thee, unawaked by this, expended deity on human wheel? Feel the great truths, which burst the tenfold night of heathen air with the golden flood of endless day. To feel is to be fired, and to believe, Lorenzo, is to feel. Thou most indulgent, most tremendous power, still more tremendous for thy wondrous love, that arms with awe more awful thy commands, and foul transgression dips in sevenfold night, how our hearts tremble at thy love immense, in love immense, inviolably just, thou, rather than thy justice should be stained, didst stain the cross and work of wonders far the greatest that thy dearest far might bleed. Bold thought! Shall I dare speak it or repress? Should man more execrate or boast the guilt which roused such vengeance, which such love inflamed? Or guilt, how mountainous, with outstretched arms, stern justice, and soft smiling love embrace, supporting in a full majesty thy throne, when seemed its majesty to need support, or that or man inevitably lost? What, but the fathomless of thought divine, could labor such expedient from despair and rescue both? Both rescue, both exalt, oh, how are both exalted by the deed, the wondrous deed, or shall I call it more, a wonder and omnipotence itself, a mystery no less to gods than men. Not thus our infidels the eternal draw, a god all o'er, consummate, absolute, full orbed in his whole round of rays complete. They sit at odds, heaven's jarring attributes, and with one excellence another wound. Maim heaven's perfection, break its equal beams, bid mercy triumph over. God himself, undeified by their opprobrious praise, a god all mercy is a god unjust. Ye brainless wits, ye baptized infidels, ye worse for mending, washed to fowler stains, the ransom was paid down. The funds of heaven, heaven's inexhaustible, exhausted fund, amazing and amazed, poured forth the price, all price beyond. Though curious to compute, archangels failed to cast the mighty sum. Its value vast, ungrasped by minds create, forever hides and glows in the supreme. And was the ransom paid? It was, and paid what can exalt the bounty more, for you. The sun beheld it. No, the shocking scene drove back his chariot, midnight veiled his face. Not such as this, not such as nature makes, a midnight nature shuddered to behold. A midnight knew, a dread eclipse without opposing spheres, from her creator's frown. Son, didst thou fly thy maker's pain, or start at that enormous load of human guilt which bowed his blessed head, o'erwhelmed his cross, made groan the centre, burst earth's marble womb with pangs, strange pangs, delivered of her dead. Hell howled, and heaven that hour let fall a tear. Heaven wept, that men might smile. Heaven bled, that man might never die. And is devotion virtue? Tis compelled. What heart of stone but glows at thoughts like these? Such contemplations mount us, 
and should mount the mind still higher, nor ever glance on man, unraptured, uninflamed. Where roll my thoughts to rest from wonders? Other wonders rise, and strike where'er they roll. My soul is caught. Heaven's sovereign blessings, clustering from the cross, rush on her in a throng, and to close her round the prisoner of amaze. In his blessed life I see the path, and in his death the price, and in his great ascent the proof supreme of immortality. And did he rise? Here, O ye nations, hear it, O ye dead. He rose, he rose, he burst the bars of death. Lift up your heads, ye everlasting gates, and give the King of glory to come in. Who is the King of glory? He who left his throne of glory for the pang of death. Lift up your heads, ye everlasting gates, and give the King of glory to come in. Who is the King of glory? He who slew the ravenous foe that gorged all human race. The King of glory, he whose glory filled heaven with amazement at his love to man, and with divine complacency beheld powers most illumined, wilder in the theme. The theme, the joy, how then shall man sustain? Oh, the burst gates, crushed sting, demolished throne, last gasp of vanquished death. Shout, earth and heaven, this sum of good to man, whose nature then took wing and mounted with him from the tomb. Then, then I rose. Then first humanity, triumphant, passed the crystal ports of light, stupendous guest, and seized eternal youth, seized in our name. Ere since tis blasphemous to call man mortal. Man's mortality was then transferred to death, and heaven's duration unalienably sealed to this fail frame, this child of dust. Man, all immortal, hail, hail heaven, all lavish of strange gifts to man, thine all the glory, man's the boundless bliss. Where am I wrapped by this triumphant theme, on Christian joy's exulting wing above the Ionian mount? Alas, small cause for joy. What if to pain immortal, if extent of being to preclude a close of woe? Where then my boast of immortality? I boast it still, though covered o'er with guilt. For guilt, not innocence, his life he poured. Tis guilt alone can justify his death. Nor that, unless his death can justify relenting guilt in heaven's indulgent sight. If, sick of folly, I relent. He writes my name in heaven with that inverted spear, a spear deep dipped in blood, which pierced his side, and opened there a font for all mankind, who strive, who combat crimes, to drink and live. This, only this, subdues the fear of death. And what is this? Survey the wondrous cure, and at each step let higher wonder rise. Pardon for infinite offense, and pardon through means that speak its value infinite. A pardon bought with blood with blood divine, with blood divine of him I made my foe, persisted to provoke, though wooed and awed, blessed and chastised, a flagrant rebel still, a rebel midst the thunders of his throne, nor I alone, a rebel universe, my species up in arms, not one exempt, yet for the foulest of the foul he dies, most joyed for the redeemed from deepest guilt, as if our race were held of highest rank, and God had dearer as more kind a man bound every heart and every bosom burn oh what a scale of miracles is here its lowest round high planted on the skies its towering summit lost beyond the thought of man or angel oh that i could climb the wonderful ascent with equal praise praise flow for ever if astonishment will give thee leave my praise for ever flow Praise ardent, cordial, constant, a high heaven, more fragrant than Arabia sacrificed, and all her spicy mountains in a flame. So dear, so due to heaven, shall praise descend with her soft plume, from plots of angels' wing first plucked by men, to tickle mortal ears, thus diving in the pockets of the great? Is praise the perquisite of every paw, though black as hell that grapples well for gold? O oh, love of gold! Thou meanest of amours, shall praise her odors waste on virtues dead, embalm the base, perfume the stench of guilt, earn dirty bread by washing Ethiop's fair, removing filth, or sinking it from sight, a scavenger in scenes, where vacant posts, like gibbets yet untenanted, expect their future ornaments? From courts and thrones return apostate praise, thou vagabond, thou prostitute, to thy first love return, thy first, thy greatest once unrivaled theme. There flow redundant, like meander flow back to thy fountain, to that parent power who gives the tongue to sound, the thought to soar, the soul to be. Men homage pay to men, thoughtless beneath whose dreadful eye they bow in mutual awe profound of clay to clay, of guilt to guilt, and turn their back on thee, great sire, whom thrones celestial ceaseless sing. 
to prostrate angels an amazing scene of the presumption of man's awe for man man's author end restore law and judge thine all day thine and thine this gloom of night with all her wealth with all her radiant worlds what night eternal but a frown from thee what heaven's meridian glory but thy smile and shall not praise be thine not human praise while heaven's high host on hallelujahs live oh may i breathe no longer than i breathe my soul in praise to him who gave my soul and all her infinite of prospect fair cut through the shades of hell great love by thee o oh, most adorable most unadored where shall that praise begin which ne'er should end where'er i turn what claim on all applause how is night's sable mantle labored o'er how richly wrought with attributes divine what wisdom shines what love this midnight pomp this gorgeous arch with golden worlds inlaid built with divine ambition not to thee for others this profusion thou apart above beyond oh tell me mighty mind where art thou shall i dive into the deep call to the sun or ask the roaring winds for their creator shall i question loud the thunder if in that the almighty dwells or holds he furious storms and straitened rains and bids fierce whirlwinds wheel his rapid car what mean these questions trembling i retract my prostrate soul adores the present god praise i a distant deity he tunes my voice if tuned the nerve that right sustains wrapped in his being i resound his praise but though past all diffused without a shore his essence local is his throne as meet to gather the dispersed as standards call the listed from afar to fix a point a central point collective of his sons since finite every nature but his own the nameless he whose nod is nature's birth and nature's shield the shadow of his hand her dissolution his suspended smile the great first last pavilioned high he sits in darkness from excessive splendor born by gods unseen unless through lustre lost his glory to created glory bright as that to central horrors he looks down on all that soars and spans immensity though night and numbered worlds enfolds to view boundless creation what art thou a beam a mere fluvium of his majesty and shall an atom of this atom world mutter in dust and sin the theme of heaven down to the centre should i send my thought through beds of glittering ore and glowing gems their beggared blaze wants lustre for my lay goes out in darkness if on towering wing i send it through the boundless vault of stars the stars though rich what dross their gold to thee great good wise wonderful eternal king if to those conscious stars thy throne around praise ever pouring and imbibing bliss and ask their strain they want it more they want pour their abundance humble their sublime languid their energy their ardor cold indebted still their highest rapture burns short of its mark defective though divine still more this theme is man's and man's alone their vast appointments reach it not they see on earth a bounty not indulged on high and downward look for heaven's superior praise first born of ether high in fields of light view man to see the glory of your god could angels envy they had envied here and some did envy and the rest though gods yet still gods unredeemed their triumphs man tempted away the dust against the skies they less would feel though more adorn my theme they sung creation for in that they shared how rose in melody that child of love creation's great superior man is thine thine is redemption they just gave the key tis thine to raise and eternize the song though human yet divine for should not this raise man o'er man and kindle seraphs here redemption twas creation more sublime redemption twas the labor of the skies far more than labor it was death in heaven a truth so strange to her bold to think it true if not far bolder still to disbelieve here pause and ponder was there death in heaven what then on earth on earth which struck the blow who struck it who oh how is man enlarged seen through this medium how the pygmy towers how counterpoised his origin from dust how counterpoised to dust his sad return how voided his vast distance from the skies how near he presses on the seraph's wing which is the seraph which the born of clay how this demonstrates through the thickest cloud of guilt and clay condensed the son of heaven the double son the maid and the remade and shall heaven's double property be lost man's double madness only can destroy to man the bleeding cross has promised all the bleeding cross has sworn eternal grace 
who gave his life what grace shall he deny o ye who from this rock of ages leap apostates plunging headlong into the deep what cordial joy what consolation strong whatever winds arise or billows roll our interest in the master of the storm cling there and in wrecked nature's ruins smile while vile apostates tremble in a calm man know thyself all wisdom centers there to none man seems ignoble but to man angels that grandeur men o'erlook admire how long shall human nature be their book degenerate mortal and unread by thee the beam dim reason sheds shows wonders there what high contents illustrious faculties but the grand comment which displays at full our human height scarce severed from divine by heaven composed was published on the cross who looks on that and sees not in himself an awful stranger a terrestrial god a glorious partner with the deity in that high attribute of mortal life if a god bleeds he bleeds not for a worm i gaze and as i gaze my mounting soul catches strange fire eternity at thee and drops the world or rather more enjoys how changed the face of nature how improved what seemed a chaos shines a glorious world or what a world an eden heightened all it is another scene another self and still another as time rolls along and that's a self far more illustrious still beyond long ages yet rolled up in shades unpierced by bold conjecture's keenest ray what evolutions of surprising fate how nature opens and receives my soul in boundless walks of raptured thought where gods encounter and embrace me what new births of strange adventure form into the sun where what now charms perhaps what e'er exists old time and fair creation are forgot is this extravagant of man we form extravagant conception to be just conception unconfined wants wings to reach him beyond its reach the godhead only more he the great father kindled at one flame the world of rationals one spirit poured from spirit's awful fountain poured himself through all their souls but not an equal stream profuse or frugal of the inspiring god as his wise plan demanded and when past their various trials in their various spheres if they continue rational as made resorbs them all into himself again his throne their centre and his smile their crown why doubt we then the glorious truth to sing though yet unsung as deemed perhaps too bold angels are men of a superior kind angels are men in lighter habit clad high o'er celestial mountains winged in flight and men are angels loaded for an hour who wade this miry vale and climb with pain and slippery step the bottom of the steep angels their failings mortals have their praise while here of core ethereal such enrolled and summoned to the glorious standard soon which flames eternal crimson through the skies nor are our brothers thoughtless of their kin yet absent but not absent from their love michael has fought our battles raphael sung our triumphs gabriel on our errands flown sent by the sovereign and are these o men thy friends thy warm allies and thou shame burn the cheek to cinder rival to the brute religions all descending from the skies to wretched man the goddess in her left holds out this world and in her right the next religion the sole voucher man is man supporter soul of man above himself even in this night of frailty change and death she gives the soul a soul that acts a god religion providence an afterstate here is firm footing here is solid rock this can support us all is sea besides sinks under us be storms and then devours his hand the good man fastens on the skies and bids earth roll nor feels her idle whirl as when a wretch from thick polluted air darkness and stench and suffocating damps and dungeon horrors by kind fate discharged climb some fair eminence where ether pure surrounds him and elysium prospects rise his heart exults his spirits cast their load as if newborn he triumphs in the change so joys the soul when from inglorious aims and assorted sweets from feculence and froth of ties terrestrial sets at large she mounts to reason's region her own element breathes hope immortal and affects the skies religion thou the soul of happiness and groaning cavalry of thee there shines the noblest truths there strongest motives sting there sacred violence assaults the soul there nothing but compulsion is forborne can love allure us or can terror awe he weeps the falling drop puts out the sun he sighs the sigh earth's deep foundation shakes 
If in his love so terrible, what then his wrath inflamed? His tenderness on fire, like soft, smooth oil outblazing other fires. Can prayer, can praise avert it? Thou, my all, my theme, my inspiration and my crown, my strength and age, my rise and low estate, my soul's ambition, pleasure, wealth, my world, my light and darkness, and my life and death, my boast through time, bliss through eternity, eternity too short to speak thy praise, or fathom thy profound of love to man, to man of men the meanest, even to me, my sacrifice, my God, what things are these? What then art thou? By what name shall I call thee? Knew I the name devout archangels use, devout archangels should the name enjoy by me unrivaled. Thousands more sublime, none half so dear as that which, though unspoke, still glows at heart. Oh, how omnipotence is lost in love! Thou great philanthropist, father of angels, but the friend of man, like Jacob, fondest of the younger born. Thou who didst save him, snatch the smoking brand from out the flames and quench it in thy blood. How art thou pleased by bounty to distress, to make us groan beneath our gratitude too big for birth, to favor and confound, to challenge and to distance all return, of lavish love stupendous heights to soar, and leave praise panting in the distant vale. Thy right too great defrauds thee of thy due, and sacrilegious our sublimest song. But since the naked will obtains thy smile beneath this monument of praise unpaid, and future life symphonious to my strain, that noblest hymn to heaven, for ever lie entombed my fear of death, and every fear the dread of every evil but thy frown. Whom see I yonder so demurely smile? Laughter or labor might break their rest. Ye quietists, in homage to the skies, serene, of soft address, who mildly make an unobtrusive tender of your hearts a barring violence, who halt indeed, but for the blessing wrestle not with heaven. Think you my song too turbulent, too warm? Are passions, then, the pagans of the soul? Reason alone baptized, alone ordained to touch things sacred? Oh, for warmer still, guilt chills my zeal, and age benumbs my powers. Oh, for an humbler heart and prouder song. Thou, my much-injured theme, with that soft eye which melted o'er doomed Salem, deign to look compassion to the coldness of my breast, and pardon to the winter in my strain. O oh, ye cold-hearted frozen formalists, on such a theme tis impious to be calm, Passion is reason, transport, temper, here. Shall heaven, which gave us ardor and has shown her own for man so strongly, not disdain what smooth emollients in theology, recumbent virtues downy doctors preach, that prose of piety a lukewarm praise? Rise odor sweet from incense uninflamed? Devotion, when lukewarm, is undevout. But when it glows, its heat is struck to heaven. To human hearts her golden harps are strung. High heaven's orchestra chants amen to man. Hear I, or dream I hear, their distant strain, sweet to the soul, and tasting strong of heaven, soft wafted on celestial pity's plume, through the vast spaces of the universe, to cheer me in this melancholy gloom? Oh, when will death, now stingless, like a friend, admit me of their choir? Oh, when will death this mouldering, old, partition wall throw down? Give beans, one in nature, one abode? Oh, death divine, that givest us to the skies, great future, Glorious patron of the past and present, when shall I thy shrine adore? From nature's continent, immensely wide, immensely blessed, this little isle of life, this dark, incarcerating colony divides us. Happy day, that breaks our chain, that manumits, that calls from exile home, that leads to nature's great metropolis, and readmits us, through the guardian hand of elder brothers, to our father's throne, who hears our advocate, and through his wounds beholding man allows that tender name. Tis this makes Christian triumph a command. Tis this makes joy a duty to the wise. Tis impious in a good man to be sad. See thou, Lorenzo, where hangs all our hope? Touched by the cross we live, or more than die, that touch which touched not angels, more divine than that which touched confusion into form, and darkness into glory, partial touch, ineffably pre-eminent regard, sacred to man and sovereign through the whole long golden chain of miracles, which hangs from heaven through all duration, and supports in one illustrious and amazing plan, thy welfare, nature, and thy God's renown, that touch with charm celestial, heals the soul diseased, drives pain from guilt, lights life and death, turns earth to heaven, to heavenly thrones, transforms the ghastly ruins of the moldering tomb. 
Don't ask me when, when he who died returns. Returns how changed! Where then the man of woe? In glory's tears all the godhead burns, and all his courts, exhausted by the tide of deities triumphant in his train, leave a stupendous solitude in heaven, replenished soon, replenished with increase of pomp and multitude, a radiant band of angels new, of angels from the tomb. Is this by fancy thrown remote, and rise dark doubts between the promise and event? I send thee not to volumes for thy cure. Read nature. Nature is a friend to truth. Nature is Christian, preaches to mankind, and bids dead matter aid us in our creed. Hast thou ne'er seen the comet's flaming flight? The lustrous stranger passing terror sheds on gazing nations. From his fiery train of length enormous, takes his ample round through depths of ether, coasts unnumbered worlds of more than solar glory, doubles wide heaven's mighty cape, and then revisits earth from the long travel of a thousand years. Thus, at the destined period, shall return he, once on earth, who bids the comet blaze, and with him all our triumph o'er the tomb. Nature is dumb on this important point, or hope precarious in low whisper breathes. Faith speaks aloud, distinct, even adders here, but turn and dart into the dark again. Faith builds a bridge across the gulf of death, to break the shock blind nature cannot shun, and lands thought smoothly on the farther shore. Death's terror as the mountain faith removes, that mountain barrier between man and peace. Tis faith disarms destruction, and absolves from every clamorous charge the guiltless tomb. Why disbelieve, Lorenzo? Reason bids all sacred reason. Hold her sacred still, nor shalt thou want a rival in thy flame. All sacred reason, source and soul of all demanding praise on earth or earth above. My heart is thine. Deep in its inmost folds live thou with life, live dearer of the two. Where I the blessed cross, by fortune stamped on passive nature, before thought was born? My birth's blind bigot, fired with local zeal, no. Reason rebaptized me when adult, weighed true and false in her impartial scale. My heart became the convert of my head, and made that choice which once was but my fate. On argument alone my faith is built. Reason pursued is faith, and unpursued, where proof invites, tis reason then no more, and such our proof that, or our faith is right, or reason lies, and heaven designed it wrong. Absolve we this? What then is blasphemy? Fond as we are, and justly fond of faith, reason we grant demands our first regard. The mother honored is the daughter dear. Reason the root, fair faith is but the flower. The fading flower shall die, but reason lives immortal as her father in the skies. When faith is virtue, reason makes it so. Wrong not the Christian, think not reason yours. Tis reason our great master holds so dear. Tis reason's injured rights his wrath resents. Tis reason's voice obeyed his glory's crown. To give lost reason life, he poured his own. Believe, and show the reason of a man. Believe, and taste the pleasure of a god. Believe, and look with triumph on the tomb. Through reason's wounds alone thy faith can die, which dying, tenfold terror gives the death, and dips in venom his twice mortal sting. Learn hence what honors, what loud paeans do to those who push our antidote aside, those boasted friends to reason and to man whose fatal love stabs every joy and leaves death's terror heightened, gnawing on his heart. Those pompous sons of reason, idolized and vilified at once. Of reason dead, then deified as monarchs were of old. What conduct plants proud laurels on their brow? While love of truth through all their camp resounds, they draw pride's curtain o'er the noontide ray, spike up their inch of reason on the point of philosophic wit called argument, and then, exulting in their taper, cry, Behold the sun, and Indian-like adore. Talk they of morals? O oh, thou bleeding love, thou maker of new morals to mankind, the grand morality is love of thee. As wise as Socrates, if such they were, nor will they bait of that sublime renown, as wise as Socrates, by justly stand the definition of a modern fool. A Christian is the highest style of man, and is there who the blessed cross wipes off as a foul blot from his dishonored brow. If angels tremble, tis at such a sight. The wretch they quit, desponding of their charge, more struck with grief or wonder, who can tell? Ye sold to sense, ye citizens of earth, for such alone the Christian banner fly. Know ye how wise your choice, how great your gain? Behold the picture of earth's happiest man. He calls his wish it comes, he sends it back and says he called another. That arrives meets the same welcome, yet he still calls on, till one calls him who varies not his call, but holds him fast in chains of darkness bound, till nature dies and judgment sets him free, a freedom far less welcome than his chain. But grant man happy, 
Grant him happy long, add to life's highest prize her latest hour. That hour so late is nimble in approach that, like a post, comes on in full career. How swift the shuttle flies that weaves thy shroud! Where is the fable of thy former years? Thrown down the gulf of time, as far from thee as they had never been thine, the day in hand, like a bird struggling to get loose, is going. Scarce now possessed so suddenly tis gone, and each swift moment fled, his death advanced by strides as swift. Eternity is all, and whose eternity? Who triumphs there? Bathing forever in the font of bliss, forever basking in the deity. Lorenzo, who? Thy conscience shall reply. Oh, give it leave to speak. T'will speak ere long thy leave unasked. Lorenzo, hear it now, while useful its advice, its accents mild. By the great edict, the divine decree, truth is deposited with man's last hour, an honest hour and faithful to her trust. Truth, eldest daughter of the deity, truth of his counsel when he made the worlds, nor less when he shall judge the worlds he made, though silent long and sleeping ne'er so sound, smothered with airs and oppressed with toys, that heaven commissioned hour no sooner calls, but from her cavern in the soul's abyss, like him they fable under Etna whelmed, the goddess bursts in thunder and in flame, loudly convinces and severely pains. Dark demons I discharge and hydra stings, the keen vibration of bright truth is hell. Just definition, though by schools untaught, ye deaf to truth. Peruse this parsoned page, and trust for once, a prophet and a priest. Men may live fools, but fools they cannot die. End of chapter 4《ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・ハッピーバースデー・I grant the muse has often blushed at her degenerate sons, retained by sense to plead her filthy cause, to raise the low, to magnify the mean, and subtilize the gross and too refined, as if to magic numbers powerful charm twas given to make a civet of their song obscene and sweeten or dure to perfume. Wit, a true pagan, deifies the brute and lifts our swine enjoyments from the mire the fact notorious nor obscure the cause we wear the chains of pleasure and of pride these share the man and these distract him too draw different ways and clash in their commands pride like an eagle builds among the stars but pleasure lark-like nests upon the ground joys shared by brute creation pride resents pleasure embraces man would both enjoy and both at once a point so hard how gain but what can't wit when stung by strong desire wit dares attempt this arduous enterprise since joys of sense can't rise to reason's taste in subtle sophistries laborious forge wit hammers out a reason new that stoops to sordid scenes and meets them with applause wit calls the graces the chaste zone to loose nor less than a plump god to fill the bowl a thousand phantoms and a thousand spells a thousand opiates scatters to delude to fascinate inebriate lay asleep and the fool mind delightfully confound thus that which shocked the judgment shocks no more that which gave pride offence no more offends pleasure and pride by nature mortal foes at war eternal which in man shall reign by wit's address patch up a fatal peace and hand in hand lead on the rank debauch from rank refined to delicate and gay art cursed art wipes off the indebted blush from nature's cheek and bronzes every shame man smiles in ruin glories in his guilt and infamy stands candidate for praise all writ by man in favour of the soul these sensual ethics far in bulk transcend the flowers of eloquence profusely poured o'er spotted vice fill half the lettered world can powers of genius exercise their page and consecrate enormities with song but let not these inexpiable strains condemn the muse that knows her dignity 
nor meanly stops at time but holds the world as tis in nature's ample field a point a point in her esteem from whence to start and run the round of universal space to visit being universal there and being source that utmost flight of mind yet spite of this so vast circumference well knows but what is moral naught is great sing sirens only do not angels sing there is in poesy a decent pride which well becomes her when she speaks to prose her younger sister haply not more wise thinks thou lorenzo to find pastimes here no guilty passion blown into a flame no foible flatter dignity disgrace no fairy field of fiction all on flower no rainbow colours here or silken tail but solemn counsels images of all truths which eternity lets fall on man with double weight through these revolving spheres this death deep silence and incumbent shade thoughts such as shall revisit your last hour visit uncalled and live when life expires and thy dark pencil midnight darker still in melancholy dipped in browns the whole yet this even this my laughter loving friends lorenzo and thy brothers of the smile if what imports you most can most engage shall steal your ear and chain you to my song or if you fail me no the wise shall taste the truths i sing the truths i sing shall feel and feeling give assent and their assent is ample recompense is more than praise but chiefly thine o lichfield nor mistake think not unintroduced i force my way narcissa not unknown not unallied by virtue or by blood illustrious youth to thee from blooming amaranthine bowers where all the language harmony descends uncalled and asks admittance for the muse a muse that will not pain thee with thy praise thy praise she drops by nobler still inspired o thou blessed spirit whether the supreme great anti-mundane father in whose breast embryo creation unborn being dwelt and all its various revolutions rolled present though future prior to themselves whose breath can blow it into naught again or from his throne some delegated power who studious of our peace does turn the thought from vain and vile to solid and sublime unseen thou leadst me to delicious draughts of inspiration from a purer stream and fuller of the god than that which burst from famed castelia nor is yet allayed my sacred thirst though long my soul has ranged through pleasing paths of moral and divine by thee sustained and lighted by the stars by them best lighted are the paths of thought nights are their days their most illumined hours by day the soul o'erborne by life's career stunned by the din and giddy with the glare reels far from reason jostled by the throng by day the soul is passive all her thoughts impose precarious broken air mature by night from objects free from passion cool thoughts uncontrolled and unimpressed the burrs of pure election arbitrary range not to the limits of one world confined but from ethereal travels light on earth as voyagers drop anchor for repose let indians and the gay like indians fond of feathered fopperies the sun adore darkness has more divinity for me it strikes thought inward it drives back the soul to settle on herself our point supreme there lies our theatre there sits our judge darkness the curtain drops o'er life's dull scene tis the kind hand of providence stretched out twixt man and vanity tis reason's reign and virtues too these tutelary shades are man's asylum from the tainted throng night is the good man's friend and guardian too it no less rescues virtue than inspires virtue forever frail as fair below her tender nature suffers in the crowd nor touches on the world without a stain the world's infectious few bring back at eve immaculate the manners of the morn something we thought is blotted we resolved is shaken we renounced returns again each salutation may slide in a sin unthought before or fix a former flaw nor is it strange light motion concourse noise all scatter us abroad thought outward bound neglectful of our home affairs flies off in fume and dissipation quits her charge and leaves the breast unguarded to the foe present example gets within our guard and acts with double force by few repelled ambition fires ambition love of gain strikes like a pestilence from breast to breast riot pride perfidy blue vapours breathe and inhumanity is caught from man from smiling man 
a slight a single glance and shot at random often has brought home a sudden fever to the throbbing heart of envy rancour or impure desire we see we hear with peril safety dwells remote from multitude the world's a school of wrong and what proficients swarm around we must or imitate or disapprove must list as their accomplices or foes that stains our innocence this wounds our peace from nature's birth hence wisdom has been smit with sweet recess and languish for the shade this sacred shade and solitude what is it tis the felt presence of the deity few are the faults we flatter when alone vice sinks in her allurements is unguilt and looks like other objects black by night by night an atheist half believes a god night is fair virtue's immemorial friend the conscious moon through every distant age has held a lamp to wisdom and let fall on contemplation's eye her purging ray the famed athenian he who wooed from heaven philosophy the fair to dwell with men and form their manners not inflame their pride while o'er his head is fearful to molest his labouring mind the stars in silence slide and seem all gazing on their future guests see him soliciting his ardent suit in private audience all the livelong night rigid in thought and motionless he stands nor quits his theme or posture till the sun rude drunkard rising rosy from the main disturbs his nobler intellectual beam and gives him to the tumult of the world hail precious moment stolen from the black waste of murdered time auspicious midnight hail the world excluded every passion hushed and opened a calm intercourse with heaven here the soul sits in council ponders past predestines future action sees not feels tumultuous life and reasons with the storm all her lies answers and thinks down her charms what awful joy what mental liberty i'm not pent in darkness rather say if not too bold in darkness i'm embowered delightful gloom the glustering thoughts around spontaneous rise and blossom in the shade but droop by day and sicken in the sun thought borrows light elsewhere from that first fire fountain of animation whence descends urania my celestial guest who deigns nightly to visit me so mean and now conscious how needful discipline to man from pleasing dalliance with the charms of night my wandering thought recalls to what excites far other beat of heart narcissus tomb or is it feeble nature calls me back and breaks my spirit into grief again is it a stygian vapour in my blood a cold slow puddle creeping through my veins or is it thus with all men thus with all what are we how unequal now we soar and now we sink to be the same transcends our present prowess dearly pays the soul for lodging ill too dearly rents her clay reason a baffled counsellor but adds the blush of weakness to the bane of woe the noblest spirit fighting her hard fate in this damp dusky region charged with storms but feebly flutters yet untaught to fly or flying short her flight and sure her fall our utmost strength when down to rise again and not to yield though beaten all our praise tis vain to seek in men for more than man though proud in promise big in previous thought experience stamps our triumph i who late emerging from the shadows of the grave where grief detained me prisoner mounting high threw wide the gates of everlasting day and called mankind to glory shook off pain mortality shook off an ether pure and struck the stars now feel my spirits fail they drop me from the zenith down i rush like him whom fable fledged with waxen wings in sorrow drowned but not in sorrow lost how wretched is the man who never mourned i die for precious pearl and sorrow's stream not so the thoughtless man that only grieves takes all the torment and rejects the gain inestimable gain and gives heaven leave to make him but more wretched not more wise if wisdom is our lesson and what else ennobles man what else have angels learned grief more proficience in thy school are made than genius or proud learning e'er could boast voracious learning often overfed digests not into sense her motley meal this bookcase which dark booty almost burst this forager on others wisdom leaves her native farm her reason quite untilled with mixed manure she surfeits the rank soil dunged but not dressed and rich to beggary a pomp untamable of weeds prevails her servants wealth encumbered wisdom mourns and what says genius let the dull be wise genius too hard for right can prove it wrong and loves to boast where blush men less inspired 
it pleads exemption from the laws of sense considers reason as a leveller and scorns to share a blessing with the crowd that wise it could be thinks an ample claim to glory and to pleasure gives the rest crassus but sleeps ardelio is undone wisdom less shudders at a fool than wit but wisdom smiles when humbled mortals weep when sorrow wounds the breast as ploughs the glebe and hearts obdurate feel her softening shower her seed celestial then glad wisdom sows her golden harvest triumphs in the soil if so narcissa welcome my relapse i'll raise a tax on my calamity and reap rich compensation from my pain i'll range the plenteous intellectual field and gather every thought of sovereign power to chase the moral maladies of man thoughts which may bear transplanting to the skies though natives of this coarse penurious soil nor wholly wither there where seraphs sing refined exalted not annulled in heaven reason the sun that gives them birth the same in either clime though more illustrious there these choicely culled and elegantly ranged shall form a garland for narcissus tomb and peradventure of no fading flowers say on what theme shall puzzled choice descend the importance of contemplating the tomb why men decline it suicide's foul birth the various kind of grief the faults of age and death's dread character invite my song and first the importance of our end surveyed friends counsel quick dismission of our grief mistaken kindness our hearts heal too soon are they more kind than he who struck the blow who bid it do his errand in our hearts and banish peace till nobler guests arrive and bring it back a true and endless peace calamities are friends as glaring day of these unnumbered lustres robs our sight prosperity puts out unnumbered thoughts of import high and light divine to man the man how blessed who sick of gaudy scenes scenes apt to thrust between us and ourselves is led by choice to take his favourite walk beneath death's gloomy silent cypress shades unpierced by vanity's fantastic ray to read his monuments to weigh his dust visit his vaults and dwell among the tombs lorenzo read with me narcissa's stone narcissa was thy favourite let us read her moral stone few doctors preach so well few orators so tenderly can touch the feeling heart what pathos in the date apt words can strike and yet in them we see faint images of what we here enjoy what cause have we to build on length of life temptation sees when fear is laid asleep and ill foreboded is our strongest guard see from her tomb as from an humble shrine truth radiant goddess sallies on my soul and puts delusions dusky train to flight dispels the mists our sultry passions raise from objects low terrestrial and obscene and shows the real estimate of things which no man unafflicted ever saw pulls off the veil from virtue's rising charms detects temptation in a thousand lies truth bids me look on men as autumn leaves and all they bleed for as the summer's dust driven by the whirlwind lighted by her beams i widen my horizon gain new powers see things invisible feel things remote am present with futurities think naught to man so foreign as the joys possessed naught so much his as those beyond the grave no folly keeps its colour in her sight pale worldly wisdom loses all her charms in pompous promise from her schemes profound in future fate she plans tis all in leaves like sibyl unsubstantial fleeting bliss at the first blast it vanishes in air not so celestial wouldst thou know lorenzo how differ worldly wisdom and divine just as the waning and the waxing moon more empty worldly wisdom every day and every day more fair her rival shines when later there's less time to play the fool soon our whole term for wisdom is expired thou knowest she calls no counsel in the grave an everlasting fool is rid in fire or real wisdom wafts us to the skies as worldly schemes resemble sibyl's leaves the good man's days to sibyl's books compare in ancient story read thou knowest the tale in price still rising as in number less inestimable quite his final hour for that who thrones can offer offer thrones insolvent worlds the purchase cannot pay o oh, let me die his death all nature cries then live his life all nature falters there our great physician daily to consult to commune with the grave our only cure what grave prescribes the best of friends and yet from a friend's grave how soon we disengage even to the dearest as his marble cold why are friends ravished from us tis to bind by soft affection's ties on human hearts the thought of death which reason to supine or misemployed so rarely fastens there 
nor reason nor affection no nor both combined can break the witchcrafts of the world behold the inexorable hour at an behold the inexorable hour for god and to forget it the chief aim of life though well to ponder it is life's chief end is death that ever threatening ne'er remote that all important and that only sure come when he will an unexpected guest nay though invited by the loudest calls of blind imprudence unexpected still though numerous messengers are sent before to warn his great arrival what the cause the wondrous cause of this mysterious ill all heaven looks down astonished at the sight is it that life has sown her joys so thick we can't thrust in a single care between is it that life has such a swarm of cares the thought of death can't enter for the throng is it that time steals on with downy feet nor wakes indulgence from her golden dream to-day is so like yesterday it cheats we take the lying sister for the same life glides away lorenzo like a brook forever changing unperceived the change in the same brook none ever bathed him twice to the same life none ever twice awoke we call the brook the same the same we think our life though still more rapid in its flow nor mark the much irrevocably lapsed and mingled with the sea or shall we say retaining still the brook to bear us on that life is like a vessel on the stream in life embarked we smoothly down the tide of time descend but not on time intent amused unconscious of the gliding wave till on a sudden we perceive a shock we start awake look out what see we there our brittle bark is burst on Karen's shore is this the cause death flies all human thought or is it judgment by the will struck blind the domineering mistress of the soul like him so strong by delilah the fair or is it fear turn startled reason back from looking down a precipice so steep tis dreadful and the dread is wisely placed by nature conscious of the make of man a dreadful friend it is a terror kind a flaming sword to guard the tree of life by that unawed in life's most smiling hour the good man would repine would suffer joys and burn impatient for his promised skies the bad on each punctilious peak of pride or gloom of humour would give rage the rain bound o'er the barrier rush into the dark and mar the schemes of providence below what groan was that lorenzo furies rise and drown in your less execrable yell britannia's shame there took her gloomy flight on wing impetuous a black sullen soul blasted from hell with horrid lust of death thy friend the brave the gallant altamont so called so thought and then he fled the field less base the fear of death than fear of life o britain infamous for suicide an island in thy manners far disjoined from the whole world of rationals beside in ambient waves plunged thy polluted head wash the dire stain nor shock the continent but thou be shocked while i detect the cause of self-assault expose the monster's birth and bid abhorrence hiss it round the world blame not thy clime nor chide the distant sun the sun is innocent thy clime absolve immoral climes kind nature never made the cause i sing in eden might prevail and proves it is thy folly not thy fate the soul of man let man in homage bow who names his soul a native of the skies high-born and free her freedom should maintain unsold unmortgaged for earth's little bribes the illustrious stranger in this foreign land like strangers jealous of her dignity studious of home and ardent to return of earth suspicious earth's enchanted cup with cool reserve light touching should indulge on immortality her godlike taste there take large draughts make her chief banquet there but some reject this sustenance divine to beggarly vile appetites descend ask alms of earth for guests that came from heaven sink into slaves and sell for present hire their rich reversion and what shares its fate their native freedom to the prince who sways this nether world and when his payments fail when this foul basket gorges them no more or their palled pallets loathe the basket full are instantly with wild domaniac rage for breaking all the chains of providence and bursting their confinement though fast barred by laws divine and human guarded strong with horrors doubled to defend the pass the blackest nature or dire guilt can raise and moated round with fathomless destruction sure to receive and whelm them in their fall such britons is the cause to you unknown or worse or looked or looked by magistrates thus criminals themselves i grant the deed is madness but the madness of the heart and what is that our utmost bound of guilt a sensual unreflecting life is big with monstrous births and suicide to crown the black infernal brood 
the bold to break heaven's law supreme and desperately rush through sacred nature's murder on their own because they never think of death they die tis equally man's duty glory gain at once to shun and meditate his end when by the bed of languishment we sit the seat of wisdom if our choice not fate or or our dying friends in anguish hang wipe the cold dew or stay the sinking head number their moments and in every clock start at the voice of an eternity see the dim lamp of life just feebly lift an agonizing beam at us to gaze then sink again and quiver into death that most pathetic herald of our own how read we such sad scenes as sent to man in perfect vengeance no in pity sent to melt him down like wax and then impress indelible death's image on his heart bleeding for others trembling for himself we bleed we tremble we forget we smile the mind turns full before the cheek is dry our quick returning folly cancels all as the tide rushing raises what is writ in yielding sands and smooths the lettered shore lorenzo hast thou ever weighed a sigh or studied the philosophy of tears a science yet unlectured in our schools hast thou descended deep into the breast and seen their source if not descend with me and trace these briny rivulets to their springs our funeral tears from different causes rise as if from separate cisterns in the soul of various kinds they flow from tender hearts by soft contagion called some burst at once and stream obsequious to the leading eye some ask more time by curious art distilled some hearts in secret hard unapt to melt struck by the magic of the public eye like moses smitten rock gush out amain some weep to share the fame of the deceased so high in merit and to them so dear they dwell on praises which they think they share and thus without a blush commend themselves some mourn in proof that something they could love they weep not to relieve their grief but show some weep in perfect justice to the dead as conscious all their love is in arrear some mischievously weep not unapprised tears sometimes aid the conquest of, of an eye with what address the soft ephesians draw their sable network o'er entangled hearts as seen through crystal how their roses glow while liquid pearl runs trickling down their cheek of hers not prouder egypt's wanton queen carousing gems herself dissolved in love some weep at death abstracted from the dead and celebrate like charles their own decease by kind construction some are deemed to weep because a decent veil conceals their joy some weep in earnest and yet weep in vain as deep in indiscretion as in woe passion blind passion impotently pours tears that deserve more tears while reason sleeps or gazes like an idiot unconcerned nor comprehends the meaning of the storm knows not it speaks to her and her alone irrationals all sorrow are beneath that noble gift that privilege of man from sorrow's pang the birth of endless joy but these are barren of that birth divine they weep impetuous as the summer storm and full as short the cruel grief soon tamed they make a pastime of the stingless tale far as the deep resounding knell they spread the dreadful news and hardly feel it more no grain of wisdom pays them for their woe half round the globe the tears pumped up by death are spent in watering vanities of life in making folly flourish still more fair when the sick soul her wonted stay withdrawn reclines on earth and sorrows in the dust instead of learning there her true support though there thrown down her true support to learn without heaven's aid impatient to be blessed she crawls to the next shrub or bramble vile though from the stately cedar's arms she fell with stale forsworn embraces clings anew the stranger weds and blossoms as before in all the fruitless fropperies of life presents her weed well fancied at the ball and raffles for the death's head on the ring so wept aurelia till the destined youth stepped in with his receipt for making smiles and blanching sables into bridal bloom so wept lorenzo fair clarissa's fate who gave that angel boy on whom he dotes and died to give him orphaned in his birth not such narcissa my distress for thee i'll make an altar of thy sacred tomb to sacrifice to wisdom what hast thou young gay and fortunate each yields a thing i'll dwell on each to shun thought more severe heaven knows i labour with severer still i'll dwell on each and quite exhaust thy death a soul without reflection like a pile without inhabitant to ruin runs and first thy youth what says it to grey hairs narcissa i'm become thy pupil now early bright transient chaste as morning dew 
she sparkled was exhaled and went to heaven time on this head was snowed yet still tis borne aloft nor thinks but on another's grave covered with shame i speak it age severe old worn-out vice sets down for virtue fair with graceless gravity chastising youth that youth chastised surpassing in a fault father of all forgetfulness of death as if like objects pressing on the sight death had advanced too near us to be seen or that life's lone time ripened into right and men might plead prescription from the grave deathless from repetition of reprieve deathless far from it such are dead already their hearts are buried and the world their grave tell me some god my guardian angel tell what thus infatuates what enchantment plants the phantom of an age twixt us and death already at the door he knocks we hear and yet we will not hear what mail defends our untouched hearts what miracle turns off the pointed thought which from a thousand quivers is daily darted and is daily shunned we stand as in a battle throngs on throngs around us falling wounded oft ourselves though bleeding with our wounds immortal still we see time's furrows on another's brow and death entrenched preparing his assault how few themselves in that just mirror see or seeing draw their inference as strong their death is certain doubtful here we he must and soon we may within an age expire the gray our heads our thoughts and aims are green like damaged clocks whose hand and bell descent folly sings six while nature points at twelve absurd longevity more more he cries more life more wealth more trash of every kind and wherefore mad for more when relish fails object and appetite must club for joy shall folly labour hard to mend the bow baubles i mean that strike us from without while nature is relaxing every string ask thought for joy grow rich and hoard within think you the soul when this life's rattles cease has nothing of more manly to succeed contract the taste immortal learn even now to relish what alone subsists hereafter divine or none henceforth your joys for ever of age the glory is to wish to die that wish is praise and promise it applauds the past life and promises our future bliss what weakness see not children in their sires grand climacterical absurdities gray-haired authority to faults of youth how shocking it makes folly thrice a fool and our first childhood might our last despise peace and esteem is all that age can hope nothing but wisdom gives the first the last nothing but the repute of being wise folly bars both our age is quite undone what folly can be rancor like our shadows our wishes lengthen as our sun declines no wish should loiter than this side the grave our hearts should leave the world before the knell calls for our carcasses to mend the soil enough to live in tempest die in port age should fly concourse cover in retreat defects of judgment and the will subdue walk thoughtful on the silent solemn shore of that vast ocean it must sail so soon and put good works on board and wait the wind that shortly blows us into worlds unknown if unconsidered too a dreadful scene all should be prophets to themselves foresee their future fate their future fate foretaste this art would waste the bitterness of death the thought of death alone for fear destroys disaffection to that precious thought is more than midnight darkness on the soul which sleeps beneath it on a precipice puffed off by the first blast and lost for ever dusk asked lorenzo why so warmly pressed by repetition hammered on thine ear the thought of death that thought is the machine the grand machine that heaves us from the dust and rears us into men that thought plied home will soon reduce the ghastly precipice or hanging hell will soften the descent and gently slope our passage to the grave how warmly to be wished what heart of flesh would trifle with tremendous dare extremes yon o'er the fate of infinite what hand beyond the blackest brand of censure bold to speak a language too well known to thee would at a moment give its all to chance and stamp the die for an eternity aid me narcissa aid me to keep pace with destiny and ere her scissors cut my thread of life to break this tougher thread of moral death that ties me to the world sting thou my slumbering reason to send forth a thought of observation on the foe to sally and survey the rapid march of his ten thousand messengers to man who jehu like behind him turns them all all accident apart by nature signed my warrant is gone out though dormant yet perhaps behind one moment lurks my fate must i then forward only look for death backward i turn mine eye and find him there man is a self-survivor every year man like a stream is in perpetual flow death's a destroyer of quotidian prey 
my youth my noontide his my yesterday the bold invader shares the present hour each moment on the former shuts the grave while man is growing life is in decrease and cradles rock us nearer to the tomb our birth is nothing but our death begun as tapers waste that instant they take fire shall we then fear lest that should come to pass which comes to pass each moment of our lives if fear we must let that death turn us pale which murders strength and ardour what remains should rather call on death than dread his call ye partners of my fault and my decline thoughtless of death but when your neighbour's knell rude visitant knocks hard at your dull sense and with its thunder scarce obtains your ear be death your theme in every place and hour no longer want ye monumental sires a brother or tomb to tell you ye shall die that death you dread so great as nature's skill no you shall court before you shall enjoy but you are learned in volumes deep you sit in wisdom shallow pompous ignorance would you be still more learned than the learned learn well to know how much need not be known and what that knowledge which impairs your sense our needful knowledge like our needful food unhedged lies open in life's common field and bids all welcome to the vital feast you scorn what lies before you in the page of nature and experience moral truth of indispensable eternal fruit fruit on which mortals feeding turn to gods and dive in science for distinguished names dishonest fomentation of your pride sinking in virtue as you rise in fame your learning like the lunar beam affords light but not heat it leaves you in devout frozen at heart while speculation shines awake ye curious indigators fond of knowing all but what avails you known if you would learn death's character attend all casts of conduct all degrees of health all dyes of fortune and all dates of age together shook in his impartial urn come forth at random or if choice is made the choice is quite sarcastic and insults all bold conjecture and fond hopes of man what countless multitudes not only leave but deeply disappoint us by their deaths though great our sorrow greater our surprise like other tyrants death delights to smite what smitten most proclaims the pride of power and arbitrary nod is joy supreme to bid the wretch survive the fortunate the feeble wrap the athletic in his shroud and weeping fathers build their children's tomb me thine narcissa what though short thy date virtue not rolling suns the mind matures that life is long which answers life's great end the time that bears no fruit deserves no name the man of wisdom is the man of years in hoary youth Methuselahs may die oh how misstated on their flattering tombs narcissus youth has lectured me thus far and can her gaiety give counsel too that like the jews famed oracle of gems sparkles instruction such as throws new light and opens more the character of death ill known to thee lorenzo this thy vaunt give death his due the wretched and the old even let him sweep his rubbish to the grave let him not violate kind nature's laws but own man born to live as well as die wretched and old thou givest him young and gay he takes and plunder is a tyrant's joy what if i prove the farthest from the fear are often nearest to the stroke of fate all more than common menace as an end ablaze betokens brevity of life as if bright embers should emit a flame glad spirits sparkle from narcissus's eye and made youth younger and taught life to live as nature's opposites wage endless war for this offence as treason to the deep inviolable stupor of his reign where lest in turbulent ambition sleep death took swift vengeance as he life detests more life is still more odious and reduced by conquest aggrandizes more his power but wherefore aggrandized by heaven's decree to plant the soul on her eternal guard in awful expectation of our end thus runs death's dread commission strike but so as most alarms the living by the dead hence stratagem delights him and surprise and cruel sport with man's securities not simple conquest triumph is his aim and where least fear their conquest triumphs most this proves my bold assertion not too bold what are his arts to lay our fears asleep tiberian arts his purposes wrap up in deep dissimulations dark as night like princes unconfessed in foreign courts who travel under cover death assumes the name and look of life and dwells amongst us he takes all shapes that serve his black designs the master of a wider empire far than that o'er which the roman eagle flew like nero he's a fiddler charioteer or drives his phaeton in female guise quite unsuspected till the wheel beneath his disarrayed ablation he devours he most affects the forms least like himself his slender self hence burly corpulence is his familiar wear and sleek disguise behind the rosy bloom he loves to lurk or ambush in a smile a wanton dive in dimples deep loves eddies which draw in unwary hearts and sink them in despair 
such on narcissa's couch he loitered long unknown and when detected still was seen to smile such peace has innocence and death most happy they whom least his arts deceive one eye on death and one full fixed on heaven becomes a mortal and immortal man long on his wiles a peaked and jealous spy i've seen or dreamt i saw the tyrant dress lay by his horrors and put on his smiles say muse for thou rememberest call it back and show lorenzo the surprising scene if twas a dream his genius can explain twas in the circle of the gay i stood death would have entered nature pushed him back supported by a doctor of renown his point he gained then artfully dismissed the sage for death designed to be concealed he gave an old vivacious usurer his meagre aspect and his naked bones in gratitude for plumping up his prey a pampered spendthrift whose fantastic air well-fashioned figure and cockaded brow he took in change and underneath the pride of costly linen tucked his filthy shroud his crooked bow he straightened to a cane and hid his deadly shafts in myra's eye the dreadful masquerader thus equipped out sallies on adventures ask you where where is he not for his peculiar haunts let this suffice sure as night follows day death treads in pleasure's footsteps round the world when pleasure treads the paths which reason shuns when against reason riot shuts the door and gaiety supplies the place of sense then foremost at the banquet and the ball death leads the dance or stamps the deadly die nor ever fails the midnight bowl to crown gaily carousing to his gay compeers inly he laughs to see them laugh at him as absent far and when the revel burns when fear is banished and triumphant thought calling for all the joys beneath the moon against him turns the key and bids him sup with their progenitors he drops his mask frowns out at full they start despair expire scarce with more sudden terror and surprise from his black mask of nitre touched by fire he bursts expands roars blazes and devours and is not this triumphant treachery and more than simple conquest in the fiend and now lorenzo dost thou wrap thy soul in soft security because unknown which moment is commissioned to destroy in death's uncertainty thy danger lies is death uncertain therefore thou be fixed fixed as a sentinel all eye all ear all expectation of the coming foe rouse stand in arms nor lean against thy spear lest slumber steal one moment o'er thy soul and fate surprise thee nodding watch be strong thus give each day the merit and renown of dying well though doomed but once to die nor let life's period hidden as from most hide too from thee the precious use of life early not sudden was narcissa's fate soon not surprising death his visit paid her thought went forth to meet him on his way nor gaiety forgot it was to die though fortune too our third and final theme as an accomplice played her gaudy plumes and every glittering juja on her sight to dazzle and debauch it from its mark death's dreadful advent is the mark of man and every thought that misses it is blind fortune with youth and gaiety conspired to weave a triple wreath of happiness if happiness on earth to crown her brow and could death charge through such a shining shield that shining shield invites the tyrant spear as if to damp our elevated aims and strongly preach humility to man oh how portentous is prosperity how comet-like it threatens while it shines few years but yield us proof of death's ambition to call his victims from the fairest fold and sheathe his shafts in all the pride of life when flooded with abundance purpled o'er with recent honours bloomed with every bliss set up in ostentation made the gaze the gaudy centre of the public eye when fortune thus has tossed her child in air snatched from the covert of an humble state how often have i seen him dropped at once our morning's envy and our evening sigh as if her bounties were the signal given the flowery wreath to mark the sacrifice and call death's arrows on the destined prey high fortune seems in cruel league with fate ask you for what to give his war on man the deeper dread and more illustrious spoil thus to keep daring mortals more in awe and burns lorenzo still for the sublime of life to hang his airy nest on high on the slight timber of the topmost bough rocked at each breeze and menacing a fall granting grim death at equal distance there yet peace begins just where ambition ends what makes man wretched happiness denied lorenzo no tis happiness disdained she comes too meanly dressed to win our smile and calls herself content a homely name our flame is transport and content our scorn ambition turns and shuts the door against her and weds a, a toil a tempest in her stead a tempest to warm transport near of kin unknowing what our mortal state admits life's modest joys we ruin and all our ecstasies are wounds to peace peace the full portion of mankind below and since thy peace is dear ambitious youth of fortune fun as thoughtless of thy fate as late i drew death's picture to stir up 
thy wholesome fears now drawn in contrast see gay fortunes thy vain hopes to reprimand see high and ere the sportive goddess hangs unlocks her casket spreads her glittering ware and calls the giddy winds to puff abroad her random bounties o'er the gaping throng all rush rapacious friends or trodden friends sons or their fathers subjects or their kings priests or their gods and lovers or the fair still more adored to snatch the golden shower gold glitters most where virtue shines no more as stars from absent suns have leave to shine oh what a precious pack of votaries unkenneled from the prisons and the stews pour in all opening in their idols praise all ardent each eye wafter of her hand and wide expanding their voracious jaws morsel on morsel swallowed down unchewed untasted through mad appetite for more gorged to the throat yet lean and ravenous still sagacious all to trace the smallest game and bold to seize the greatest if blessed chance court zephyr sweetly breathed they launch they fly or just or sacred all forbidden ground drunk with the burning scent of place or power staunch to the foot of lucre till they die or if for men you take them as i mark their manners thou their various fates survey with aim mismeasured and impetuous speed some darting strike their ardent wish far off through fury to possess it some succeed but stumble and let fall the taken prize from some by sudden blast tis whirled away and lodged in bosoms that ne'er dreamt of gain to some it sticks so close that when torn off torn is the man and mortal is the wound some o'er enamoured of their bags run mad grown under gold yet weep for want of bread together some unhappy rivals seize and rend abundance into poverty loud croaks the raven of the law and smiles smiles to the goddess but smiles most at those just victims of exorbitant desire who perish at their own request and whelm beneath her load of lavish grants expire fortune is famous for her number slain the numbers small which happiness can bear though various for a while their fates at last one curse involves them all at death's approach all read their riches backward into loss and mourn in just proportion to their store and death's approach if orthodox my song is hastened by the lure of fortune's smiles and art thou still a glutton of bright gold and art thou still rapacious of thy ruin death loves a shining mark a signal blow a blow which while it executes alarms and startles thousands with a single fall as when some stately growth of oak or pine which nods aloft and proudly spreads her shade the sun's defiance and the flock's defence by the strong strokes of labouring hinds subdued loud groans her last and rushing from her height in cumbrous ruin thunders to the ground the conscious forest trembles at the shock and hill and stream and distant dale resound these high aimed darts of death and these alone should i collect my quiver would be full a quiver which suspended in mid air or near heaven's archer in the zodiac hung so could it be should draw the public eye the gaze and contemplation of mankind a constellation awful yet benign to guide the gay through life's tempestuous wave nor suffer them to strike the common rock from greater danger to grow more secure and wrapped in happiness forget their fate lysander happy past the common lot was warned of danger but too gay to fear he wooed the fair aspasia she was kind in youth form fortune fame they both were blessed all who knew envied yet in envy loved can fancy form more finished happiness fixed was the nuptial hour her stately dome rose on the sounding beach the glittering spires float in the wave and break against the shore so break those glittering shadows human joys the faithless morning smiled he takes his leave to re-embrace in ecstasies at eve the rising storm forbids the news arrives untold she saw it in her servant's eye she felt it seen her heart was apt to feel and drowned without the furious ocean's aid in suffocating sorrows shares his tomb now round the sumptuous bridal monument the guilty billows innocently roar and the rough sailor passing drops a tear a tear can tears suffice but not for me how vain our efforts and our arts how vain the distant train of thought i took to shun has thrown me on my fate these died together happy in ruin undivorced by death or ne'er to meet or ne'er to part is peace narcissa pity bleeds at thought of thee yet thou wast only near me not myself survive myself that cures all other woe narcissa lives philander is forgot oh the soft commerce oh the tender ties close twisted with the fibres of the heart which broken break them and drain off the soul of human joy and make it pain to live and is it then to live when such friends part tis the survivor dies my heart no more 
end of section five chapter six of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this librivox recording is in the public domain the infidel reclaimed in two parts containing the nature proof and importance of immortality part one where among other things glory and riches are particularly considered to the right honourable henry pelham first lord commissioner of the treasury and chancellor of the exchequer preface few ages have been deeper in dispute about religion than this the dispute about religion and the practice of it seldom go together the shorter therefore the dispute the better i think it may be reduced to this single question is man immortal or is he not if he is not all our disputes are mere amusements or trials of skill in this case truth reason religion which give our discourses such pomp and solemnity are as will be shown mere empty sound without any meaning in them but if man is immortal it will behoove him to be very serious about eternal consequences or in other words to be truly religious and this great fundamental truth unestablished or unawakened in the minds of men is i conceive the real source and support of all our infidelity how remote soever the particular objections advance may seem to be from it sensible appearances affect most men much more than abstract reasonings and we daily see bodies drop around us but the soul is invisible the power which inclination has over the judgment is greater than can be well conceived by those that have not had an experience of it and of what numbers is it the sad interest that soul should not survive the heathen world confessed that they rather hoped than firmly believed immortality and how many heathens have we still amongst us the sacred page assures us that life and immortality are brought to light by the gospel but by how many is the gospel rejected or overlooked from these considerations and from my being accidentally privy to the sentiments of some particular persons i have been long persuaded that most if not all our infidels whatever name they take and whatever scheme for argument's sake and to keep themselves in countenance they patronize are supported in their deplorable error by some doubt of their immortality at the bottom and i am satisfied that men once thoroughly convinced of their immortality are not far from being christians for it is hard to conceive that a man fully conscious eternal pain or happiness will certainly be his lot should not earnestly and impartially inquire after the surest means of escaping the one and securing the other and of such an earnest and impartial inquiry i well know the consequence here therefore in proof of this most fundamental truth some plain arguments are offered arguments derived from principles which infidels admit in common with believers arguments which appear to me altogether irresistible and such as i am satisfied will have great weight with all who give themselves the small trouble of looking seriously into their own bosoms and of observing with any tolerable degree of attention what daily passes round about them in the world if some argument shall here occur which others have declined they are submitted with all deference to better judgments in this of all points the most important for as to the being of a god that is no longer disputed but it is undisputed for this reason only viz because where the least pretence to reason is admitted it must for ever be indisputable and of consequence no man can be betrayed into a dispute of that nature by vanity which has a principal share in animating our modern combatants against other articles of our belief night sixth the infidel reclaimed part one she for i know not yet her name in heaven not early like narcissa left the scene nor sudden like philander what avail this seeming mitigation but in flames this fancied medicine heightens the disease the longer known the closer still she grew and gradual parting is a gradual death tis the grim tyrant's engine which extorts by tardy pressure still increasing weight from hardest hearts confession of distress oh the long dark approach through years of pain 
death's gallery might i dare to call it so with dismal doubt and sable terror hung sick hope's pale lamp its only glimmering ray there fate my melancholy walk ordained for bid self-love itself to flatter there how oft i gazed prophetically sad how oft i saw her dead while yet in smiles in smiles she sunk her grief to lessen mine she spoke me comfort and increased my pain like powerful armies trenching at a town by slow and silent but resistless sap in his pale progress gently gaining ground death urged his deadly siege in spite of art of all the balmy blessings nature lends to succour frail humanity ye stars not now first made familiar to my sight and thou o moon bear witness many a night he tore the pillow from beneath my head tied down my sore attention to the shock by ceaseless depredations on a life dearer than that he left me dreadful post of observation darker every hour less dread the day that drove me to the brink and pointed at eternity below when my soul shuddered at futurity when on a moment's point the important die of life and death spun doubtful ere it fell and turned up life my title to more woe but why more woe more comfort let it be nothing is dead but that which wished to die nothing is dead but wretchedness and pain nothing is dead but what encumbered galled blocked up the past and barred from real life where dwells that wish most ardent of the wise too dark the sun to see it highest stars too low to reach it death great death alone or stars and sun triumphant lands us there nor dreadful our transition though the mind an artist at creating self alarms rich in expedients for inquietude is prone to paint it dreadful who can take death's portrait true the tyrant never sat our sketch all random strokes conjecture all close shuts the grave nor tells one single tale death and his image rising in the brain bear faint resemblance never are alike fear shakes the pencil fancy loves excess dark ignorance is lavish of her shades and these the formidable picture draw but grant the worst tis past new prospects rise and drop a veil eternal o'er her tomb far other views our contemplation claim views that o'er pay the rigours of our life views that suspend our agonies in death wrapped in the thought of immortality wrapped in the single the triumphant thought long life might lapse age unperceived come on and find the soul unsated with her theme its nature proof importance fire my song oh that my song could emulate my soul like her immortal no the soul disdains a mark so mean far nobler hope inflames if endless ages can outweigh an hour let not the laurel but the palm inspire thy nature immortality who knows and yet who knows it not it is but life in stronger thread of brighter colour spun and spun for ever dipped by cruel fate in stygian dye how black how brittle here how short our correspondence with the sun and while it lasts inglorious our best deeds how wanting in their weight our highest joys small cordials to support us in our pain and give us strength to suffer but how great to mingle interests converse amities 
with all the sons of reason scattered wide through habitable space wherever born or e'er endowed to live free citizens of universal nature to lay hold by more than feeble faith on the supreme to call heaven's rich unfathomable minds minds which support archangels in their state our own to rise in science as in bliss initiate in the secrets of the skies to read creation read its mighty plan in the bare bosom of the deity the plan and execution to collate to see before each glance of piercing thought all cloud all shadow blown remote and leave no mystery but that of love divine which lifts us on the seraph's flaming wing from earth's alcaldama this field of blood of inward anguish and of outward ill from darkness and from dust to such a scene love's element true joy's illustrious home from earth's sad contrast now deplored more fair what exquisite vicissitude of fate blessed absolution of our blackest hour lorenzo these are thoughts that make man man the wise illumine aggrandize the great how great while yet we tread the kindred clod and every moment fear to sink beneath the clod we tread soon trodden by our sons how great in the wild world of time's pursuits to stop and pause involved in high presage through the long vista of a thousand years to stand contemplating our distant selves as in a magnifying mirror scene enlarged ennobled elevate divine to prophesy our own futurities to gaze in thought on what all thought transcends to talk with fellow candidates of joys as far beyond conception as desert ourselves astonished talkers and the tale lorenzo swells thy bosom at the thought the swell becomes thee tis an honest pride revere thyself and yet thyself despise his nature no man can or rate and none can underrate his merit take good heed nor there be modest where thou shouldst be proud that almost universal error shun how just our pride when we behold those heights not those ambition paints in air but those reason points out and ardent virtue gains and angels emulate our pride how just when mount we when these shackles cast when quit this cell of the creation this small nest stuck in a corner of the universe wrapped up in fleecy cloud and fine-spun air fine-spun to sense but gross and feculent to souls celestial souls ordained to breathe ambrosial gales and drink a purer sky greatly triumphant on time's farther shore where virtue reigns and rich with full arrears while pomp imperial begs an alms of peace in empire high or in proud science deep ye born of earth on what can you confer with half the dignity with half the gain the gust the glow of rational delight as on this theme which angels praise and share man's fates and favours are a theme in heaven what wretched repetition cloys us here what periodic potions for the sick distempered bodies and distempered minds in an eternity what scenes shall strike adventures thicken novelties surprise what webs of wonder shall unravel there what full day pour on all the paths of heaven and light the almighty footsteps in the deep how shall the blessed day of our discharge unwind at once the labyrinths of fate and straighten its inextricable maze if inextinguishable thirst in man to know how rich how full our banquet there there not the moral world alone unfolds the world material lately seen in shades and in those shades by fragments only seen and seen those fragments by the labouring eye unbroken then illustrious and entire its ample sphere its universal frame in full dimension swells to the survey and enters at one glance the ravished sight 
from some superior point where who can tell suffice it tis a point where gods reside how shall the stranger man's illumined eye in the vast ocean of unbounded space behold an infinite of floating worlds divide the crystal waves of ether pure in endless voyage without port the least of these disseminated orbs how great great as they are what numbers these surpass huge as leviathan to that small race those twinkling multitudes of little life he swallows unperceived stupendous these yet what are these stupendous to the whole as particles as atoms ill perceived as circulating globules in our veins so vast the plan fecundity divine exuberant source perhaps i wrong thee still if admiration is a source of joy what transport hence yet this the least in heaven what this to that illustrious robe he wears who tossed this mass of wonders from his hand a specimen an earnest of his power tis to that glory whence all glory flows as the mead's meanest floweret to the sun which gave it birth but what this son of heaven this bliss supreme of the supremely blessed death only death the question can resolve by death cheap bought the ideas of our joy the bare ideas solid happiness so distant from its shadow chased below and chase we still the phantom through the fire or bog and break and precipice till death and toil we still for sublunary pay defy the dangers of the field and flood or spider-like spin out our precious all our more than vitals spin if no regard to great futurity in curious webs of subtle thought and exquisite design fine network of the brain to catch a fly the momentary buzz of vain renown a name a mortal immortality or meaner still instead of grasping air for sordid lucre plunge we in the mire drudge sweat through every shame for every gain for vile contaminating trash throw up our hope in heaven our dignity with man and deify the dirt matured to gold ambition avarice the two demons these which go through every slough our human herd hard travelled from the cradle to the grave how low the wretches stoop how steep they climb these demons burn mankind but most possess lorenzo's bosom and turn out the skies is it in time to hide eternity and why not in an atom on the shore to cover ocean or a moat the sun glory and wealth have they this blinding power what if to them i prove lorenzo blind would it surprise thee be thou then surprised thou neither knowest their nature learn from me mark well as foreign as these subjects seem what close connection ties them to my theme first what is true ambition the pursuit of glory nothing less than man can share were they as vain as gaudy-minded man as flatulent with fumes of self-applause their arts and conquests animals might boast and claim their laurel crowns as well as we but not celestial here we stand alone as in our form distinct pre-eminent if prone in thought our stature is our shame a man should blush his forehead meets the skies the visible and present are for brutes a slender portion and a narrow bound these reason with an energy divine or leaps and claims the future and unseen the vast unseen the future fathomless when the great soul boys up to this high point leaving gross nature's sediments below then and then only adam's offspring quits the sage and hero of the fields and woods asserts his rank and rises into man this is ambition this is human fire can parts replace two bold pretenders make lorenzo great and pluck him from the throng genius and art ambition's boasted wings our boast but ill deserve a feeble aid dedalian ingenuity if these alone assist our flight fame's flight is glory's fall heart merit wanting mount we ne'er so high our height is but the gibbet of our name a celebrated wretch when i behold when i behold a genius bright and base of towering talents and terrestrial aims methinks i see as thrown from her high sphere the glorious fragments of a soul immortal with rubbish mixed and glittering in the dust struck at the splendid melancholy sight at once compassion soft and envy rise 
but wherefore envy talents angel bright if wanting worth are shining instruments in false ambition's hand to finish faults illustrious and give infamy renown great ill is an achievement of great powers plain sense but rarely leads us far astray reason the means affections choose our end means have no merit if our end amiss if wrong our hearts our heads are right in vain what is a pelham's head to pelham's heart hearts are proprietors of all applause right ends and means make wisdom worldly wise is but half-witted at its highest praise let genius then despair to make thee great nor flatter station what is station high tis a proud mendicant it boasts and begs it begs an alms of homage from the throng and off the throng denies its charity monarchs and ministers are awful names whoever wear them challenge our devoir religion public order both exact external homage and a supple knee to beings pompously set up to serve the meanest slave all more is merits due her sacred and inviolable right nor ever paid the monarch but the man our hearts ne'er bowed but to superior worth nor ever fail of their allegiance there fools indeed drop the man in their account and vote the mantle into majesty let the small savage boast his silver fur his royal robe unborrowed and unbought his own descending fairly from his sires shall man be proud to wear his livery and souls in ermine scorn a soul without can place or lessen us or aggrandize pygmies are pygmies still though perched on alps and pyramids are pyramids in vales each man makes his own stature builds himself virtue alone outbuilds the pyramids her monument shall last when egypt's fall of these sure truths dost thou demand the cause the cause is lodged in immortality here and assent thy bosom burns for power what station charms thee i'll install thee there tis thine and art thou greater than before than thou before wast something less than man has thy new post betrayed thee into pride that treacherous pride betrays thy dignity that pride defames humanity and calls the being mean which staffs or strings can raise that pride like hooded hawks in darkness soars from blindness bold and towering to the skies tis born of ignorance which knows not man an angel's second nor his second long a nero quitting his imperial throne and courting glory from the tinkling string but faintly shadows an immortal soul with empire's self to pride or rapture fired if nobler motives minister no cure even vanity forbids thee to be vain high worth is elevated place tis more it makes the post stand candidate for thee makes more than monarchs makes an honest man though no exchequer it commands tis wealth and though it wears no ribbon tis renown renown that would not quit thee though disgraced nor leave thee pendant on a master's smile other ambition nature interdicts nature proclaims it most absurd in man by pointing at his origin and end milk and a swath at first his whole demand his whole domain at last a turf or stone to whom between a world may seem too small so is truly great dart forward on the wing or just ambition to the grand result the curtains fall there see the buskined chief unshod behind this momentary scene reduced to his own stature low or high as vice or virtue sinks him or sublimes and laugh at this fantastic mummery this antic prelude of grotesque events where dwarfs are often stilted and betray a littleness of soul by worlds or run and nations laid in blood dread sacrifice to christian pride which had with horror shocked the darkest pagans offered to their gods o thou most christian enemy to peace again in arms again provoking fate that prince and that alone is truly great who draws the sword reluctant gladly she's on empire builds what empire far outweighs and makes his throne a scaffold to the skies why this so rare because for god of all the day of death that venerable day which sits as judge that day which shall pronounce on all our days absolve them or condemn lorenzo never shut thy thought against it be levies ne'er so full afford it room and give it audience in the cabinet that friend consulted flatteries apart will tell thee fair if thou art great or mean to dote on aught may leave us or be left is that ambition then let flames descend point to the centre their inverted spires and learn humiliation from a soul which boasts her lineage from celestial fire yet these are they the world pronounces wise the world which cancels nature's right and wrong and casts new wisdom even the grave man lends his solemn face to countenance the coin wisdom for parts is madness for the whole 
this stamps the paradox and gives us leave to call the wisest weak the richest poor the most ambitious unambitious mean in triumph mean and abject on a throne nothing can make it less than mad in man to put forth all his ardour all his art and give his soul her full unbounded flight but reaching him who gave her wings to fly when blind ambition quite mistakes her road and downwards pours for that which shines above substantial happiness and true renown then like an idiot gazing on the brook we leap at stars and fasten in the mud at glory grasp and sink in infamy ambition powerful source of good and ill thy strength in man like length of wing in birds when disengaged from earth with greater ease and swifter flight transports us to the skies by toys entangled or in guilt but mired it turns a curse it is our chain and scourge in this dark dungeon where confined we lie close grated by the sordid bars of sense all prospect of eternity shut out and but for execution ne'er set free with error in ambition justly charged find we lorenzo wiser in his wealth what if thy rental i reform and draw an inventory new to set thee right where thy true treasure gold says not in me and not in me the diamond gold is poor india's insolvent seek it in thyself seek in thy naked self and find it there in being so descended formed endowed sky-born sky-guided sky-returning race erect immortal rational divine in senses which inherit earth and heavens enjoy the various riches nature yields far nobler give the riches they enjoy give taste to fruits and harmony to groves their radiant beams to gold and gold's bright fire take in at once the landscape of the world at a small inlet which a grain might close and half create the wondrous world they see our senses as our reason are divine before the magic organ's powerful charm earth were a rude uncoloured chaos still objects are but the occasion ours the exploit ours is the cloth the pencil and the paint which nature's admirable picture draws and beautifies creation's ample dome like milton's eve when gazing on the lake man makes the matchless image man admires say then small man his thoughts all sent abroad superior wonders in himself forgot his admiration waste on objects round when heaven makes him the soul of all he sees absurd not rare so great so mean is man what wealth in senses such as these what wealth in fancy fired to form a fairer scene than sense surveys in memory's record which should it perish could this world recall from the dark shadows of o'erwhelming years in colours fresh originally bright preserve its portrait and report its fate what wealth in intellect that sovereign power which sense and fancy summons to the bar interrogates approves or reprehends and from the mass those underlings import from their material sifted and refined and in truth balanced accurately weighed forms art and science government and law the solid basis and the beauteous frame the vitals and the grace of civil life and manners sad exception set aside strikes out with master hand a copy fair of his idea whose indulgent thought long long ere chaos teemed planned human bliss what wealth in souls that soar or dive range around disdaining limit or from place or time and here at once in thought extensive hear the almighty fiat and the trumpet sound bold on creation's outside walk and view what was and is and more than e'er shall be commanding with omnipotence of thought creation's new in fancies feel to rise souls that can grasp whate'er the almighty made and wander while through things impossible what wealth in faculties of endless growth in quenchless passions violent to crave in liberty to choose and power to reach and in duration how thy riches rise duration to perpetuate boundless bliss ask ye what power resides in feeble man that bliss to gain his virtues then unknown virtue our present peace our future prize man's unprecarious natural estate improvable at will in virtue lies its tenure sure its income is divine high built abundance heap on heap for what to breed new wants and beggar us the more than make a richer scramble for the throng soon as this feeble pulse which leaps so long almost by miracle is tired with play like rubbish from disploding engines thrown our magazines of hoarded trifles fly fly diverse fly to foreigners to foes new masters court and call the former fools how justly for dependence on their stay wide scatter first our playthings then our dust dost court abundance for the sake of peace learn and lament thy self-defeated scheme riches enabled to be richer still and richer still what mortal can resist thus wealth a cruel task master enjoins new toils succeeding toils an endless train and murders peace which taught it first to shine 
the poor are half as wretched as the rich whose proud and painful privilege it is at once to bear a double load of woe to feel the stings of envy and of want outrageous want both indies cannot cure a competence is vital to content much wealth is corpulence if not disease sick or encumbered is our happiness a competence is all we can enjoy oh be content where heaven can give no more more like a flash of water from a lock quickens our spirit's movement for an hour but soon its force is spent nor rise our joys above our native temper's common stream hence disappointment lurks in every prize as bees and flowers and stings us with success the rich man who denies it proudly feigns nor knows the wise are privy to the lie much learning shows how little mortals know much wealth how little worldlings can enjoy at best it babies us with endless toys and keeps us children till we drop to dust as monkeys at a mirror stand amazed they fail to find what they so plainly see thus men in shining riches see the face of happiness nor know it is a shade but gaze and touch and peep and peep again and wish and wonder it is absent still how few can rescue opulence from want who lives to nature rarely can be poor who lives to fancy never can be rich poor is the man in debt the man of gold in debt to fortune trembles at her power the man of reason smiles at her in death oh what a patrimony this a being of such inherent strength and majesty not worlds possessed can raise it worlds destroyed can't injure which holds on its glorious course when thine o oh, nature for ends to bless to mourn creation's obsequies what treasure this the monarch is a beggar to the man immortal ages past yet nothing gone mourn without eve a race without a goal unshortened by progression infinite futurity for ever future life beginning still where computation ends tis the description of a deity tis the description of the meanest slave the meanest slave dares then lorenzo scorn the meanest slave thy sovereign glory shares proud youth fastidious of the lower world man's lawful pride includes humility stoops to the lowest is too great to find inferiors all immortal brothers all proprietors eternal of thy love immortal what can strike the sense so strong as this the soul it thunders to the thought reason amazes gratitude o'erwhelms no more we slumber on the brink of fate roused at the sound the exulting soul ascends and breathes her native air an air that feeds ambitions high and fans ethereal fires quick kindles all that is divine within us nor leaves a one loitering thought beneath the stars has not lorenzo's bosom caught the flame immortal were but one immortal how would others envy how would thrones adore because tis common is the blessing lost how this ties up the bounteous hand of heaven o vain 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 all else eternity a glorious and a needful refuge that from vile imprisonment in abject views tis immortality tis that alone amid life's pains abasements emptiness the soul can comfort elevate and fill that only and that amply this performs lifts us above life's pains her joys above their terror those and these their luster loose eternity depending covers all eternity depending all achieves sets earth at distance casts her into shades blends her distinctions abrogates her powers the low the lofty joyous and severe fortune's dread frowns and fascinating smiles make one promiscuous and neglected heap the man beneath if i may call him man whom immortality's full force inspires nothing terrestrial touches his high thought suns shine unseen and thunders roll unheard by minds quite conscious of their high descent their present province and their future prize divinely darting upward every wish warm on the wing in glorious absence lost doubt you this truth why labours your belief if earth's whole orb by some due distance die were seen at once her towering alps would sink and level atlas leave an even sphere thus earth and all that earthly minds admire is swallowed in eternity's vast round to that stupendous view when souls awake so large of late so mountainous to man time's toys subside and equal all below enthusiastic this then all are weak but rank enthusiasts to this godlike height some souls have soared or martyrs ne'er have bled and all may do what has by men been done who beaten by these sublunary storms boundless interminable joys can weigh unraptured unexalted uninflamed what slave unblessed who from to-morrow's dawn expects an empire he forgets his chain enthroned in thought his absent sceptre waves and what a sceptre waits us what a throne her own immense appointments to compute or comprehend her high prerogatives in this her dark minority how toils are how vainly pants the human soul divine too great the bounty seems for earthly joy 
what heart but trembles at so strange a bliss in spite of all the truths the muse has sung ne'er to be prized enough enough revolved are there who wrap the world so close about them they see no farther than the clouds and dance on heedless vanity's fantastic toe till stumbling at a straw in their career headlong they plunge where end both dance and song are there lorenzo is it possible are there on earth let me not call them men who lodge a soul immortal in their breasts unconscious as the mountain of its oar or rock of its inestimable gem when rocks shall melt and mountains vanish these shall know their treasure treasure then no more are there still more amazing who resist the rising thought who smother in its birth the glorious truth who struggle to be brutes who through this bosom barrier burst their way and with reversed ambition strive to sink who labour downwards through though opposing powers of instinct reason and the world against them to dismal hopes and shelter in the shock of endless night night darker than the graves who fight the proofs of immortality with horrid zeal and execrable arts work all their engines level their black fires to blot from man this attribute divine then vital blood far dearer to the wise blasphemers and rank atheists to themselves to contradict them see all nature rise what object what event the moon beneath but argues or endears an after scene to reason proves or weds it to desire all things proclaim it needful some advance one precious step beyond and prove it sure a thousand arguments swarm round my pen from heaven and earth and man indulge a few by nature as her common habit worn so pressing providence a truth to teach which truth untaught all other truths were vain thou whose all providential eye surveys whose hand directs whose spirit fills and warms creation and holds empire far beyond eternity's inhabitant august of two eternities amazing lord one past ere man's or angels had begun aid while i rescue from the foe's assault thy glorious immortality in man a theme for ever and for all a void of moment infinite but relished most by those who love thee most who most adore nature thy daughter ever changing birth of thee the great immutable to man speaks wisdom is his oracle supreme and he who most consults her is most wise lorenzo to this heavenly delphos haste and come back all immortal all divine look nature through tis revolution all all change no death day follows night and night the dying day stars rise and set and rise earth takes thy example see the summer gay with her green chaplet and ambrosial flowers droops into pallid autumn winter gray horrid with frost and turbulent with storm blows autumn and his golden fruits away then melts into the spring soft spring with breath favonian from warm chambers of the south recalls the first all to reflourish fades as in a wheel all sinks to reascend emblems of man who passes not expires with this minute distinction emblems just nature revolves but man advances both eternal that a circle this a line that gravitates this soars the aspiring soul ardent and tremulous like flame ascends zeal and humility her wings to heaven the world of matter with its various forms all dies into new life life born from death rolls the vast mass and shall for ever roll no single atom once in being lost with change of counsel charges the most high what handsome first lorenzo can it be matter immortal and shall spirit die above the nobler shall less noble rise shall man alone for whom all else revives no resurrection no shall man alone imperial man be sown in barren ground less privileged than grain on which he feeds is man in whom alone is power to prize the bliss of being or with previous pain deplore its period by the stain of fate severely doomed death single unredeemed if nature's revolution speaks aloud in her gradation hear her louder still look nature through tis neat gradation all but what minute degrees her scale ascends each middle nature joined at each extreme to that above it joined to that beneath parts into parts reciprocally shot abhor divorce what love of union reigns here dormant matter waits a call to life half life half death joined there here life and sense there sense from reason steals a glimmering ray reason shines out in man but how preserve the chain and broken up to the realms of incorporeal life those realms of bliss where death hath no dominion grant a make half mortal half immortal earthy part and part ethereal grant the soul of man eternal or in man the series ends wide yawns the gap the connection is no more check reason halts her next step wants support striving to climb she tumbles from her scheme a scheme analogy pronounced so true analogy man's surest guide below thus far all nature calls on thy belief and will lorenzo careless of the call false attestation on all nature charge 
rather than violate his league with death renounce his reason rather than renounce the death's beloved and run the risk of heaven oh what indignity to deathless souls what treason to the majesty of man of man immortal hear the lofty style if so decree the almighty will be done let earth dissolve yon ponderous orbs descend and grind us into dust the soul is safe the man emerges mounts above the wreck as towering flame from nature's funeral pyre or devastation as a gainer smiles his charter his inviolable rights well pleased to learn from thunder's impotence death's pointless darts and hell's defeated storms but these chimeras touch not thee lorenzo the glories of the world thy sevenfold shield or other ambition than of crowns in air and superlunary felicities thy bosom warm i'll cool it if i can and turn those glories that enchant against thee what ties thee to this life proclaims the next if wise the cause that wounds thee is thy cure come my ambitious let us mount together to mount lorenzo never can refuse and from the clouds where pride delights to dwell look down on earth what seest thou wondrous things terrestrial wonders that eclipse the skies what links of laboured hands what loaded seas loaded by man for pleasure wealth or war seas winds and planets into service brought his art acknowledge and promote his ends nor can the eternal rocks his will withstand what levelled mountains and what lifted vales or vales of mountains sumptuous cities swell and gild our landscape with their glittering spires some mid the wandering waves majestic rise and neptune holds a mirror to their charms far greater still what cannot mortal might see wide dominions ravished from the deep the narrow deep with indignation foams or southward turn to delicate and grand the finer arts there ripen in the sun how the tall temples as to meet their gods ascend the skies the proud triumphal arch shows us half heaven beneath its ample bend high through mid-air here streams are taught to flow whole rivers there laid by in basins sleep here plains turn oceans there vast oceans join through kingdoms channeled deep from shore to shore and changed creation takes its face from man beats thy brave breast for formidable scenes where fame and empire wait upon the sword sea fields in blood here naval thunders rise britannia's voice that awes the world to peace how yon enormous mole projecting breaks the mid-sea furious waves their roar amidst outspeaks the deity and says o main thus far nor farther new restraints obey earth's disemboweled measured are the skies stars are detected in their deep recess creation widens vanquished nature yields her secrets are extorted art prevails what monument of genius spirit power and now lorenzo raptured at this scene whose glories render heaven superfluous say whose footsteps these immortals have been here could less than souls immortal this have done earth's covered o'er with proofs of souls immortal and proofs of immortality forgot to flatter thy grand foible i confess these are ambition's works and these are great but this the least immortal souls can do transcend them all but what can these transcend dost ask me what one sigh for the distressed what then for infidels a deeper sigh tis moral grandeur makes the mighty man how little they who think aught great below all our ambitions death defeats but one and that it crowns here cease we but ere long more powerful proof shall take the field against thee stronger than death and smiling at the tomb End of chapter six chapter seven of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this librivox recording is in the public domain night seventh the infidel reclaimed part two contents in the sixth night arguments were drawn from nature in proof of immortality here others are drawn from man from his discontent verse twenty nine from his passions and powers sixty three from the gradual growth of reason eighty one from his fear of death eighty six from the nature of hope one o four and of virtue one fifty nine etc from knowledge and love as being the most essential properties of the soul two fifty three from the order of creation two ninety etc from the nature of ambition three thirty seven etc avarice four sixty pleasure four seventy seven a digression on the grandeur of the passions five twenty one immortality alone renders our present state intelligible five forty five an objection from the stoics disbelief of immortality answered five eighty five endless questions unresolvable but on the supposition of our immortality six o six 
the natural most melancholy and pathetic complaint of a worthy man under the persuasion of no futurity six fifty three etc the gross absurdities and horrors of annihilation urged home on lorenzo eight forty three etc the soul's vast importance nine ninety two etc from whence it arises ten eighty the difficulty of being an infidel eleven thirty three the infamy eleven forty eight the cause eleven eighty eight and the character twelve o three of an infidel state what true free thinking is twelve eighteen the necessary punishment of the false twelve seventy three man's ruin is from himself thirteen o three an infidel accuses himself with guilt and hypocrisy and that of the worst sort thirteen nineteen his obligation to christians thirteen thirty seven what danger he incurs by virtue thirteen forty five vice recommended to him thirteen sixty four his high pretenses to virtue and benevolence exploded thirteen seventy three the conclusion on the nature of faith fourteen o six reason fourteen forty and hope fourteen forty five with an apology for this attempt fourteen seventy two heaven gives the needful but neglected call what day what hour but knocks at human hearts to wake the soul to sense of future scenes deaths stand like mercuries in every way and kindly point us to our journey's end pope who couldst make immortals art thou dead i give thee joy nor will i take my leave so soon to follow man but dives in death dives from the sun in fairer day to rise the grave his subterranean road to bliss yes infinite indulgence planned it so through various parts our glorious story runs time gives the preface endless age unrolls the volume ne'er unrolled of human fate this earth and skies already have proclaimed the world's a prophecy of worlds to come and who what god foretells who speaks in things still louder than in words shall dare deny if nature's arguments appear too weak turn a new leaf and stronger read in man if man sleeps on untaught by what he sees can he prove infidel to what he feels he whose blind thought futurity denies unconscious bears bellerophon like thee his own indictment he condemns himself who reads his bosom reads immortal life or nature there imposing on her sense has written fables man was made a lie why discontent for ever harboured there incurable consumption of our peace resolve me why the cottager and king he whom sea severed realms obey and he who steals his whole dominion from the waste repelling winter blasts with mud and straw disquieted alike draw sigh for sigh in fate so distant in complaint so near is it that things terrestrial can't content deep in rich pasture will thy flocks complain not so but to their master is denied to share their sweet serene man ill at ease in this not his own place this foreign field where nature fodders him with other food than was ordained his cravings to suffice poor in abundance famished at a feast sighs on for something more when most enjoyed is heaven then kinder to thy flocks than thee not so thy pasture richer but remote in part remote for that remoter part man bleats from instinct though perhaps debauched by sense his reason sleeps nor dreams the cause the cause how obvious when his reason wakes his grief is but his grandeur in disguise and discontent is immortality shall sons of ether shall the blood of heaven set up their hopes on earth and stable here with brutal acquiescence in the mire lorenzo no they shall be nobly pained the glorious foreigners distressed shall sigh on thrones and thou congratulate the sigh man's misery declares him born for bliss his anxious heart asserts the truth i sing and gives the sceptic in his head the lie our heads our hearts our passions and our powers speak the same language call us to the skies unripened these in this inclement clime scarce rise above conjecture and mistake and for this land of trifles those too strong tumultuous rise and tempest human life 
what prize on earth can pay us for the storm meet objects for our passions heaven ordained objects that challenge all their fire and leave no fault but in defect blessed heaven avert a bounded ardour for unbounded bliss o oh, for a bliss unbounded far beneath a soul immortal is a mortal joy nor are our powers to perish immature but after feeble effort here beneath a brighter sun and in a nobler soil transplanted from this sublunary bed shall flourish fair and put forth all their bloom reason progresseth instinct is complete swift instinct leaps slow reason feebly climbs brutes soon their zenith reach their little all flows in at once in ages they no more could know or do or covet or enjoy were man to live coeval with the sun the patriarch pupil would be learning still yet dying leave his lesson half unlearned men perish in advance as if the sun should set ere noon in eastern oceans drowned if fit with dim illustrious to compare the sun's meridian with the soul of man to man why stepped in nature so severe why thrown aside thy masterpiece half wrought while meaner efforts thy last hand enjoy or if abortively poor man must die nor reach what reach he might why die in dread why cursed with foresight wise to misery why of his proud prerogative the prey why less pre-eminent in rank than pain his immortality alone can tell full ample fun to balance all amiss and turn the scale in favour of the just his immortality alone can solve the darkest of enigmas human hope of all the darkest if at death we die hope eager hope the assassin of our joy all present blessings treading under foot is scarce a milder tyrant than despair with no past toils content still planting new hope turns us o'er to death alone for ease possession why more tasteless than pursuit why is a wish far dearer than a crown that wish accomplished why the grave of bliss because in the great future buried deep beyond our plans of empire and renown lies all that man with ardour should pursue and he who made him bent him to the right man's heart the almighty to the future sets by secret and inviolable springs and makes his hope his sublunary joy man's heart eats all things and is hungry still more more the glutton cries for something new so rages appetite if man can't mount he will descend he starves on the possessed hence the world's master from ambition's spire in capria plunged and dived beneath the brute in that rank sty why wallowed empire's son supreme because he could no higher fly his riot was ambition in despair old rome consulted birds lorenzo thou with more success the flight of hope survey of restless hope for ever on the wing high perched o'er every thought that falcon sits to fly at all that rises in her sight and never stooping but to mount again next moment she betrays her aim's mistake and owns her quarry lodged beyond the grave there should it fail us it must fail us there if being fails more mournful riddles rise and virtue vies with hope in mystery why virtue where its praise its being fled virtue is true self-interest pursued what true self-interest of quite mortal man to close with all that makes him happy here if vice as sometimes is our friend on earth then vice is virtue tis our sovereign good in self-applause is virtue's golden prize no self-applause attends it on thy scheme whence self-applause from conscience of the right and what is right but means of happiness no means of happiness when virtue yields that basis failing falls the building to and lays in ruin every virtuous joy the rigid guardian of a blameless heart so long revered so long reputed wise is weak 
with rank night errant trees o'errun why beats thy bosom with illustrious dreams of self-exposure laudable and great of gallant enterprise and glorious death die for thy country thou romantic fool seize seize the plank thyself and let her sink thy country what to thee the godhead what i speak with awe though he should bid thee bleed if with thy blood thy final hope is spilt nor can omnipotence reward the blow be deaf preserve thy being disobey nor is it disobedience no lorenzo whate'er the almighty's subsequent command his first command is this man love thyself in this alone free agents are not free existence is the basis bliss the prize if virtue costs existence tis a crime bold violation of our law supreme black suicide though nations which consult their gain at thy expense resound applause since virtue's recompense is doubtful here if man dies wholly well may we demand why is man suffered to be good in vain why to be good in vain is man enjoined why to be good in vain is man betrayed betrayed by traitors lodged in his own breast by sweet complacencies from virtue felt why whispers nature lies on virtue's part or if blind instinct which assumes the name of sacred conscience plays the fool in man why reason made accomplice in the cheat why are the wisest loudest in her praise can man by reason's beam be led astray or at his peril imitate his god since virtue sometimes ruins us on earth or both are true or man survives the grave or man survives the grave or own lorenzo thy boast supreme a wild absurdity dauntless thy spirit cowards are thy scorn grant man immortal and thy scorn is just the man immortal rationally brave dares rush on death because he cannot die but if man loses all when life is lost he lives a coward or a fool expires a daring infidel and such there are from pride example lucre rage revenge or pure heroical defective thought of all earth's madmen most deserves a chain when to the grave we follow the renowned for valour virtue science all we love and all we praise for worth whose noontide beam enabling us to think in higher style mends our ideas of ethereal powers dream we that lustre of the moral world goes out in stench and rottenness the close why was he wise to know and warm to praise and strenuous to transcribe in human life the mind almighty could it be that fate just when the lineaments began to shine and dawn the deity should snatch the draught with night eternal blotted out and give the skies alarm lest angels too might die if human souls why not angelic too extinguished and a solitary god or ghastly ruin frowning from his throne shall we this moment gaze on god and man the next lose man for ever in the dust from dust we disengage or man mistakes and there where least his judgment fears a flaw wisdom and worth how boldly he commends wisdom and worth are sacred names revered where not embraced applauded deified why not compassioned too if spirits die both are calamities inflicted both to make us but more wretched wisdom's eye acute for what to spy more miseries and worth so recompensed new points their stings or man surmounts the grave or gain is loss and worth exalted humbles us the more thou wilt not patronize a scheme that makes weakness and vice the refuge of mankind has virtue then no joys yes joys dear bought talk ne'er so long in this imperfect state virtue and vice are at eternal war virtues a combat and who fights for naught or for precarious or for small reward 
who virtue's self-reward so loud resound would take degrees angelic here below and virtue while they compliment betray by feeble motives and unfaithful guards the crown the unfading crown her soul inspires tis that and that alone can countervail the body's treacheries and the world's assaults on earth's poor pay our famished virtue dies truth incontestable in spite of all a bale has preached or a voltaire believed in man the more we dive the more we see heaven's signet stamping an immortal make dive to the bottom of his soul the base sustaining all what find we knowledge love as light and heat essential to the sun these to the soul and why if souls expire how little lovely here how little known small knowledge we dig up with endless toil and love unfeigned may purchase perfect hate why starved on earth our angel appetites while brutal are indulged their fulsome fill were then capacities divine conferred as a mock diadem in savage sport rank insult of our pompous poverty which reaps but pain from seeming claims so fair in future age lies no redress and shuts eternity the door on our complaint if so for what strange ends were mortals made the worst to wallow and the best to weep the man who merits most must most complain can we conceive a disregard in heaven what the worst perpetrate or best endure this cannot be to love and know in man is boundless appetite and boundless power and these demonstrate boundless objects too objects powers appetites heaven suits in all nor nature through air violates this sweet eternal concord on her tuneful string is man the sole exception from her laws eternity struck off from human hope i speak with truth but veneration too man is a monster the reproach of heaven a stain a dark impenetrable cloud on nature's beauteous aspect and deforms amazing blot deforms her with her lord if such is man's allotment what is heaven or own the soul immortal or blaspheme or own the soul immortal or invert all order go mock majesty go man and bow to thy superiors of the stall through every scene of sense superior far they graze the turf until they drink the stream unbrewed and ever full and unembittered with doubts fears fruitless hopes regrets despairs mankind's peculiar reason's precious dower no foreign clime they ransack for their robes nor brother's sight to the litigious bar their good is good entire unmixed unmarred they find a paradise in every field on boughs forbidden where no curses hang their ill no more than strikes the sense unstretched by previous dread or murmur in the rear when the worst comes it comes unfeared one stroke begins and ends their woe they die but once blessed incommunicable privilege for which proud man who rules the globe and reads the stars philosopher or hero sighs in vain account for this prerogative in brutes no day no glimpse of day to solve the knot but what beams on it from eternity o oh, soul and sweet solution that unties the difficult and softens the severe the cloud on nature's beauteous face dispels restores bright order casts the brute beneath and re-enthrones us in supremacy of joy even here admit immortal life and virtue is knight-errantry no more each virtue brings in hand a golden dower far richer in reversion hope exalts and though much bitter in our cup is thrown predominates and gives the taste of heaven o oh, wherefore is the deity so kind astonishing beyond astonishment heaven our reward for heaven enjoyed below still unsubdued thy stubborn heart 
for there the traitor lurks who doubts the truth i sing reason is guiltless will alone rebels what in that stubborn heart if i should find new unexpected witnesses against thee ambition pleasure and the love of gain canst thou suspect that these which make the soul the slave of earth should own her heir of heaven canst thou suspect what makes us disbelieve our immortality should prove it sure first then ambition summoned to the bar ambition's shame extravagance disgust and inextinguishable nature speak each much deposes hear them in their turn thy soul how passionately fond of fame how anxious that fond passion to conceal we blush detected in designs on praise though for best deeds and from the best of men and why because immortal art divine has made the body tutor to the soul heaven kindly gives our blood a moral flow bids it ascend the glowing cheek and there upbraid that little heart's inglorious aim which stoops to court a character from man while o'er us in tremendous judgment sit far more than man with endless praise and blame ambition's boundless appetite outspeaks the verdict of its shame when souls take fire at high presumptions of their own desert one age is poor applause the mighty shout the thunder by the living few begun late time must echo worlds unborn resound we wish our names eternally to live wild dream which ne'er had haunted human thought had not our natures been eternal too instinct points out an interest in hereafter but our blind reason sees not where it lies or seeing gives the substance for the shade fame is the shade of immortality and in itself a shadow soon is caught contemned it shrinks to nothing in the grasp consult the ambitious tis ambition's cure and is this all cried caesar at his height disgusted this third proof ambition brings of immortality the first in fame observe him near your envy will abate shamed at the disproportion vast between the passion and the purchase he will sigh at such success and blush at his renown and why because far richer prize invites his heart far more illustrious glory calls it calls in whispers yet the deafest hear and can ambition a fourth proof supply it can and stronger than the former three yet quite o'erlooked by some reputed wise though disappointments in ambition pain and though success disgusts yet still lorenzo in vain we strive to pluck it from our hearts by nature planted for the noblest ends absurd the famed advice to pyrrhus given more praised than pondered specious but unsound sooner that hero's sword the world had quelled than reason his ambition man must soar an obstinate activity within an insuppressive spring will toss him up in spite of fortune's load not kings alone each villager has his ambition too no sultan prouder than his fettered slave slaves build their little babylons of straw echo the proud assyrian in their hearts and cry behold the wonders of my might and why because immortal as their lord and souls immortal must for ever heave at something great the glitter or the gold the praise of mortals or the praise of heaven nor absolutely vain is human praise when human is supported by divine i'll introduce lorenzo to himself pleasure and pride bad masters share our hearts as love of pleasure is ordained to guard and feed our bodies and extend our race the love of praise is planted to protect and propagate the glories of the mind what is it but the love of praise inspires matures refines embellishes exalts earth's happiness from that the delicate the grand the marvellous of civil life want and convenience underworkers lay the basis on which love of glory builds nor is thy life o virtue less in debt to praise thy secret stimulating friend were men not proud what merit should we miss 
pride made the virtues of the pagan world praise is the salt that seasons right to man and whets his appetite for moral good thirst of applause is virtue's second guard reason her first but reason wants an aid our private reason is a flatterer thirst of applause calls public judgment in to poise our own to keep an even scale and give endangered virtue fairer play here a fifth proof arises stronger still why this so nice construction of our hearts these delicate moralities of sense this constitutional reserve of aid to succour virtue when our reason fails if virtue kept alive by care and toil and oft the mark of injuries on earth when labour to maturity its bill of disciplines and pains unpaid must die why freighted rich to dash against a rock were man to perish when most fit to live oh how misspent were all these stratagems by skill divine inwoven in our frame where are heaven's holiness and mercy fled laughs heaven at once at virtue and at man if not why that discouraged this destroyed thus far ambition what says avarice this her chief maxim which has long been thine the wise and wealthy are the same i grant it to store up treasure with incessant toil this is man's province this his highest praise to this great end keen instinct stings him on to guide that instinct reason is thy charge tis thine to tell us where true treasure lies but reason failing to discharge her trust or to the deaf discharging it in vain a blunder follows and blind industry galled by the spur but stranger to the course the course where stakes of more than gold are won or loading with the cares of distant age the jaded spirits of the present hour provides for an eternity below thou shalt not covet is a wise command but bounded to the wealth the sun surveys look farther the command stands quite reversed and avarice is a virtue most divine is faith a refuge for our happiness most sure and is it not for reason too nothing this world unriddles but the next whence inextinguishable thirst of gain from inextinguishable life in man man if not meant by worth to reach the skies had wanted wing to fly so far in guilt sour grapes i grant ambition avarice yet still their root is immortality these its wild growths so bitter and so base pain and reproach religion can reclaim refine exalt throw down their poisonous lee and make them sparkle in the bowl of bliss see the third witness laughs at bliss remote and falsely promises an eden here truth she shall speak for once though prone to lie a common cheat and pleasure is her name to pleasure never was lorenzo deaf then hear her now now first thy real friend since nature made us not more fond than proud of happiness whence hypocrites in joy makers of mirth artificers of smiles why should the joy most poignant sense affords burn us with blushes and rebuke our pride those heaven-born blushes tell us man descends even in the zenith of his earthly bliss should reason take her infidel repose this honest instinct speaks our lineage high this instinct calls on darkness to conceal our rapturous relation to the stalls our glory covers us with noble shame and he that's unconfounded is unmanned the man that blushes is not quite a brute thus far with thee lorenzo will i close pleasure is good and man for pleasure made but pleasure full of glory as of joy pleasure which neither blushes nor expires the witnesses are heard the cause is o'er let conscience file the sentence in her court dearer than deeds that half a realm convey thus sealed by truth authentic record runs know all no infidels unapt to know tis immortality your nature solves 
tis immortality deciphers man and opens all the mysteries of his make without it half his instincts are a riddle without it all his virtues are a dream his very crimes attest his dignity his sateless thirst of pleasure gold and fame declares him born for blessings infinite what less than infinite makes unabsurd passions which all on earth but more inflames fierce passions so mismeasured to this scene stretched out like eagle's wings beyond our nest far far beyond the worth of all below for earth too large presage a nobler flight and evidence our title to the skies ye gentle theologues of calmer kind whose constitution dictates to your pen who cold yourselves think ardour comes from hell think not our passions from corruption sprung though to corruption now they lend their wings that is their mistress not their mother all and justly reason deem divine i see i feel a grandeur in the passions too which speaks their high descent and glorious end which speaks them rays of an eternal fire in paradise itself they burned as strong ere adam fell though wiser in their aim like the proud eastern struck by providence what though our passions are run mad and stoop with low terrestrial appetite to graze on trash on toys dethroned from high desire yet still through their disgrace no feeble ray of greatness shines and tells us whence they fell but these like that fallen monarch when reclaimed when reason moderates the reign aright shall reascend remount their former sphere where once they soared illustrious ere seduced by wanton eve's debauch to stroll on earth and set the sublunary world on fire but grant their frenzy lasts their frenzy fails to disappoint one providential end for which heaven blew up ardour in our hearts were reason silent boundless passion speaks a future scene of boundless objects too and brings glad tidings of eternal day eternal day tis that enlightens all and all by that enlightened proves it sure consider man as an immortal being intelligible all and all is great a crystalline transparency prevails and strikes full lustre through the human sphere consider man as mortal all is dark and wretched reason weeps at the survey the learned lorenzo cries and let her weep weak modern reason the ancient times were wise authority that venerable guide stands on my part the famed athenian porch and who for wisdom so renowned as they denied this immortality to man i grant it but affirm they proved it too a riddle this have patience i'll explain what noble vanities what moral flights glittering through their romantic wisdom's page make us at once despise them and admire fable is flat to these high seasoned sires they leave the extravagance of song below flesh shall not feel or feeling shall enjoy the dagger or the rack to them alike a bed of roses or the burning bull in men exploding all beyond the grave strange doctrine this as doctrine it was strange but not as prophecy for such it proved and to their own amazement was fulfilled they feigned a firmness christians need not feign the christian truly triumphed in the flame the stoic saw in double wonder lost wonder at them and wonder at himself to find the bold adventures of his thought not bold and that he strove to lie in vain whence then those thoughts those towering thoughts that flew such monstrous heights from instinct and from pride the glorious instinct of a deathless soul confusedly conscious of her dignity suggested truths they could not understand in lust's dominion and in passion's storm truth's system broken scattered fragments lay as light in chaos glimmering through the gloom smit with the pomp of lofty sentiments pleased pride proclaimed what reason disbelieved 
pride like the delphic priestess with a swell raved nonsense destined to be future sense when life immortal in full day shall shine and death's dark shadows fly the gospel sun they spoke what nothing but immortal souls could speak and thus the truth they questioned proved can then absurdities as well as crimes speak man immortal all things speak him so much has been urged and dost thou call for more call and with endless questions be distressed all unresolvable if earth is all why life a moment infinite desire our wish eternity our home the grave heaven's promise dormant lies in human hope who wishes life immortal proves it too why happiness pursued though never found man's thirst of happiness declares it is for nature never gravitates to naught that thirst unquenched declares it is not here my lucia thy clarissa call to thought why cordial friendship riveted so deep as hearts to pierce at first at parting rend if friend and friendship vanish in an hour is not this torment in the mask of joy why by reflection marred the joys of sense why past and future preying on our hearts and putting all our present joys to death why labours reason instinct were as well instinct far better what can choose can err oh how infallible the thoughtless brute twere well his holiness were half as sure reason with inclination why at war why sense of guilt why conscience up in arms conscience of guilt is prophecy of pain and bosom counsel to decline the blow reason with inclination ne'er had jarred if nothing future paid for barons here thus on these and a thousand pleas uncalled all promise some ensure a second scene which were it doubtful would be dearer far than all things else most certain were it false what truth on earth so precious as the lie this world it gives us let what will ensue this world it gives in that high cordial hope the future of the present is the soul how this life groans when severed from the next poor mutilated wretch that disbelieves by dark distrust his being cut in two in both parts perishes life void of joy sad prelude of eternity in pain couldst thou persuade me the next life could fail our ardent wishes how should i pour out my bleeding heart in anguish new as deep oh with what thoughts thy hope and my despair abhorred annihilation blast the soul and wide extends the bounds of human woe could i believe lorenzo's system true in this black channel would my ravings run grief from the future borrowed peace erewhile the future vanished and the present pained strange import of unprecedented ill fall how profound like lucifer's the fall unequal fate his fall without his guilt from where fond hope built her pavilion high the gods among hurled headlong hurled at once to-night to nothing darker still the night if twas a dream why wake me my worst foe lorenzo boastful of the name of friend oh for delusion oh for error still could vengeance strike much stronger than to plant a thinking being in a world like this not over rich before now beggared quite more cursed than at the fall the sun goes out the thorns shoot up what thorns in every thought why sense of better it embitters worse why sense why life if but to sigh then sink to what i was twice nothing and much woe woe from heaven's bounties woe from what was wont to flatter most high intellectual powers thought virtue knowledge blessings by thy scheme all poisoned into pains first knowledge once my soul's ambition now her greatest dread to know myself true wisdom no to shun that shocking science parent of despair avert thy mirror if i see i die know my creator climb his blessed abode by painful speculation pierce the veil dive in his nature read his attributes and gaze in admiration on a foe obtruding life withholding happiness 
from the full rivers that surround his throne not letting fall one drop of joy on man man gasping for one drop that he might cease to curse his birth nor envy reptiles more ye sable clouds ye darkest shades of night hide him forever hide him from my thought once all my comfort source and soul of joy now leagued with furies and with thee against me know his achievements study his renown contemplate this amazing universe dropped from his hand with miracles replete for what mid miracles of nobler name to find one miracle of misery to find the being which alone can know and praise his works a blemish on his praise through nature's ample range in thought to stroll and start at man the single mourner there breathing high hope chained down to pangs and death knowing is suffering and shall virtue share the sigh of knowledge virtue shares the sigh by straining up the steep of excellent by battles fought and from temptation won what gains she but the pang of seeing worth angelic worth soon shuffled in the dark with every vice and swept to brutal dust merit is madness virtue is a crime a crime to reason if it costs us pain unpaid what pain amidst a thousand more to think the most abandoned after days of triumph or their betters find in death as soft a pillow nor make fouler clay duty religion these our duty done imply reward religion is mistake duty there's none but to repel the cheat ye cheats away ye daughters of my pride who feign yourselves the favourites of the skies ye towering hopes abortive energies that toss and struggle in my lying breast to scale the skies and build presumptions there as i were heir of an eternity vain vain ambitions trouble me no more why travel far in quest of sure defeat as bounded as my being be my wish all is inverted wisdom is a fool sense take the rein blind passion drive us on and ignorance befriend us on our way ye knew but true as patrons of our peace yes give the pulse full empire live the brute since as the brute we die the sum of man of godlike man to revel and to rot but not on equal terms with other brutes their revels a more poignant relish yield and safer too they never poisons choose instinct than reason makes more wholesome meals and sends all mooring murmur far away for sensual life they best philosophize there's that serene the sages sought in vain tis man alone expostulates with heaven his all the power and all the cause to mourn shall human eyes alone dissolve in tears and bleed in anguish none but human hearts the wide-stretched realm of intellectual woe surpassing sensual far is all our own in life so fatally distinguished why cast in one lot confounded lumped in death ere yet in being was mankind in guilt why thundered this peculiar clause against us all mortal and all wretched have the skies reasons of state their subjects may not scan nor humbly reason when they sorely sigh all mortal and all wretched tis too much unparalleled in nature tis too much on being unrequested at thy hands omnipotent for i see naught but power and why see that why thought to toil and eat then make our bed in darkness needs no thought what superfluities are reasoning souls o oh, give eternity or thought destroy but without thought our curse were half unfelt its blunted edge would spare the throbbing heart and therefore tis bestowed i thank thee reason for aiding life's too small calamities and giving being to the dread of death such are thy bounties was it then too much for me to trespass on the brutal rites too much for heaven to make one emmet more too much for chaos to permit my mass a longer stay with essences unwrought unfashioned untormented into man wretched preferment to this round of pains wretched capacity of frenzy thought wretched capacity of dying life life thought worth wisdom all oh foul revolt once friends to peace gone over to the foe death then has changed his nature too o death come to my bosom thou best gift of heaven best friend of man since man is man no more why in this thorny wilderness so long since there's no promised land's ambrosial bower to pay me with its honey for my stings if needful to the selfish schemes of heaven to sting us sore why mocked our misery 
why this so sumptuous insult o'er our heads why this illustrious canopy displayed why so magnificently lodged despair at stated periods sure returning roll these glorious orbs that mortals may compute their length of labours and of pains nor lose their misery's full measure smiles with flowers and fruits promiscuous ever teeming earth that man may languish in luxurious scenes and in an eden morn his withered joys claim earth and skies man's admiration due for such delights blessed animals too wise to wonder and too happy to complain our doom decreed demands a mournful scene why not a dungeon dark for the condemned why not the dragon subterranean den for man to howl in why not his abode of the same dismal colour with his fate a thebes a babylon at vast expense of time toil treasure art for owls and adders as congruous as for man this lofty dome which prompts proud thought and kindles high desire if from her humble chamber in the dust while proud thought swells and high desire inflames the poor worm calls us for her inmates there and round us death's inexorable hand draws the dark curtain close undrawn no more undrawn no more behind the cloud of death once i beheld a sun a sun which gilt that sable cloud and turned it all to gold how the graves altered fathomless as hell a real hell to those who dreamt of heaven annihilation how it yawns before me next moment i may drop from thought from sense the privilege of angels and of worms and outcast from existence and this spirit this all-pervading this all-conscious soul this particle of energy divine which travels nature flies from star to star and visits gods and emulates their powers for ever is extinguished horror death death of that death i fearless once surveyed when horror universal shall descend in heaven's dark concave urn all human race on that enormous unrefunding tomb how just this verse this monumental sigh beneath the lumber of demolished worlds deep in the rubbish of the general wreck swept ignominious to the common mass of matter never dignified with life here lie proud rationals the sons of heaven the lords of earth the property of worms beings of yesterday and no to-morrow who lived in terror and in pangs expired all gone to rot in chaos or to make their happy transit into blocks or brutes nor longer sully their creator's name lorenzo here pause ponder and pronounce just is this history if such is man mankind's historian though divine might weep and dares lorenzo smile i know thee proud for once let pride befriend thee pride looks pale at such a scene and sighs for something more amid thy boasts presumptions and displays and art thou then a shadow less than shade a nothing less than nothing to have been and not to be is lower than unborn art thou ambitious why then make the worm thine equal runs thy taste of pleasure high why patronize sure death of every joy charm riches why choose beggary in the grave of every hope a bankrupt and for ever ambition pleasure avarice persuade thee to make that world of glory rapture wealth they lately proved the soul's supreme desire what art thou made of rather how unmade great nature's master appetite destroyed his endless life and happiness despised or both wished here where neither can be found such man's perverse eternal war with heaven darest thou persist and is there naught on earth but a long train of transitory forms rising and breaking millions in an hour bubbles of a fantastic deity blown up in sport and then in cruelty destroyed oh for what crime unmerciful lorenzo destroys thy scheme the whole of human race kind is fell lucifer compared to thee o oh, spare this waste of being half divine and vindicate the economy of heaven heaven is all love all joy in giving joy it never had created but to bless and shall it then strike off the list of life out being blessed or worthy so to be heaven starts at an annihilating god is that all nature starts at thy desire art such a clod to wish thyself all clay what is that dreadful wish the dying groan of nature murdered by the blackest guilt what deadly poison has thy nature drank to nature undebouched no shock so great nature's first wish is endless happiness annihilation is an afterthought a monstrous wish unborn till virtue dies 
and oh what depth of horror lies enclosed for non-existence no man ever wished but first he wished the deity destroyed if so what words are dark enough to draw thy picture true the darkest are too fair beneath what baleful planet in what hour of desperation by what fury's aid in what infernal posture of the soul all hell invited and all hell and joy at such a birth a birth so near of kin did thy foul fancy whelp so black a scheme of hopes abortive faculties half blown and deities begun reduced to dust there is naught thou sayest but one eternal flux of feeble essences tumultuous driven through time's rough billows into night's abyss say in this rapid tide of human ruin is there no rock on which man's tossing thought can rest from terror dare his fate survey and boldly think it something to be born amid such hourly wrecks of being fair is there no central all-sustaining base all-realizing all-connecting power which as it called forth all things can recall and force destruction to refund her spoil command the grave restore her taken prey bid death's dark veil its human harvest yield and earth and ocean pay their debt of man true to the grand deposit trusted there is there no potentate whose outstretched arm when ripening time calls forth the appointed hour plucked from foul devastation's famished maw binds present past and future to his throne his throne how glorious thus divinely graced by germinating beings clustering round a garland worthy the divinity a throne by heaven's omnipotence and smiles built like a pharaoh's towering in the waves amidst immense effusions of his love an ocean of communicated bliss an all prolific all preserving god this were a god indeed and such is man as here presumed he rises from his fall thinks thou omnipotence a naked root each blossom fair of deity destroyed nothing is dead nay nothing sleeps each soul that ever animated human clay now wakes is on the wing and where oh where will the swarm settle when the trumpets call as sounding brass collects us round heaven's throne conglobed we bask in everlasting day paternal splendour and adhere for ever had not the soul this outlet to the skies in this vast vessel of the universe how should we gasp as in an empty void how in the pangs of famished hope expire how bright my prospect shines how gloomy thine a trembling world and a devouring god earth but the shambles of omnipotence heaven's face all stained with causeless massacres of countless millions born to feel the pang of being lost lorenzo can it be this bids us shudder at the thoughts of life who would be born to such a phantom world where naught substantial but our misery where joy if joy but heightens our distress so soon to perish and revive no more the greater such a joy the more it pains a world so far from great and yet how great it shines to thee there's nothing real in it being a shadow consciousness a dream a dream how dreadful universal blank before it and behind poor man a spark from non-existence struck by wrath divine glittering a moment nor that moment sure midst upper nether and surrounding night his sad sure sudden and eternal tomb lorenzo dost thou feel these arguments or is there naught but vengeance can be felt how hast thou dared the deity dethrone how dared indict him of a world like this if such the world creation was a crime for what is crime but cause of misery retract blasphemer and unriddle this of endless arguments above below without us and within the short result if man's immortal there's a god in heaven but wherefore such redundancy such waste of argument one sets my soul at rest one obvious and at hand and oh at heart so just the skies philander's life so pained his heart so pure that or succeeding scenes have palms to give or ne'er had he been born what an old tale is this lorenzo cries i grant this argument is old but truth no years impair and had not this been true thou never hast despised it for its age truth is immortal as thy soul and fable as fleeting as thy joys be wise nor make heaven's highest blessing vengeance oh be wise nor make a curse of immortality say knowest thou what it is or what thou art knowest thou the importance of a soul immortal behold this midnight glory worlds on worlds amazing pomp redouble this amaze ten thousand add add twice ten thousand more then weigh the whole one soul outweighs them all 
and calls the astonishing magnificence of an intelligent creation poor for this believe not me no man believe trust not in words but deeds and deeds no less than those of the supreme nor his a few consult them all consult it all proclaim thy soul's importance tremble at thyself for whom omnipotence has waked so long has waked and worked for ages from the birth of nature to this unbelieving hour in this small province of his vast domain all nature bow while i pronounce his name what has god done and not for this sole end to rescue souls from death the soul's high price is rid in all the conduct of the skies the soul's high price is the creation's key unlocks its mysteries and naked lays the genuine cause of every deed divine that is the chain of ages which maintains their obvious correspondence and unites most distant periods in one blessed design that is the mighty hinge on which have turned all revolutions whether we regard the natural civil or religious world the former two but servants to the third to that their duty done they both expire their mass new cast forgot their deeds renowned and angels ask where once they shone so fair to lift us from this abject to sublime this flux to permanent this dark to-day this fowls to pure this turbid to serene this mean to mighty for this glorious end the almighty rising his long sabbath broke the world was made was ruined was restored laws from the skies were published were repealed on earth kings kingdoms rose kings kingdoms fell famed sages lighted up the pagan world prophets from sion darted a keen glance through distant age saints travelled martyrs bled by wonders sacred nature stood controlled the living were translated dead were raised angels and more than angels came from heaven and oh for this descended lower still guilt was hell's gloom astonished at his guest for one short moment lucifer adored lorenzo and wilt thou do less for this that hallowed page fools off at was inspired of all these truths thrice venerable code deus perform your quarantine and then fall prostrate ere you touch it lest you die nor less intensely bent infernal powers to mar than those of light this end to gain oh what a scene is here lorenzo wake rise to the thought exert expand thy soul to take the vast idea it denies all else the name of great two warring worlds not europe against Africa, warring worlds of more than mortal mounted on the wing on ardent wings of energy and zeal high hovering o'er this little brand of strife this sublunary ball but strife for what in their own cause conflicting no in thine in man's his single interest blows the flame his the soul stake his fate the trumpet sounds which kindles war immortal how it burns tumultuous swarms of deities and arms force force opposing till the waves run high and tempest nature's universal sphere such opposites eternal steadfast stern such foes implacable are good and ill yet man vain man would mediate peace between them think not this fiction there was war in heaven from heaven's high crystal mountain where it hung the almighty's outstretched arm took down his bow and shot his indignation at the deep rethundered hell and darted all her fires and seems the stake of little moment still and slumbers man who singly calls the storm he sleeps and art thou shocked at mysteries the greatest thou how dreadful to reflect what ardour care and counsel mortals cause in breast divine how little in their own where'er i turn how new proofs pour upon me how happily this wondrous view supports my former argument how strongly strikes immortal life's full demonstration here why this exertion why this strange regard from heaven's omnipotent indulged to man because in man the glorious dreadful power extremely to be pained or blessed for ever duration gives importance swells the price an angel if a creature of a day what would he be a trifle of no weight or stand or fall no matter which he's gone because immortal therefore is indulged this strange regard of deities to dust hence heaven looks down on earth with all her eyes hence the soul's mighty moment in her sight hence every soul has partisans above and every thought a critic in the skies hence clay vile clay has angels for its guard and every guard a passion for his charge hence from all age the cabinet divine has held high counsel o'er the fate of man nor have the clouds those gracious counsels hid angels undrew the curtain of the throne and providence came forth to meet mankind in various modes of emphasis and awe he spoke his will and trembling nature heard he spoke it loud in thunder and in storm witness thou sinai whose cloud clovered height and shaken basis owned the present god witness ye billows whose returning tide breaking the chain that fastened it in air swept egypt and her menaces to hell 
witness ye flames the assyrian tyrant blew the southern fold rage as impotent as strong and thou earth witness whose expanding jaws closed o'er presumption's sacrilegious sons has not each element in turn subscribed the soul's high price and sworn it to the wise has not flame ocean ether earthquake strove to strike this truth through adamantine man if not all adamant lorenzo here all is delusion nature is wrapped up in tenfold night from reason's keenest eye there is no consistence meaning plan or end in all beneath the sun in all above as far as man can penetrate or heaven is an immense inestimable prize or all is nothing or that prize is all and shall each toy be still a match for heaven and full equivalent for groans below who would not give a trifle to prevent what he would give a thousand worlds to cure lorenzo thou hast seen your fine to see all nature and her god by nature's course and nature's course control declare for me the skies above proclaim immortal man and man immortal all below resounds the world's a system of theology read by the greatest strangers to the schools if honest learned and sages o'er a plough is not lorenzo then imposed on thee this hard alternative or to renounce thy reason or thy sense or to believe what then is unbelief tis an exploit a strenuous enterprise to gain it man must burst through every bar of common sense of common shame magnanimously wrong and what rewards the sturdy combatant his prize repentance infamy his crown but wherefore infamy for want of faith down the steep precipice of wrong he slides there is nothing to support him in the right faith in the future wanting is at least in embryo every weakness every guilt and strong temptation ripens it to birth if this life's gain invites him to the deed why not his country sold his father slain tis virtue to pursue our good supreme and his supreme his only good is here ambition avarice by the wise disdain is perfect wisdom while mankind are fools and think a turf or tombstone covers all these find employment and provide for sense a richer pasture and a larger range and sense by right divine ascends the throne when virtue's prize and prospect are no more virtue no more we think the will of heaven would heaven quite beggar virtue if beloved has virtue charms i grant her heavenly fair but if unportioned all will interest wed though that our admiration this our choice the virtues grow on immortality that root destroyed they wither and expire a deity believed will naught avail rewards and punishments may god adored and hopes and fears give conscience all her power as in the dying parent dies the child virtue with immortality expires who tells me he denies his soul immortal whate'er his boast he has told me he's a knave his duty tis to love himself alone nor care though mankind perish if he smiles who thinks ere long the man shall wholly die is dead already naught but brute survives and are there such such candidates there are for more than death for utter loss of being being the basis of the deity ask you the cause the cause they will not tell nor need they o oh, the sorceries of sense they work this transformation on the soul dismount her like the serpent and the fall dismount her from her native wing which soared erewhile ethereal heights and throw her down to lick the dust and crawl in such a thought is it in words to paint you o ye fallen fallen from the wings of reason and of hope erect in stature prone in appetite patrons of pleasure posting into pain lovers of argument averse to sense boasters of liberty fast bound in chains lords of the wide creation and the shame more senseless than the irrationals you scorn more base than those you rule than those you pity far more undone o ye most infamous of beings from superior dignity deepest in woe from means of boundless bliss ye cursed by blessings infinite because most highly favoured most profoundly lost yet motley mass of contradiction strong and are you too convinced your souls fly off in exhalations oft and die in air from the full flood of evidence against you in the coarse drudgeries and sinks of sense your souls have quite worn out the make of heaven by vice new cast and creatures of your own but though you can deform you can't destroy to curse not uncreate is all your power lorenzo this black brotherhood renounce renounce saint evermont and read saint paul ere wrapped by miracle by reason winged his mounting mind made long abode in heaven this is free thinking and confined to parts to send the soul on curious travel bent through all the provinces of human thought to dart or flight through the whole sphere of man of this vast universe to make the tour in each recess of space and time at home familiar with their wonders diving deep and like a prince of boundless interest there still more ambitious of the most remote to look on truth unbroken and entire truth in the system of full orb where truth by truths enlightened and sustained afford an arch-like strong foundation to support the incumbent weight of absolute complete conviction here the more we press we stand more firm who most examine most believe parts like half sentences confound the whole conveys the sense and god is understood 
who not in fragments writes to human race read his whole volume skeptic then reply this this is thinking free a thought that grasps beyond the grain and looks beyond an hour turn up thine eye survey this midnight scene what are earth's kingdoms to yon boundless orbs of human souls one day the destined range and what yon boundless orbs to godlike man those numerous worlds that throng the firmament and ask more space in heaven can roll at large in man's capacious thought and still leave room for ampler orbs for new creations there can such a soul contract itself to grip a point of no dimension of no weight it can it does the world is such a point and of that point how small a part enslaves how small a part of nothing shall i say why not friends our chief treasure how they drop lucia narcissa fair philander gone the grave like fable cerberus has oped a triple mouth and in an awful voice loud calls my soul and utters all i sing how the world falls to pieces round about us and leaves us in a ruin of our joy what says this transportation of my friends it bids me love the place where now they dwell and scorn this wretched spot they leave so poor eternity's vast ocean lies before thee there there lorenzo thy clarissa sails give thy mind sea-room keep it wide of earth that rock of souls immortal cut thy cord weigh anchor spread thy sails call every wind i the great pole-star make the land of life two kinds of life has double natured man and two of death the last far more severe life animal is nurtured by the sun thrives on its bounties triumphs in his beams life rational subsists on higher food triumphant in his beams who made the day when we leave that sun and are left by this the fate of all who die in stubborn guilt tis utter darkness strictly double death we sink by no judicial stroke of heaven but nature's course as sure as plummets fall since god or man must alter ere they meet since light and darkness blend not in one sphere tis manifest lorenzo who must change if then that double death should prove thy lot blame not the bowels of the deity man shall be blessed as far as man permits not man alone all rationals heaven arms with an illustrious but tremendous power to counteract its own most gracious ends and this of strict necessity not choice that power denied men angels were no more but passive engines void of praise or blame a nature rational implies the power of being blessed or wretched as we please else idle reason would have naught to do and he that would be barred capacity of pain courts incapacity of bliss heaven wills our happiness allows our doom invites us ardently but not compels heaven but persuades almighty man decrees man is the maker of immortal fates man falls by man if finally he falls and fall he must who learns from death alone the dreadful secret that he lives for ever why this to thee thee yet perhaps in doubt of second life but wherefore doubtful still eternal life is nature's ardent wish what ardently we wish we soon believe the tardy faith declares that wish destroyed what has destroyed it shall i tell thee what when feared the future tis no longer wished and when unwished we strive to disbelieve thus infidelity our guilt betrays nor that the sole detection blush lorenzo blush for hypocrisy if not for guilt the future feared an infidel and fear fear what a dream a fable how thy dread unwilling evidence and therefore strong affords my cause an undesigned support how disbelief affirms what it denies it unawares asserts immortal life surprising infidelity turns out a creed and a confession of our sins apostates thus our orthodox divines lorenzo with lorenzo clash no more nor longer our transparent visor wear thinks thou religion only has her mask our infidels are satan's hypocrites pretend the worst and at the bottom fail when visited by thought thought will intrude like him they serve they tremble and believe is their hypocrisy so foul as this so fatal to the welfare of the world what detestation what contempt their due and if unpaid we thank for their escape that christian candour they strive hard to scorn if not for that asylum they might find a hell on earth nor escape a worse below with insolence and impotence of thought instead of racking fancy to refute reform thy manners and the truth enjoy but shall i dare confess the dire result can thy pride reason brook so black a brand from purer manners to sublimer faith is nature's unavoidable assent an honest deist where the gospel shines matured to noble in the christian ends when that blessed change arrives even cast aside this song superfluous life immortal strikes conviction in a flood of light divine a christian dwells like uriel in the sun meridian evidence puts doubt to flight and ardent hope anticipates the skies of that bright sun lorenzo scaled the sphere tis easy it invites thee it descends from heaven to woo and waft thee whence it came read and revere the sacred page a page where triumphs immortality a page which not the whole creation could produce which not the conflagration shall destroy tis printed in the mind of gods for ever in nature's ruins not one letter lost in proud disdain of what even gods adore doth smile poor wretch thy guardian angel weeps angels and men assent to what i sing 
wit smile and thank me for my midnight dream how vicious hearts fume frenzy to the brain parts push on to pride and pride to shame pert infidelity is wit's cockade to grace the brazen brow that braves the skies by loss of being dreadfully secure lorenzo if thy doctrine wins the day and drives my dreams defeated from the field if this is all if earth a final scene take heed stand fast be sure to be a knave a knave in grain ne'er deviate to the right shouldst thou be good how infinite thy loss guilt only makes annihilation gain blessed scheme which life deprives of comfort death of hope and which vice only recommends if so where infidels you bait thrown out to catch weak converts where your lofty boast of zeal for virtue and of love to man annihilation i confess in these what can reclaim you dare i hope profound philosophers the converts of a song yet know its title flatters you not me yours be the praise to make my title good mine to bless heaven and triumph in your praise but since so pestilential your disease though sovereign is the medicine i prescribe as yet i neither triumph nor despair but hope ere long my midnight dream will wake your hearts and teach your wisdom to be wise for why should souls immortal make for bliss ere wish and wish in vain that souls could die what ne'er can die o oh, grant to live and crown the wish and aim and labour of the skies increase and enter on the joys of heaven thus shall thy title pass a sacred seal receive an imprint mature from above while angels shout an infidel reclaimed to close lorenzo spite of all my pain still seems it strange that thou shouldst live for ever is it less strange that thou shouldst live at all this is a miracle and that no more who gave beginning can exclude an end deny thou art then doubt if thou shalt be a miracle with miracles enclosed is man and starts his faith with what is strange what less than wonders from the wonderful what less than miracles from god can flow admit a god that mystery supreme that cause and caused all other wonders cease nothing is marvellous for him to do deny him all his mystery besides millions of mysteries each darker far than that thy wisdom would unwisely shun if weak thy faith why choose the harder side we nothing know but what is marvellous yet what is marvellous we can't believe so weak our reason and so great our guard what most surprises in the sacred page or full as strange or stranger must be true faith is not reason's labour but repose to faith and virtue why so backward man for hence the present strongly strikes us all the future faintly can we then be men if men lorenzo the reverse is right reason is man's peculiar sense the brutes the present is the scanty realm of sense the future reason's empire unconfined on that expanding all her godlike power she plans provides expatiates triumphs there there builds her blessings there expects her praise and nothing asks of fortune or of men and what is reason be she thus defined reason is upright stature in the soul will be a man and strive to be a god for what thou says to damp the joys of life no to give heart and substance to thy joys that tyrant hope mark how she domineers she bids us quit realities for dreams safety and peace for hazard and alarm that tyrant or the tyrants of the soul she bids ambition quit its taken prize spurn the luxuriant branch on which it sits though bearing crowns to spring at distant game and plunge in toils and dangers for repose if hope precarious and of things when gained of little moment and as little stay can sweeten toils and dangers into joys what then that hope which nothing can defeat our leave unasked which hope of boundless bliss bliss past man's power to paint it times to close this hope is earth's most estimable prize this is man's portion while no more than man hope of all passions most befriends us here passions of prouder name befriend us less joy has her tears and transport has her death hope like a cordial innocent though strong man's heart at once in spirits and serenes nor makes him pay his wisdom for its joys tis all our present state can safely bear health to the frame and vigour to the mind a joy a tempered a chastised delight like the fair summer evening mild and sweet tis man's full cup his paradise below a blessed hereafter then or hoped or gained is all our whole of happiness full proof i chose no trivial or inglorious theme and know ye foes to song well-meaning men though quite forgotten half your bible's praise important truths in spite of verse may please grave minds you praise now can you praise too much if there is weight in an eternity let the grave listen and be graver still End of chapter seven chapter eight of the complaint or night thoughts by edward young this librivox recording is in the public domain virtue's apology or the man of the world answered in which are considered the love of this life the ambition and pleasure with the wit and wisdom of the world night eighth virtue's apology and has all nature then espoused my part 
have i bribed heaven and earth to plead against thee and is thy soul immortal what remains all all lorenzo make immortal blessed unblessed immortals what can shock us more and yet lorenzo still affects the world there stows his treasure thence his title draws man of the world for such wouldst thou be called and art thou proud of that inglorious style proud of reproach for a reproach it was in ancient days and christian in an age when men were men and not ashamed of heaven fired their ambition as it crowned their joy sprinkled with dews from the castalian font fain would i rebaptize thee and confer a purer spirit and a nobler name thy fond attachments fatal and inflamed point out my path and dictate to my song to thee the world how fair how strongly strikes ambition and gay pleasure stronger still thy triple bane the triple bolt that lays thy virtue dead be these my triple theme nor shall thy wit or wisdom be forgot common the theme not so the song if she my song invokes urania deigns to smile the charm that chains us to the world her foe if she dissolves the man of earth at once starts from his trance and sighs for other scenes scenes where these sparks of night these stars shall shine unnumbered suns for all things as they are the blessed behold and in one glory pour their blended blaze on man's astonished sight a blaze the least illustrious object there lorenzo since eternal is at hand to swallow time's ambitions as the vast leviathan the bubbles vain that ride high on the foaming billow what avail high titles high descent attainments high if unattained our highest o lorenzo what lofty thoughts these elements above what towering hopes what sallies from the sun what grand surveys of destiny divine and pompous presage of unfathomed fate should roll in bosoms where a spirit burns bound for eternity in bosoms read by him who foibles in archangels sees on human hearts he bends a jealous eye and marks and in heaven's register enrolls the rise and progress of each option there sacred to doomsday that the page unfolds and spreads us to the gaze of gods and men and what an option o lorenzo thine this world and this unrivalled by the skies a world where lust of pleasure grandeur gold three demons that divide its realms between them with strokes alternate buffet to and fro man's restless heart their sport their flying ball till with the giddy circle sick and tired it pants for peace and drops into despair such is the world lorenzo sets above that glorious promise angels were esteemed too mean to bring a promise their adored descended to communicate and press by counsel miracle life death on man such is the world lorenzo's wisdom woos and on its thorny pillow seeks repose a pillow which like opiates ill prepared intoxicates but not composes fills the visionary mind with gay chimeras all the wild trash of sleep without the rest what unfeigned travel and what dreams of joy how frail men things how momentary both fantastic chase of shadows hunting shades 
the gay the busy equal though unlike equal in wisdom differently wise through flowery meadows and through dreary wastes one bustling and one dancing into death there's not a day but to the man of thought betrays some secret that throws new reproach on life and makes him sick of seeing more the scenes of business tell us what are men the scenes of pleasure what is all beside there others we despise and here ourselves amid disgust eternal dwells delight tis approbation strikes the string of joy what wondrous prize has kindled this career stuns with the din and chokes us with the dust on life's gay stage one inch above the grave the proud run up and down in quest of eyes the sensual in pursuit of something worse the grave of gold the politic of power and all of other butterflies as vain as eddies draw things frivolous and light how is man's heart by vanity drawn in on the swift circle of returning toys world straw-like round and round and then engulfed where gay delusion darkens to despair this is a beaten track is this a track should not be beaten never beat enough till enough learn the truths it would inspire shall truth be silent because folly frowns turn the world's history what find we there but fortune's sports or nature's cruel claims or woman's artifice or man's revenge and endless inhumanities on man fame's trumpet seldom sounds but like the knell it brings bad tidings how it hourly blows man's misadventures round the listening world man is the tale of narrative old time sad tale which high as paradise begins as if the toil of travel to delude from stage to stage in his eternal round the days his daughters as they spin our hours on fortune's wheel where accident unthought oft in a moment snaps life's strongest thread each in her turn some tragic story tells with now and then a wretched farce between and fills his chronicle with human woes time's daughters true as those of men deceive us not one but puts some cheat on all mankind while in their father's bosom not yet ours they flatter our fond hopes and promise much of amiable but hold him not o'er wise who dares to trust them and laugh round the year at still confiding still confounded man confiding though confounded hoping on untaught by trial unconvinced by proof and ever looking for the never seen life to the last like hardened felons lies nor owns itself a cheat till it expires its little joys go out by one and one and leave poor man at length in perfect night night darker than what now involves the pole o thou who dost permit these ills to fall for gracious ends and wouldst that man should mourn o thou whose hands this goodly fabric framed who knowest it best and wouldst that man should know what is this sublunary world a vapour a vapour all it holds itself a vapour from the damp bed of chaos by thy beam exhaled ordained to swim its destined hour in ambient air then melt and disappear earth's days are numbered nor remote her doom as mortal though less transient than her sons yet they dote on her as the world and they were both eternal solid thou a dream they dote on what immortal views apart a region of outsides a land of shadows a fruitful field of flowery promises a wilderness of joys perplexed with doubts and sharp with thorns a troubled ocean spread with bold adventures there all on board no second hope if here their fortune frowns frown soon it must of various rates they sail of ensigns various all alike in this all restless anxious tossed with hopes and fears in calmest skies obnoxious all to storm and stormy the most general blast of life all bound for happiness 
yet few provide the chart of knowledge pointing where it lies or virtue's helm to shape the course design all more or less capricious fate lament now lifted by the tide and now resorbed and farther from their wishes than before all more or less against each other dash to mutual hurt by gusts of passion driven and suffering more from folly than from fate ocean thou dreadful and tumultuous home of dangers at eternal war with man death's capital where most he domineers with all his chosen terrors frowning round though lately feasted high at albion's cost wide opening and loud roaring still for more too faithful mirror how dost thou reflect the melancholy face of human life the strong resemblance tempts me farther still and haply britain may be deeper struck by moral truth in such a mirror scene which nature holds for ever at her eye self-flattered unexperienced high in hope when young with sanguine cheer and streamers gay we cut our cable launch into the world and fondly dream each wind and star our friend all in some darling enterprise embarked but where is he can fathom its extent amid a multitude of artless hands ruins sure perquisite her lawful prize some steer aright but the black blast blows hard and puffs them wide of hope with hearts of proof full against wind and tide some win their way and when strong effort has deserved the port and tugged it into view tis won tis lost though strong their oar still stronger is their fate they strike and while they triumph they expire in stress of weather most some sink outright o'er them and o'er their names the billows close tamar knows not they were ever born others a short memorial leave behind like a flag floating when the bark's engulfed it floats a moment and is seen no more one caesar lives a thousand are forgot how few beneath auspicious planets born darlings of providence fond fates elect with swelling sails make good the promised port with all their wishes freighted yet even these freighted with all their wishes soon complain free from misfortune not from nature free they still are men and when is man secure as fatal time as storm the rush of years beats down their strength their numberless escapes in ruin end and now their proud success but plants new terrors on the victor's brow what pain to quit the world just made their own their nests so deeply down and built so high too low they build who build beneath the stars woe then apart if woe apart can be from mortal man and fortune at our nod the gay rich great triumphant and august what are they the most happy strange to say convince me most of human misery what are they smiling wretches of to-morrow more wretched then than e'er their slave can be their treacherous blessings at the day of need like other faithless friends unmask and sting then what provoking indigence and wealth what aggravated impotence and power high titles then what insult of their pain if that soul anchor equal to the waves immortal hope defies not the rude storm takes comfort from the foaming billow's rage and makes a welcome harbour of the tomb is this a sketch of what thy soul admires but here thou sayest the miseries of life are huddled in a group a more distinct survey perhaps might bring thee better news look on life's stages they speak plainer still the plainer they the deeper wilt thou sigh look on thy lovely boy in him behold the best that can befall the best on earth the boy has virtue by his mother's side yes on florello look a father's heart is tender though the man's is made of stone the truth through such a medium scene may make impression deep and fondness prove thy friend florello lately cast on this rude coast a helpless infant now a heedless child to poor clarissa's throes thy care succeeds careful of love and yet severe as hate or thy soul's joy 
how oft thy fondness frowns needful austerities his will restrain as thorns fence in the tender plant from harm as yet his reason cannot go alone but asks a sterner nurse to lead it on his little heart is often terrified the blush of morning in his cheek turns pale its pearly dewdrop trembles in his eye his harmless eye and drowns an angel there ah what avails his innocence the task enjoined must discipline his early powers he learns to sigh ere he is known to sin guiltless and sad a wretch before the fall how cruel this more cruel to forbear our nature such with necessary pains we purchase prospects of precarious peace though not a father this might steal a sigh suppose him disciplined aright if not twill sink our poor account to poorer still right from the tutor proud of liberty he leaps enclosure bounds into the world the world is taken after ten years toil like ancient troy and all its joys his own alas the world's a tutor more severe its lessons hard and ill deserve his pains unteaching all his virtuous nature taught or books fair virtues advocates inspired for who receives him into public life men of the world the terri filia breed welcome the modest stranger to their sphere which glittered long at distance in his sight and in their hospitable arms enclose men who think naught so strong of the romance so rank knight-errant as a real friend men that act up to reason's golden rule all weakness of affection quite subdued men that would blush at being thought sincere and fain for glory the few faults they want that love a lie where truth would pay as well as if to them vice shown her own reward lorenzo canst thou bear a shocking sight such for florello's sake twill now appear see the steeled files of seasoned veterans trained to the world in burnished falsehood bright deep in the fatal stratagems of peace all soft sensation in the throng rubbed off all their keen purpose in politeness sheathed his friends eternal during interest his foes implacable when worth their while at war with every welfare but their own as wise as lucifer and half as good and by whom none but lucifer can gain naked through these so common fate ordains naked of heart his cruel course he runs stung out of all most amiable in life prompt truth and open thought and smiles and fain affection as his species wide diffused noble presumptions to mankind's renown ingenuous trust and confidence of love these claims to joy if mortals joy might claim will cost him many a sigh till time and pains from the slow mistress of this school experience and her assistant pausing pale distrust purchase a dear-bought clue to lead his youth through serpentine obliquities of life and the dark labyrinth of human hearts and happy if the clue shall come so cheap for while we learn to fence with public guilt full oft we feel its foul contagion too if less than heavenly virtue is our guard thus a strange kind of cursed necessity brings down the sterling temper of his soul by base alloy to bear the current stamp below called wisdom sinks him into safety and brands him into credit with the world where specious titles dignify disgrace and nature's injuries are arts of life where brighter reason prompts to bolder crimes and heavenly talents make infernal hearts that unsurmountable extreme of guilt poor machiavel who laboured hard his plan forgot that genius need not go to school forgot that man without a tutor wise his plan had practised long before twas writ the world's all title page there's no contents the world's all face the man who shows his heart is hooted for his nudities and scorn 
a man i knew who lived upon a smile and well it fed him he looked plump and fair while rankest venom foamed through every vein lorenzo what i tell thee take not ill living he fawned on every fool alive and dying cursed the friend on whom he lived to such proficience thou art half a saint in foreign realms for thou hast travelled far how curious to contemplate two state rooks studious their nests to feather in a trice with all the necromantics of their art playing the game of faces on each other making court sweetmeats of their latent gall in foolish hope to steal each other's trust both cheating both exulting both deceived and sometimes both let earth rejoice undone their parts we doubt not but be that their shame shall men of talents fit to rule mankind stoop to mean wiles that would disgrace a fool and lose the thanks of those few friends they serve for who can thank the man he cannot see why so much cover it defeats itself ye that know all things know ye not men's hearts are therefore known because they are concealed for why concealed the cause they need not tell i give him joy that's awkward at a lie whose feeble nature truth keeps still in awe his incapacity is his renown tis great tis manly to disdain disguise it shows our spirit or it proves our strength thou sayest tis needful is it therefore right howe'er i grant it some small sign of grace to strain at an excuse and wouldst thou then escape that cruel need thou mayest with ease think no post needful that demands a knave when late our civil helm was shifting hands so paltony thought think better if you can but this how rare the public path of life is dirty yet allow that dirt is due it makes the noble mind more noble still the world's no neuter it will wound or save or virtue quench or indignation fire you say the world well known will make a man the world well known will give our hearts to heaven or make us demons long before we die to show how fair the world thy mistress shines take either part sure ills attend the choice sure though not equal detriment ensues not virtue's self is deified on earth virtue has her relapses conflicts foes foes that ne'er fail to make her feel their hate virtue has her peculiar set of pains true friends to virtue last and least complain but if they sigh can others hope to smile if wisdom has her miseries to mourn how can poor folly lead a happy life and if both suffer what has earth to boast where he most happy who the least laments where much much patience the most envied state and some forgiveness needs the best of friends for friend or happy life who looks not higher of neither shall he find the shadow here the world's sworn advocate without a fee lorenzo smartly with a smile replies thus far thy song is right and all must own virtue has her peculiar set of pains and joys peculiar who to vice denies if vice it is with nature to comply if pride and sense are so predominant to check not overcome them makes a saint can nature in a plainer voice proclaim pleasure and glory the chief good of man can pride and sensuality rejoice from purity of thought all pleasure springs and from an humble spirit all our peace ambition pleasure let us talk of these of these the porch and academy talked of these each following age had much to say yet unexhausted still the needful theme who talks of these to mankind all at once he talks for where the saint from either free are these thy refuge no these rush upon thee thy vitals seize and vulture-like devour i'll try if i can pluck thee from thy rock prometheus from this barren ball of earth if reason can unchain thee thou art free and first thy caucasus ambition calls mountain of torments eminence of woes of courted woes and courted through mistake tis not ambition charms thee tis a cheat will make thee start as h at his moor 
dost grasp at greatness first know what it is thinkst thou thy greatness in distinction lies not in the feather wave it e'er so high by fortune stuck to mark us from the throng is glory lodged tis lodged in the reverse in that which joins in that which equals all the monarch and his slave a deathless soul unbounded prospect and immortal kin a father god and brothers in the skies elder indeed in time but less remote in excellence perhaps than thought by man why greater what can fall than what can rise if still delirious now lorenzo go and with thy full-blown brothers of the world throw scorn around thee cast it on thy slaves thy slaves and equals how scorn cast on them rebounds on thee if man is mean as man art thou a god if fortune makes him so beware the consequence a maxim that which draws a monstrous picture of mankind wherein the drapery the man is lost externals fluttering and the soul forgot the greatest glory when disposed to boast boast that aloud in which thy servants share we wisely strip the steed we mean to buy judge we in their caparisons of men it naught avails thee where but what thou art all the distinctions of this little life are quite cutaneous foreign to the man when through death's straits earth's subtle serpents creep which wriggle into wealth or climb renown as crooked satan the forbidden tree they leave their party-coloured robe behind all that now glitters while they rear aloft their brazen crests and hiss at us below a fortune's fucus strip them yet alive strip them of body too nay closer still away with all but moral in their minds and let what then remains impose their name pronounce them weak or worthy great or mean how mean that snuff of glory fortune lights and death puts out dost thou demand a test a test at once infallible and short of real greatness that man greatly lives whate'er his fate or fame who greatly dies high flushed with hope where heroes shall despair if this a true criterion many courts illustrious might afford but few grandees the almighty from his throne on earth surveys naught greater than an honest humble heart an humble heart his residence pronounced his second seat and rival to the skies the private path the secret acts of men is if noble far the noblest of our lives how far above lorenzo's glory sits the lustrous master of a name unknown whose worth unrivalled and unwitnessed loves life's sacred shades where gods converse with men and peace beyond the world's conceptions smiles as thou now dark before we part shalt see but thy great soul this skulking glory scorns lorenzo's sick but when lorenzo's seen and when he shrugs at public business lies denied the public eye the public voice as if he lived on others breath he dies fain would he make the world his pedestal mankind the gazers the sole figure he knows he that mankind prays against their will and mix as much detraction as they can knows he that faithless fame her whisper has as well as trumpet that his vanity is so much tickled from not hearing all knows this all-knower that from itch of praise or from an itch more sordid when he shines taking his country by five hundred ears senates at once admire him and despise with modest laughter lining loud applause which makes the smile more mortal to his fame his fame which like the mighty caesar crowned with laurels in full senate greatly falls by seeming friends that honour and destroy we rise in glory as we sink in pride where boasting ends their dignity begins and yet mistaken beyond all mistake the blind lorenzo's proud of being proud and dreams himself ascending in his fall an eminence though fancy turns the brain all vice wants hellebore but of all vice pride loudest calls and for the largest bowl because unlike all other vice it flies in fact the point in fancy most pursued who court applause oblige the world in this they gratify man's passion to refuse superior honour when assumed is lost even good men turn banditti and rejoice like Kuli khan in plunder of the proud though somewhat disconcerted steady still to the world's cause with half a face of joy lorenzo cries be then ambition cast ambition's dearer far stands unimpeached 
gay pleasure proud ambition is her slave for her he soars at great and hazards ill for her he fights and bleeds or overcomes and paves his way with crowns to reach her smile who can resist her charms or should lorenzo what mortal shall resist where angels yield pleasures the mistress of ethereal powers for her contend the rival gods above pleasures the mistress of the world below and well it was for man that pleasure charms how would all stagnate but for pleasure's ray how would the frozen stream of action cease what is the pulse of this so busy world the love of pleasure that through every vein throws motion warmth and shuts out death from life though various are the tempers of mankind pleasures gay family hold all in chains some most affect the black and some the fair some honest pleasure court and some obscene pleasures obscene are various as the throng of passions that can err in human hearts mistake their objects or transgress their bounds think you there's but one whoredom whoredom all but when our reason licenses delight dost doubt lorenzo thou shalt doubt no more thy father chides thy gallantries yet hugs an ugly common harlot in the dark a rank adulterer with others gold and that hag vengeance in a corner charms hatred her brothel has as well as love where horrid epicures debauch and blood whate'er the motive pleasure is the mark for her the black assassin draws his sword for her dark statesmen trim their midnight lamp to which no single sacrifice may fall for her the saint abstains the miser starves the stoic proud for pleasure pleasure scorned for her afflictions daughters grief indulge and find or hope a luxury in tears for her guilt shame toil danger we defy and with the name of voluptuous rush on death thus universal her despotic power and as her empire wide her praise is just patron of pleasure doter on delight i am thy rival pleasure i profess pleasure the purpose of my gloomy song pleasure is naught but virtue's gayer name i wrong her still i rate her worth too low virtue the root and pleasure is the flower and honest epicurus foes were fools but this sounds harsh and gives the wise offence if o'er strained wisdom still retains the name how knits austerity her cloudy brow and blames as bold and hazardous the praise of pleasure to mankind and praise too dear ye modern stoics hear my soft reply their senses men will trust we can't impose or if we could is imposition right own honey sweet but owning add this sting when mixed with poison it is deadly too truth never was indebted to a lie is naught but virtue to be praised as good why then is health preferred before disease what nature loves is good without our leave and where no future drawback cries beware pleasure though not from virtue should prevail tis balm to life and gratitude to heaven how cold are thanks for bounties unenjoyed the love of pleasure is man's eldest born born in his cradle living to his tomb wisdom her younger sister though more grave was meant to minister and not to mar imperial pleasure queen of human hearts lorenzo thou her majesty's renown though unquaffed counsel learned in the world who thinks thyself a murray with disdain mayest look on me yet my demosthenes canst thou plead pleasures cause as well as i knowest thou her nature purpose parentage attend my song and thou shalt know them all and know thyself and know thyself to be strange truth the most abstemious man alive tell not callista she will laugh thee dead or send thee to her hermitage with l absurd presumption thou who never knewest a serious thought shalt thou dare dream of joy no man e'er found a happy life by chance or yawned it into being with a wish or with the snout of grovelling appetite e'er smelt it out and grubbed it from the dirt an art it is and must be learned and learned with unremitting effort or be lost and leaves us perfect blockheads in our bliss the clouds may drop down titles and estates wealth may seek us but wisdom must be sought sought before all but how unlike all else we seek on earth tis never sought in vain first pleasures birth rise strength and grandeur see brought forth by wisdom nursed by discipline by patience taught by perseverance crowned she rears her head majestic round her throne erected in the bosom of the just each virtue listed forms her manly guard for what are virtues formidable name what but the fountain or defence of joy why then command it need mankind commands at once to merit and to make their bliss great legislator scarce so great as kind if men are rational and love delight thy gracious law but flatters human choice in the transgression lies the penalty and they the most indulge who most obey of pleasure next the final cause explore 
its mighty purpose its important end not to turn human brutal but to build divine on human pleasure came from heaven in aid to reason was the goddess sent to call up all its strength by such a charm pleasure first succors virtue in return virtue gives pleasure an eternal reign what but the pleasure of food friendship faith supports life natural civil and divine tis from the pleasure of repast we live tis from the pleasure of applause we please tis from the pleasure of belief we pray all prayer would cease if unbelief the prize it serves ourselves our species and our god and to serve more is past the sphere of man glide then for ever pleasure's sacred stream through eden as euphrates ran it runs and fosters every growth of happy life makes a new eden where it flows but such as must be lost lorenzo by thy fall what mean i by thy fall thou shortly see while pleasure's nature is at large displayed already sung her origin and ends those glorious ends by kind or by degree when pleasure violates tis then a vice a vengeance too it hastens into pain from due refreshment life health reason joy from wild excess pain grief distraction death heaven's justice this proclaims and that her love what greater evil can i wish my foe than his full draught of pleasure from a cask unbroached by just authority and gauged by temperance by reason unrefined a thousand demon lurk within the lee heaven others and ourselves uninjured these drink deep and deeper then the more divine angels are angels from indulgence there tis unrepenting pleasure makes a god dost think thyself a god from other joys a victim rather shortly sure to bleed the wrong must mourn can heaven's appointments fail can man outwit omnipotence strike out a self-wrought happiness unmeant by him who made us and the world we would enjoy who forms an instrument ordains from whence its dissonance or harmony shall rise heaven bid the soul this mortal frame inspire bid virtue's ray divine inspire the soul with unprecarious flows of vital joy and without breathing man as well might hope for life as without piety for peace is virtue then and piety the same no piety is more tis virtue's source mother of every worth as that of joy men of the world this doctrine ill digest they smile at piety yet boast aloud good will to men nor know they strive to part what nature joins and thus confute themselves with piety begins all good on earth tis the first-born of rationality conscience her first law broken wounded lies enfeebled lifeless impotent to good a feigned affection bounds her utmost power some we can't love but for the almighty's sake a foe to god was ne'er a true friend to man some sinister intent taints all he does and in his kindest actions he's unkind on piety humanity is built and on humanity much happiness and yet still more on piety itself a soul in commerce with her god is heaven feels not the tumults and the shocks of life the whirls of passions and the strokes of heart a deity believed is joy begun a deity adored is joy advanced a deity beloved is joy matured each branch of piety delight inspires faith builds a bridge from this world to the next or death's dark gulf and all its horror hides praise the sweet exhalation of our joy that joy exalts and makes it sweeter still prayer ardent opens heaven lets down a stream of glory on the consecrated hour of man in audience with the deity who worships the great god that instant joins the first in heaven sets his foot on hell lorenzo when wast thou at church before thou think'st the service long but is it just though just and welcome thou hadst rather tread unhallowed ground the muse to win thine ear must take an air less solemn she complies good conscience at the sound the world retires verse this affects it and lorenzo smiles yet has she her seraglio full of charms and such as age shall heighten not impair art thou dejected is thy mind o'ercast amid her fair ones thou the fairest choose to chase thy gloom go fix some weighty truth chain down some passion do some generous good teach ignorance to see or grief to smile correct thy friend befriend thy greatest foe or with warm heart and confidence divine spring up and lay strong hold on him who made thee thy gloom is scattered sprightly spirits flow though withered is thy fine and harp unstrung dost call the bold the vile and the dance loud mirth mad laughter wretched comforters physicians more than half of thy disease laughter though never censured yet as sin pardon a thought that only seems severe is half immoral is it much indulged by venting spleen or dissipating thought it shows a scorner or it makes a fool and sins as hurting others or ourselves tis pride or emptiness applies the straw that tickles little minds to mirth effuse of grief approaching the portentous sign 
the house of laughter makes a house of woe a man triumphant is a monstrous sight a man dejected is a sight as mean what cause for triumph where such ills abound what for dejection where presides a power who called us into being to be blessed so grieve as conscious grief may rise to joy so joy as conscious joy to grief may fall most true a wise man never will be said but neither will sonorous bubbling mirth a shallow stream of happiness betray too happy to be sport of he's serene yet wouldst thou laugh but at thy own expense this counsel strange should i presume to give retire and read thy bible to be gay there truths abound of sovereign aid to peace i do not prize them less because inspired as thou and thine are apt and proud to do if not inspired that pregnant page had stood time's treasure and the wonder of the wise thou think'st perhaps thy soul alone at stake alas should men mistake thee for a fool what man of taste for genius wisdom truth so tender of thy fame could interpose believe me sense here acts a double part and the true critic is a christian too but these thou think'st are gloomy paths to joy true joy in sunshine ne'er was found at first they first themselves offend to greatly please and travel only gives us sound repose heaven sells all pleasure effort is the price the joys of conquest are the joys of man and glory the victorious laurel spreads o'er pleasures pure perpetual placid stream there is a time when toil must be preferred or joy by mistimed fondness is undone a man of pleasure is a man of pains thou wilt not take the trouble to be blessed false joys indeed are born from want of thought from thoughts forbent and energy the true and that demands a mind in equal poise remote from gloomy grief and glaring joy much joy not only speaks small happiness but happiness that shortly must expire can joy and bottom in reflection stand and in a tempest can reflection live can joy like thine secure itself an hour can joy like thine meet accident unshocked or ope the door to honest poverty or talk with threatening death and not turn pale in such a world and such a nature these are needful fundamentals of delight these fundamentals give delight indeed delight pure delicate and durable delight unshaken masculine divine a constant and a sound but serious joy is joy the daughter of severity it is yet far my doctrine from severe rejoice for ever it becomes a man exalts and sets him nearer to the gods rejoice for ever nature cries rejoice and drinks to man in her nectarious cup mixed up of delicates for every sense to the great founder of the bounteous feast drinks glory gratitude eternal praise and he that will not pleasure is a churl ill firmly to support good fully taste is the whole science of felicity yet sparing pledge her bowl is not the best mankind can boast a rational repast exertion vigilance a mind in arms a military discipline of thought to foil temptation in the doubtful field and ever waking ardour for the right tis these first give then guard a cheerful heart naught that is right think little well aware what reason bids god bids by his command how aggrandize the smallest thing we do thus nothing is insipid to the wise to thee insipid all but what is mad joys seasoned high and tasting strong of guilt mad thou repliest with indignation fired of ancient sages proud to tread the steps i follow nature follow nature still but look it be thine own is conscience then no part of nature is she not supreme thou regicide or raise her from the dead then follow nature and resemble god when spite of conscience pleasure is pursued man's nature is unnaturally pleased and what's unnatural is painful too at intervals and must disgust even thee the fact thou knowest but not perhaps the cause virtue's foundations with the worlds were laid heaven mixed her with our make and twisted close her sacred interest with the strings of life who breaks her awful mandate shocks himself his better self and is it greater pain our soul should murmur or our dust repine and one in their eternal war must bleed if one must suffer which should least be spared the pains of mind surpass the pains of sense ask then the gout what torment is in guilt the joys of sense to mental joys are mean sense on the present only feeds the soul on past and future forages for joy tis hers by retrospect through time to range and forward time's great sequel to survey could human courts take vengeance on the mind axes might rust and racks and gibbets fall guard then thy mind and leave the rest to fate lorenzo wilt thou never be a man the man is dead who for the body lives lured by the beating of his pulse to list with every lust that wars against his peace and sets him quite at variance with himself thyself first know then love a self there is a virtue fond that kindles at her charms a self there is as fond of every vice while every virtue wounds it to the heart humility degrades it justice robs blessed 
bounty beggars it fair truth betrays and godlike magnanimity destroys this self when rival to the former scorn when not in competition kindly treat defend it feed it but when virtue bids toss it or to the fowls or to the flames and why tis love of pleasure bids thee bleed comply or own self-love extinct or blind for what is vice self-love in a mistake a poor blind merchant buying joys too dear and virtue what tis self-love in her wits quite skilful in the market of delight self-love's good sense is love of that dread power from whom herself and all she can enjoy other self-love is but disguised self-hate more mortal than the malice of our foes a self-hate now scarce felt then felt full sore when being cursed extinction loud implored and everything preferred to what we are yet this self-love lorenzo makes his choice and in this choice triumphant boasts of joy how is his want of happiness betrayed by disaffection to the present hour imagination wanders far afield the future pleases why the present pains but that's a secret yes which all men know and know from thee discovered unawares the ceaseless agitation restless roll from cheat to cheat impatient of a pause what is it tis the cradle of the soul from instinct sent to rock her in disease which her physician reason will not cure a poor expedient yet thy best and while it mitigates thy pain it owns it too such are lorenzo's wretched remedies the weak have remedies the wise have joys superior wisdom is superior bliss and what sure mark distinguishes the wise consistent wisdom ever wills the same thy fickle wish is ever on the wing sick of herself is folly's character as wisdom is a modest self applause a change of evils is thy good supreme nor but in motion canst thou find thy rest man's greatest strength is shown in standing still the first sure symptom of a mind in health is rest of heart and pleasure felt at home false pleasure from abroad her joyous imports rich from within and self-sustained the true the true is fixed and solid as a rock slippery the false and tossing as the wave this a wild wanderer on earth like cain that like the fable self-enamoured boy home contemplation her supreme delight she dreads an interruption from without smit with her own condition and the more intense she gazes still it charms the more no man is happy till he thinks on earth there breathes not a more happy than himself then envy dies and love o'erflows on all and love o'erflowing makes an angel here such angels all entitled to repose on him who governs fate though tempest frowns though nature shakes how soft to lean on heaven to lean on him on whom archangels lean with inward eyes and silent as the grave they stand collecting every beam of thought till their hearts kindle with divine delight for all their thoughts like angels seen of old in israel's dream come from and go to heaven hence are they studious of sequestered scenes while noise and dissipation comfort thee were all men happy revelling would cease that opiate for inquietude within lorenzo never man was truly blessed but it composed and gave him such a cast as folly might mistake for want of joy a cast unlike the triumph of the proud a modest aspect and a smile at heart o oh, for a joy from thy philander's spring a spring perennial rising in the breast and permanent as pure no turbid stream of rapturous exultation swelling high which like land floods impetuous pour a while then sink at once and leave us in the mire what does the man who transient joy prefers what but prefer the bubbles to the stream vain are all sudden sallies of delight convulsions of a weak distempered joy joy is a fixed state a tenure not a start bliss there is none but unprecarious bliss that is the gem sell all and purchase that why go a-begging to contingencies not gained with ease nor safely loved if gained at good fortuitous draw back and pause suspect it what thou canst ensure enjoy and naught but what thou givest thyself is sure reason perpetuates joy that reason gives and makes it as immortal as herself to mortals naught immortal but their worth worth conscious worth should absolutely reign and other joys ask leave for their approach nor unexamined ever leave obtain now art all anarchy a mob of joys wage war and perish in intestine boils not the least promise of internal peace no bosom comfort or unborrowed bliss thy thoughts are vagabonds all outward bound mid sands and rocks and storms to cruise for pleasure if gain dear bought and better missed than gained much pain must expiate what much pain procured fancy and sense from an infected shore thy cargo bring and pestilence the prize then such thy thirst insatiable thirst by fond indulgence but inflamed the more fancy still cruises when poor sense is tired imagination is the paphian shop where feeble happiness like vulcan lame 
its foul ideas in their dark recess and hot as hell which kindle the black fires with wanton art those fatal errors form which murder all thy time health wealth and fame wouldst thou receive them other thoughts there are on angel wing descending from above which these with art divine would counterwork and form celestial armour for thy peace in this is seen imagination's guilt but who can count her follies she betrays thee to think in grandeur there is something great for works of curious art and ancient fame thy genius hungers elegantly pained and foreign climes must cater for thy taste hence what disaster though the price was paid that persecuting priest the turk of rome whose foot ye gods though cloven must be kissed detained thy dinner on the latian shore such is the fate of honest protestants and poor magnificence is starved to death hence just resentment indignation ire be pacified if outward things are great tis magnanimity great things to scorn pompous expenses and parades are gust and courts that in salubrious soil to peace true happiness ne'er entered at an eye true happiness resides in things unseen no smiles of fortune ever bless the bad nor can her frowns rob innocence of joys that jewel wanting triple crowns are poor so tell his holiness and be revenged pleasure we both agree is man's chief good our only contest what deserves the name give pleasure's name to naught but what has passed the authentic seal of reason which like york demurs on what it passes and defies the tooth of time when past a pleasure still dearer on trial lovelier for its age and doubly to be prized as it promotes our future while it forms our present joy some joys the future overcast and some throw all their beams that way and gild the tomb some joys in dear eternity some give abhorred annihilation dreadful charms our rival joys contending for thy choice consult thy whole existence and be safe that oracle will put all doubt to flight short is the lesson though my lecture long be good and let heaven answer for the rest yet with a sigh o'er all mankind i grant in this our day of proof our land of hope the good man has his clouds that intervene clouds that obscure his sublunary day but never conquer even the best must own patience and resignation are the pillars of human peace on earth the pillars these but those of seth not more remote from thee till this heroic lesson thou hast learned to frown at pleasure and to smile in pain fired at the prospect of unclouded bliss heaven in reversion like the sun as yet beneath the horizon cheers us in this world it sheds on souls susceptible of light the glorious dawn of our eternal day this says lorenzo is a fair harangue but can harangues blow back strong nature's stream or stem the tide heaven pushes through our veins which sweeps away man's impotent resolves and lays his labour level with the world themselves men make their comment on mankind and think naught is but what they find at home thus weakness to chimera turns the truth nothing romantic has the muse prescribed above lorenzo saw the man of earth the mortal man and wretched was the sight to balance that to comfort and exalt now see the man immortal him i mean who lives as such whose heart for bent on heaven leans all that way his bias to the stars the world's dark shades and contrast set shall raise his lustre more though bright without a foil observe his awful portrait and admire nor stop at wonder imitate and live some angel guide my pencil while i draw what nothing less than angel can exceed a man on earth devoted to the skies like ships in sea while in above the world with aspect mild and elevated eye behold him seated on a mount serene above the fogs of sense and passion storm all the black cares and tumults of his life like harmless thunders breaking at his feet excite his pity not impair his peace earth's genuine sons the sceptred and the slave a mingled mob a wandering herd he sees bewildered in the veil in all alike his full reverse in all what higher praise what stronger demonstration of the right the present all their care the future his when public welfare calls or private want they give to fame his bounty he conceals their virtues varnish nature his exalt mankind's esteem they court and he his own theirs the wild chase of false felicities his the composed possession of the true alike throughout is his consistent peace all of one colour and an even thread while party-coloured shreds of happiness with hideous gaps between patch up for them a madman's robe each buff of fortune blows the tatters by and shows their nakedness he sees with other eyes than theirs where they behold a son he spies a deity what makes them only smile makes him adore where they see mountains he but to atoms sees an empire in his balance weighs a grain they things terrestrial worship as divine his hopes immortal blow them by 
as dust that dims his sight and shortens his survey which longs in infinite to lose all bound titles and honours if they prove his fate he lays aside to find his dignity no dignity they find in aught besides they triumph in externals which conceal man's real glory proud of an eclipse himself too much he prizes to be proud and nothing thinks so great in man as man too dear he holds his interest to neglect another's welfare or his right invade their interest like a lion lives on prey they kindle at the shadow of a wrong wrong he sustains with temper looks on heaven nor stoops to think his injurer his foe naught but what wounds his virtue wounds his peace a covered heart their character defends a covered heart denies him half his praise with nakedness his innocence agrees while their broad foliage testifies their fall there no joys end where his full feast begins his joys create theirs murder future bliss to triumph in existence is alone and is alone triumphantly to think his true existence has not yet begun his glorious course was yesterday complete death then was welcome yet life still is sweet but nothing charms lorenzo like the firm undaunted breast and whose is that high praise they yield to pleasure though they danger brave and show no fortitude but in the field if there they show it tis for glory shown nor will that cordial always man their hearts a cordial his sustains that cannot fail by pleasure unsubdued unbroke by pain he shares in that omnipotence he trusts all bearing all attempting till he falls and when he falls writes we see on his shield from magnanimity all fear above from nobler recompense above applause which owes to man's short outlook all its charms backward to credit what he never felt lorenzo cries where shines this miracle from what root rises this immortal man a root that grows not in lorenzo's ground the root dissect nor wonder at the flower he follows nature not like thee and shows us an uninverted system of a man his appetite wears reason's golden chain and finds in due restraint its luxury his passion like an eagle well reclaimed is taught to fly at naught but infinite patient is hope unanxious is his care his caution fearless and his grief if grief the gods ordain a stranger to despair and why because affection more than meet his wisdom leaves not disengaged from heaven those secondary goods that smile on earth he loving in proportion loves in peace they most the world enjoy who least admire his understanding scapes the common cloud of fumes arising from a boiling breast his head is clear because his heart is cooled by worldly competitions uninflamed the moderate movements of his soul admit distinct ideas and mature debate an eye impartial and an even scale whence judgment sound and unrepenting choice thus in a double sense the good are wise on its own dunghill wiser than the world what then the world it must be doubly weak strange truth as soon would they believe their creed yet thus it is nor otherwise can be so far from aught the romantic what i sing bliss has no being virtue has no strength but from the prospect of immortal life who think earth all or what weighs just the same who care no farther must prize what it yields fond of its fancies proud of its parades who thinks earth nothing can't its charms admire he can't a foe though most malignant hate because that hate would prove his greater foe tis hard for them yet who so loudly boast good will to men to love their dearest friend for may not he invade their good supreme where the least jealousy turns love to gall all shines to them that for a season shines each act each thought he questions what its weight its colour what a thousand ages hence and what it there appears he deems it now hence pure are the recesses of his soul the godlike man is nothing to conceal his virtue constitutionally deep has habits firmness and affections flame angels allied descend to feed the fire and death which other slays makes him a god and now lorenzo bigot of this world want to disdain poor bigots caught by heaven stand by thy scorn and be reduced to naught for what art thou thou boaster while thy glare thy gaudy grandeur and mere worldly worth like a broad mist at distance strikes us most and like a mist is nothing when at hand his merit like a mountain on reproach swells more and rises nearer to the skies by promise now and by possession soon too soon too much it cannot be his own from this thy just annihilation rise lorenzo rise to something by reply the world thy client listens and expects and longs to crown thee with immortal praise canst thou be silent no for wit is thine and wit talks most when least she has to say and reason interrupts not her career she'll say that mists above the mountains rise and with a thousand pleasantries amused she'll sparkle puzzle flutter raise a dust and fly conviction in the dust she raised wit how delicious to man's dainty taste tis precious as the vehicle of sense 
but as its substitute a dire disease pernicious talent flattered by the world by the blind world which thinks the talent rare wisdom is rare lorenzo wit abounds passion can give it sometimes wine inspires the lucky flash and madness rarely fails whatever cause the spirit strongly stirs confers the base and rivals thy renown for thy renown twere well was this the worst chance often hits it and to pique thee more see dullness blundering on vivacities shakes her sage head at the calamity which has exposed and let her down to thee but wisdom awful wisdom which inspects discerns compares ways separates and furs seizes the right and holds it to the last how rare in senate synods sought in vain or if they're found tis sacred to the few while a lewd prostitute to multitudes frequent as fatal wit in civil life wit makes an enterpriser sense a man wit hates authority commotion loves and thinks herself the lightning of the storm in states tis dangerous in religion death shall wit turn christian when the dull believe sense is our helmet wit is but the plume the plume exposes tis our helmet saves sense is the diamond weighty solid sound when cut by wit it casts a brighter beam yet wit apart it is a diamond still wit widowed of good sense is worse than naught it hoists more sail to run against a rock thus the half chesterfield is quite a fool whom dull fools scorn and bless their want of wit how ruinous the rock i warrant thee shun where sirens sit to sing thee to thy fate a joy in which our reason bears no part is but a sorrow tickling ere it stings let not the cooings of the world allure thee which of her lovers ever found her true happy of this bad world who little know and yet we much must know her to be safe to know the world not lover is thy point she gives but little nor that little long there is i grant a triumph of the pulse a dance of spirits a mere froth of joy our thoughtless agitations idle child that mantles high that sparkles and expires leaving the soul more vapid than before an animal ovation such as holds no commerce with our reason but subsists on juices through the well-toned tubes well strained a nice machine scarce ever tuned aright and when it jars thy sirens sing no more thy dance is done the demigod is thrown short apotheosis beneath the man in coward gloom immersed or fell despair art thou yet dull enough despair to dread and startle at destruction if thou art except a buckler take it to the field a field of battle is this mortal life when danger threatens lay it on thy heart a single sentence proof against the world soul body fortune every good pertains to one of these propriety not all alike the goods of fortune to thy body's health body to soul and soul submit to god wouldst thou build lasting happiness do this the inverted pyramid can never stand is this truth doubtful it outshines the sun nay the sun shines not but to show us this the single lesson of mankind on earth and yet yet what no news mankind is mad such mighty numbers list against the right and what can't numbers when bewitched achieve they talk themselves to something like belief that all earth's joys are theirs as athens fool grinned from the port on every sail his own they grin but wherefore and how long the laugh have ignorance their mirth and half a lie to cheat the world and cheat themselves they smile hard either task the most abandoned own that others if abandoned are undone then for themselves the moment reason wakes and providence denies it long repose oh how laborious is their gaiety they scarce can swallow their ebullient spleen scarce muster patience to support the farce and pump sad laughter till the curtain falls scarce did i say some cannot sit it out off their own daring hands the curtain draw and show us what their joy by their despair the clotted hair gored breast blaspheming eye its impious fury still alive in death shut shut the shocking scene but heaven denies a cover to such guilt and so should man look round lorenzo see the reeking blade the envenomed file and the fatal ball the strangling cord and suffocating stream the loathsome rottenness and foul decays from raging riot slower suicides and pride in these more execrable still how horrid all to thought but horrors these that vouch the truth and aid my feeble song from vice sense fancy no man can be blessed bliss is too great to lodge within an hour when an immortal being aims at bliss duration is essential to the name oh for a joy from reason joy from that which makes man man an exercise to right will make him more a bounteous joy that gives and promises that weaves with art divine the richest prospect into present peace a joy ambitious joy in common held with thrones ethereal and their greater far a joy high privilege from chance time death a joy which death shall double judgment crown crowned higher and still higher at each stage through blessed eternity's long day yet still not more remote from sorrow than from him 
whose lavish hand whose love stupendous pour so much of deity on guilty dust there o oh my lucia may i meet thee there where not thy presence can improve my bliss affects not this the sages of the world can naught affect them but what fools them to eternity depending on an hour makes serious thought man's wisdom joy and praise nor need you blush though sometimes your designs may shun the light at your designs on heaven sole point where over bashful is your blame are you not wise you know you are yet here one truth amid your numerous schemes mislaid or overlooked or thrown aside if seen our schemes to plan by this world or the next is the sole difference between wise and fool all worthy men will weigh you in the scale what wonder then if they pronounce you light is their esteem alone not worth your care except my simple scheme of common sense thus save your fame and make two worlds your own the world replies not but the world persists and puts the cause off to the longest day planning evasions for the day of doom so far at that rehearing from redress they then turn witnesses against themselves hear that lorenzo nor be wise to-morrow haste haste a man by nature is in haste for who shall answer for another hour tis highly prudent to make one sure friend and that thou canst not do this side the skies ye sons of earth nor willing to be more since verse you think from priestcraft somewhat free thus in an age so gay the muse plain truths truths which at church you might have heard in prose has ventured into light well pleased the verse should be forgot if you the truths retain and crown her with your welfare not your praise but praise she need not fear i see my fate and headlong leap like courteous down the gulf since many an ample volume mighty tome must die and die unwept o thou minute devoted page go forth among thy foes go nobly proud of martyrdom for truth and die a double death mankind incensed denies thee long to live nor shalt thou rest when thou art dead in stygian shades arraigned by lucifer as traitor to his throne and bow blasphemer of his friend the world the world whose legions cost him slender pay and volunteers around his banners swarm prudent as prussia in her zeal for gaul are all then fools lorenzo cries yes all but such as hold this doctrine new to thee the mother of true wisdom is the will the noblest intellect a fool without it world wisdom much is done and more may do in arts and sciences in wars and peace but art and science like thy wealth will leave thee and make thee twice a beggar at thy death this is the most indulgence can afford thy wisdom all can do but make thee wise nor think this censure is severe on thee satan thy master i dare call a dunce End of chapter eight Section nine, part one of the complaint or night thoughts by Edward Young. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Anya E. The Consolation, containing among other things, one, a moral survey of the nocturnal heavens, two, a night address to the deity, night ninth. as when a traveller a long day past in painful search of what he cannot find at night's approach content with the next cot there ruminates a while his labour lost then cheers his heart with what his fate affords and chants his sonnet to deceive the time till a due season calls him to repose thus i long travelled in the ways of men and dancing with the rest the giddy maze where disappointment smiles at hope's career warned by the languor of life's evening ray at length have housed me in an humble shed where future wandering banished from my thought and waiting patient the sweet hour of rest i chase the moments with a serious song song suits our pains and age has pains to soothe when age care crime and friends embraced at heart torn from my bleeding breast and death's dark shade which hovers o'er me quench the ethereal fire canst thou o night indulge one labour more one labour more indulge then sleep my strain till haply waked by raphael's golden lyre where night death 
age, care, crime, and sorrow cease to bear a part in everlasting lays, though far, far higher set in aim, I trust, symphonies to this humble prelude here. Has not the muse asserted pleasures pure, like those above, exploding other joys? Weigh what was urged, Lorenzo, fairly weigh, and tell me, hast thou cause to triumph still? I think thou wilt forbear a boast so bold, but if, beneath the favor of mistake, thy smile sincere, not more sincere can be, Lorenzo's smile, than my compassion for him. The sick in body call for aid, the sick in mind are covetous of more disease, and when at worst, they dream themselves quite well. To know ourselves diseased is half our cure. When nature's blush by custom is wiped off, and conscience, deadened by repeated strokes, has into manners naturalized our crimes, the curse of curses is our curse to love, to triumph in the blackness of our guilt, as Indians glory in the deepest jet, and throw aside our senses with our peace. But grant no guilt, no shame, no least alloy, grant joy and glory, quite unsullied shun, yet still it ill deserves Lorenzo's heart. No joy, no glory, glitters in thy sight, but through the thin partition of an hour, I see its sables wove by destiny, and that in sorrow buried, this in shame, while howling furies ring the doleful knell, and conscience, now so soft thou scarce canst hear, her whisper echoes her eternal peal, where the prime actors of the last year seen, their port so proud, their buskin and their plume, how many sleep who kept the world awake with lustre and with noise? Has death proclaimed a truce and hung his sated lance on high? Tis brandished still, nor shall the present year be more tenacious over human leaf, or spread of feeble life a thinner fall. But needless monument to wake the thought, life's gayest scenes speak man's morality, though in a style more fluttered, full as plain, as mausoleums, pyramids, and tombs. What are our noblest ornaments? But debts, turned flatterers of life in paint or marble, the well-stained canvas or the featured stone, our father's grace, or rather haunt, the scene. Joy peoples her pavilion from the dead. Professed diversions, cannot these escape? Far from it, these present us with a shroud, and talk of death like garlands or a grave, as some bold plunderers for buried wealth, we ransack tombs for pastime. From the dust call up the sleeping hero, bid him tread the scene for our amusement. How like gods we sit, and wrapped in immortality, shed generous tears on wretches born to die their fate deploring, to forget our own. What all the pomps and triumphs of our lives, but legacies and blossom, our lean soil, luxuriant grown, and rank in vanities, from friends interred beneath, a rich manure. Like other worms we bank it on the dead, like other worms shall we crawl on, nor know our present frailties or approaching fate? Lorenzo, such the glories of the world! What is the world itself? 
thy world a grave where is the dust that has not been alive the spade the plough disturb our ancestors from human mould we reap our daily bread the globe around earth's hollow surface shakes and is the ceiling of our sleeping sons o'er devastation we blind revels keep whole buried towns support the dancer's heel the moist of human frame the sun exhales wind scatter through the mighty void the dry earth repossesses part of what she gave and the freed spirit mounts on wings of fire each element partakes our scattered spoils as nature wide our ruins spread man's death inhabits all things but the thought of man nor man alone his breathing bust expires his tomb is mortal empires die where now the roman greek they stalk an empty name yet few regard them in this useful light though half our learning is their epitaph when down thy wail unlocked by midnight thought that loves to wander in thy sunless realms o oh, death i stretch my view what visions rise what triumphs toils imperial arts divine in withered laurels glide before my sight what lengths of far-famed ages bellowed high with human agitation roll along in unsubstantial images of air the melancholy ghosts of dead renown whispering faint echoes of the world's applause with penitential aspect as they pass all point at earth and hiss at human pride the wisdom of the wise and prancings of the great but o lorenzo far the rest above of ghastly nature and enormous size one form assaults my sight and chills my blood and shakes my frame of one departed world i see the mighty shadow oozy wreath and dismal seaweed crown her o'er her urn reclined she weeps her desolated realms and bloated sons and weeping prophecies another dissolution soon in flames but like cassandra prophecy is in vain in vain to many not i trust to thee for knowst thou not or art thou loath to know the great decree the council of the skies deluge and conflagration dreadful powers prime ministers of vengeance chained in caves distinct apart the grand furies roar apart or such their horrid rage for ruin in mutual conflict would they rise and wage eternal war till one was quite devoured but not for this ordained their boundless rage when heaven's inferior instruments of wrath war famine pestilence are found too weak to scour the world for her enormous crimes these are let loose alternate down they rush swift and tempestuous from the eternal throne with irresistible commission armed the world in vain corrected to destroy and ease creation of the shocking scene seest thou lorenzo what depends on man the fate of nature as for man her birth earth's actors change earth's transitory scenes and make creation groan with human guilt how must it groan in a new deluge whelmed 
but not of waters at the destined hour by the loud trumpet summoned to the charge see all the formidable sons of fire eruptions earthquakes comets lightnings play their various engines all at once disgorge their blazing magazines and take by storm this poor terrestrial citadel of man amazing period when each mountain height outburns vesuvius rocks eternal pour their melted mass as rivers once they poured stars rush and final ruin fiercely drives her plowshare o'er creation while aloft more than astonishment if more can be far are their firmament than e'er was seen than e'er was thought by man far other stars stars animate that govern these of fire far other sun a sun oh how unlike the babe at bethlehem how unlike the man that groaned on calvary yet he it is that man of sorrows oh how changed what pomp in grandeur terrible all heaven descends and gods ambitious triumph in his train a swift archangel with his golden wing as blots and clouds that darken in disgrace the scene divine sweeps stars and suns aside and now all dross removed heaven's own pure day full on the confines of our ether flames while dreadful contrast far how far beneath hell bursting belches forth her blazing seas and storms sulfurious her voracious jaws expanding wide and roaring for her prey lorenzo welcome to this scene the last in nature's course the first in wisdom's thought this strikes if aught can strike thee this awakes the most supine this snatches man from death rouse rouse lorenzo then and follow me where truth the most momentous man can hear loud calls my soul and ardor wings her flight i find my inspiration in my theme the grandeur of my subject is my muse at midnight when mankind is wrapped in peace and worldly fancy feeds on golden dreams to give more dread to man's most dreadful hour at midnight tis presumed this pomp will burst from tenfold darkness sudden as the spark from smitten steel from nitrous grain the blaze man starting from his couch shall sleep no more the day is broke which never more shall close above around beneath amazement all terror and glory joined in their extremes our god in grandeur and our world on fire all nature struggling in the pangs of death dost thou not hear her dost thou not deplore her strong convulsions and her final groan where are we now ah me the ground is gone on which we stood lorenzo while thou mayst provide more firm support or sink for ever where how from whence wane hope it is too late where where for shelter shall the guilty fly when consternation turns the good man pale great day for which all other days were made 
for which earth rose from chaos, man from earth, and an eternity, the date of gods, descended on poor earth created man. Great day of dread, decision, and despair, at thought of thee, each sublunary wish lets go its eager grasp and drops the world, and catches at each reed of hope in heaven. At thought of thee, and art thou absent then? Lorenzo, no, tis here it is begun, already is begun the grand assize, in thee and all. Deputed conscience scales the dread tribunal and forestalls our doom. Forestalls and by forestalling proves it sure. Why on himself should man void judgment pass? Is ideal nature laughing at her sons? Who conscience send her sentence will support and God above assert that God in man? Thrice happy they that enter now the court, heaven opens in their bosoms, but how rare, ah me, that magnanimity, how rare, what hero like the man who stands himself, who dares to meet his naked heart alone, who bears intrepid, the full charge it brings, resolved to silence future murmurs there? The coward flies, thinks but thinks slightly, asks but fears to know, asks, what is truth, with Pilati, and retires, dissolves the court and mingles with the throng, asylum sad from reason, hope, and heaven. Shall all but man look out with ardent eye? for that great day which was ordained for man? O oh, day of consummation! Mark supreme, if men are wise, of human thought, nor least are in the sight of angels, or their king, angels whose radiant circles, height o'er height, order o'er order, rising, blaze o'er blaze, as in a theatre surround the scene, intent on man and anxious for his fate. Angels look out for thee, for thee their Lord to vindicate his glory, and for thee creation universal calls aloud to disinvolve the moral world and give to nature's renovation brighter charms. Shall man alone, whose fate, whose final fate, hangs on that hour, exclude it from his thought? I think of nothing else. I see. I feel it. All nature like an earthquake, trembling round. All deities like summer swarms, on wing all basking in the full meridian blaze. I see the judge enthroned, the flaming guard, the volume opened, opened every heart, a sunbeam pointing out each secret thought. No patron, intercessor none, now past the sweet, the clement, meditorial hour. For guilt, no plea to pain, no pause, no bound, inexorable all and all extreme. Nor man alone, the foe of God and man, from his dark den blaspheming, drags his chain and rears his brazen front with thunder scarred, receives his sentence and begins his hell. All vengeance past now seems abundant grace, like meteors in a stormy sky, how roll his baleful eyes, he curses whom he dreads, and deems it the first moment of his fall. 
tis present to my thought and yet where is it angels can't tell me angels cannot guess the period from created beings locked in darkness but the process and the place are less obscure for these may man inquire say thou great close of human hopes and fears great key of hearts great finisher of fates great end and great beginning say where art thou art thou in time or in eternity nor in eternity nor time i find thee these as two monarchs on their borders meet monarchs of all elapsed or unarrived as in debate how best their powers allied may swell the grandeur or discharge the wrath of him whom both their monarchies obey time this vast fabric for him built and doomed with him to fall now bursting o'er his head his lamp the sun extinguished from beneath the frown of hideous darkness calls his sons from their long slumber from earth's heaving womb to second birth contemporary throng roused at one call upstarted from one bed pressed in one crowd appalled with one amaze he turns them o'er eternity to thee then as a king deposed disdains to live he falls on his own scythe nor falls alone his greatest foe falls with him time and he who murdered all time's offspring death expire time was eternity now reigns alone awful eternity offended queen and her resentment to mankind how just with kind intent soliciting access how often has she knocked at human hearts rich to repay their hospitality how often called and with the voice of god yet bore repulse excluded as a cheat a dream while foulest foes found welcome there a dream a cheat now all things but her smile for lo her twice ten thousand gates thrown wide as thrice from indus to the frozen pole with banners streaming as the comets blaze and clarions louder than the deep in storms sonorous as immortal breath can blow pour forth their myriads potentates and powers of light of darkness in a middle field wide as creation populous as wide a neutral region there to mark the event of that great drama whose preceding scenes detained them close spectators through a length of ages ripening to this grand result ages as yet unnumbered but by god who now pronouncing sentence vindicates the rights of virtue and his own renown eternity the weariest sentence past assigns the severed throng distinct abodes sulfurious or ambrosial what ensues the deed predominant the deed of deeds which makes a hell of hell a heaven of heaven the goddess with determined aspect turns her adamantine keys enormous size through destiny's inextricable wards deep driving every bolt on both their fates then from the crystal battlements of heaven down down she hurls it through the dark profound ten thousand thousand fathom 
there to rust and ne'er unlock her resolution more the deep resounds and hell through all her glooms returns in groans the melancholy roar oh how unlike the chorus of the skies oh how unlike those shouts of joy that shake the whole ethereal how the concave rings nor strange when deities their voice exult and louder far than when creation rose to see creation's godlike aim and end so well accomplished so divinely closed to see the mighty dramatis last act as meet in glory rising o'er the rest no fancied god a god indeed descends to solve all knots to strike the moral home to throw full day on darkest scenes of time to clear commend exult and crown the whole hence in one peal of loud eternal praise the charmed spectators thunder their applause and the vast void beyond applause resounds what then am i amidst applauding worlds and worlds celestial is there found on earth a peevish dissonant rebellious string which jars in the grand chorus and complains censure on thee lorenzo i suspend and turn it on myself how greatly do all all is right by god ordained or done and who but god resumed the friends he gave and have i been complaining then so long complaining of his favors pain and death who without pain's advice would e'er be good who without death but would be good in vain pain is to save from pain all punishment to make for peace and death to save from death and second death to guard immortal life to rouse the careless the presumptuous awe and turn the tide of souls another way by the same tenderness divine ordained that planted eden and high bloomed for man a fairer eden endless in the skies heaven gives us friends to bless the present scene resumes them to prepare us for the next all evils natural or moral goods all discipline indulgence on the whole none are unhappy all have cause to smile but such as to themselves that cause deny our faults are at the bottom of our pains error in act or judgment is the source of endless sighs we sin or we mistake and nature attacks when false opinion stings let impious grief be banished joy indulged but chiefly then when grief puts in her claim joy from the joyous frequently betrays oft lives in vanity and dies in woe joy amidst ills corroborates exalts tis joy and conquest joy and virtue too a noble fortitude in ills delights heaven earth ourselves tis duty glory peace affliction is the good man's shining scene 
Prosperity conceals his brightest ray. As night to stars, woe luster gives to man. Heroes in battle, pilots in the storm, and virtues and calamities admire. The crown of manhood is a winter joy, an evergreen that stands the northern blast and blossoms in the rigor of our feet. Tis a prime part of happiness to know how much unhappiness must prove our lot, a part which few possess. I'll pay life's tax without one rebel murmur from this hour, nor think it misery to be a man who thinks it is shall never be a god. Some ills we wish for when we wish to live. What spoke proud passion? Wish my being lost? Presumptuous, blasphemous, absurd and false. The triumph of my soul is that I am, and therefore that I may be. What? Lorenzo, look inward, and look deep, and deeper still. Unfathomably deep our treasure runs, in golden veins, through all eternity, ages and ages, and succeeding still, new ages, where the phantom of an hour which courts each night Dull slumber for repair shall wake and wonder and exult and praise and fly through infinite and all unlock and, if deserved, by heaven's redundant love made half adorable itself adore and find an adoration Endless joy, where thou, not master of a moment here, frail as the flower and fleeting as the gale, mayst boast a whole eternity enriched with all a kind omnipotence can pour. Since Adam fell, no mortal uninspired has ever yet conceived or ever shall, how kind is God, how great, if good, is man. No man too largely from heaven's love can hope, if what is hoped he labors to secure. Ills? There are none, all gracious, none from thee, from man Full many, numerous as the race of blackest ills, and those immortal too, begot by madness on fair liberty. Heaven's daughter, hell debauched, her hand alone unlocks destruction to the sons of men, first barred by thine, high walled with adamant guarded with terrors reaching to this world, and covered with the thunders of thy law, whose threats are mercies, whose injunctions guides, assisting, not restraining, reason's choice, whose sanctions unavoidable results from nature's course, indulgently revealed if unrevealed, more dangerous, nor less sure. Thus, an indulgent father warns his sons, do this, fly that, nor always tells the cause, pleased to reward, as duty to his will, a conduct needful to their own repose. Great God of wonders, 
If thy love surveyed, Aught else the name of wonderful retains. What rocks are these On which to build our trust? Thy ways admit no blemish, None I find, or this alone, That none is to be found. Not one to soften censure's hardy crime, Not one to palliate peevish grief's complaint, Who, like a demon, murmuring from the dust, Dares into judgment, call her judge, Supreme, for all I bless thee, most for the severe. Her death, my own at hand, the fiery gulf, that flaming bound of wrath omnipotent, it thunders, but it thunders to preserve. It strengthens what it strikes, its wholesome dread awards the dreaded pain. Its hideous groans join heaven's sweet hallelujahs in thy praise. Great source of good alone, how kind in all, in vengeance kind, pain, death, Gehenna, save. Thus, in thy world material, mighty mind, not that alone which solaces and shines, the rough and gloomy challenges our praise. The winter is as needful as the spring, the thunder as the sun, a stagnant mass of vapors breeds the pestilential air. Nor more propertious the Favonian breeze to nature's health than purifying storms. The dread volcano ministers too good. that smothered flames might undermine the world. Loud Etnus fulminate in love to man. Comets good omens are when duly scanned, and in their use eclipses learn to shine. Man is responsible for ills received. Those we call wretched are a chosen band, compelled to refuge in the right for peace. Amid my list of blessings infinite Stands this the foremost That my heart has bled. Tis heaven's last effort of goodwill to man. When pain can't bless, Heaven quits us in despair. Who fails to grieve When just occasion calls, Or grieves too much, Deserves not to be blessed. Inhuman, or effeminate, his heart. Reason absolves the grief which reason ends. May heaven ne'er trust my friend with happiness till it has taught him how to bear it well by previous pain and made it safe to smile. Such smiles are mine and such may they remain nor hazard their extinction from excess. My change of heart, a change of style demands. The consolation cancels the complaint and makes a convert of my guilty song. As when o'er labored and inclined to breathe, a panting traveler, some rising ground, some small ascent has gained. He turns him round and measures with his eye the various whales, the fields, woods, meads, and rivers he has passed, and satiate of his journey, thinks of home, endeared by distance, nor affects more toil. Thus I, though small indeed, is that ascent, the muse has gained, review the paths she trod, various, extensive, Beaten but by view, and conscience of her prudence and repose, pause, 
and with pleasure mediate an end, though still remote, so fruitful is my theme. Through many a field of moral and divine, the muse has strayed, and much of sorrow seen in human ways, and much of false and wane, which none who travel this bad road can miss. Or friends deceased, full heartily she wept, of love divine the wonders she displayed, proved man immortal, showed the source of joy, the grand tribunal raised, assigned the bounds of human grief, in few to close the home, the moral muse has shadowed out a sketch, though not in form, nor with a Raphael stroke, of most our weakness needs belief or do, in this our land of travel and of hope, or peace on earth, or prospect of the skies. What then remains? Much, much, a mighty debt to be discharged. These thoughts, O oh night, are thine. From thee they came, like lovers' secret sighs, while others slept. So, Cynthia, poets feign, and shadows wield, soft sliding from her spear, her shepherd cheered of her enamored less than I of thee. And art thou still unsung, beneath whose brow and by whose aid I sing? Immortal silence, where shall I begin, where end, or how steal music from the spheres to soothe? their goddess. O oh, majestic night, nature's great ancestor, day's elder born, and fated to survive the transient sun, by mortals and immortals, seen with awe, a starry crown thy raven brow adorns, an azure zone thy waist, clouds and heavens loom, Wrought through varieties of shape and shade, and ample folds of drapery divine. Thy flowing mantle form, and heaven throughout, voluminously pour thy pompous stream. Thy gloomy grandeurs, nature's most august inspiring aspect, claim a grateful worse. And like a sable curtain, Starred with gold, drawn o'er my labors past, shall close the scene. And what, O oh man, so worthy to be sung? What more prepares us for the songs of heaven? Creation of archangels is the theme. What to be sung so needful? What so well? Celestial joys prepare us to sustain? The soul of man, his face designed to see, who gave these wonders to be seen by man, has here a previous scene of objects great, on which to dwell, to stretch to that expanse of thought, to rise to that exalted height of admiration, to contract that awe and give her whole capacities that strength, which best may qualify for final joy. The more our spirits are enlarged on earth, the deeper draught shall they receive of heaven. Heaven's king, whose face and wailed consummates bliss, redundant bliss, which fills that mighty void, the whole creation leaves in human hearts. Thou, who didst touch the lip of Jesse's son, wrapped in sweet contemplation of these fires, and set his harp in concert with the spheres, while of thy work's material the supreme, I dare attempt, assist my daring song. Lose me from earth's enclosure, from the sun's contracted circle, set my heart at large, 
Eliminate my spirit. Give it range. Through provinces of thought yet unexplored. Teach me by the stupendous scaffolding. Creation's golden steps. To climb to thee. Teach me with art. Great nature to control. And spread a luster o'er the shades of night. Feel I thy kind ascent. And shall the sun be seen at midnight, rising in my song? Lorenzo, come and warm thee, thou whose heart, whose little heart, is moored within a nook of this obscure terrestrial anchor way. Another ocean calls, a nobler port. I am thy pilot, I thy prosperous gale. Gainful thy voyage through yon azure main, main without tempest, pirate rock or shore, and whence thou mayst import eternal wealth, and leave to beggared minds the pearl and gold. Thy travels dost thou boast o'er foreign realms, thou stranger to the world, thy tour begin, thy tour through nature's universal orb nature delineates her whole chart at large on soaring souls that sail among the spheres and man how purblind if unknown the whole who circles spacious earth then travels here shall own he never was from whom before come my prometheus from thy pointed rock a false ambition, if unchained, we'll mount, we'll innocently steal celestial fire, and kindle our devotion at the stars, a theft that shall not chain, but set thee free. Above our atmosphere's intestine wars, rain's fountainhead, the magazine of hail, Above the northern nests of feathered snows, the brew of thunders, and the flaming forge that forms the crooked lightning. Above the caves where infant tempests wait their growing wings and tune their tender voices to that roar, which soon, perhaps, shall shake a guilty world. Above misconstrued omens of the sky, Far-travelled comets, calculated blaze, I lance thy thought and think of more than man. Thy soul till now, contracted, withered, shrunk, Blighted by blasts of earth's unwholesome air, Will blossom here, spread all her faculties To these bright ardors, every power unfold and rise and to sublimities of thought. Stars teach, as well as shine, at nature's birth. Thus their commission ran, Be kind to man. Where art thou, poor benighted traveller? The stars will light thee, though the moon should fail. Where art thou, more benighted, more astray? In ways immoral, the stars call thee back, and if obeyed their counsel, set thee right. This prospect vast, what is it? Weighed aright, tis nature's system of divinity, and every student of the night inspires. Tis elder scripture, writ by God's own hand, scripture authentic, uncorrupt by man. Lorenzo, with my radius, the rich gift of thought nocturnal, I'll point out to thee its various lessons, some that may surprise an unadept in mysteries of night, little perhaps expected in her school, nor thought to grow on planet or on star. Bulls, lions, scorpions, monsters, here we feign, Ourselves more monstrous, not to see what here exists, indeed, a lecture to mankind.
What read we here? The existence of a god? Yes, and of other beings, man above, natives of either, sons of higher climes. And what may move Lorenzo's wonder more? Eternity is written in the skies. And whose eternity? Lorenzo, thine, mankind's eternity. Nor faith alone, virtue grows here. Here springs the sovereign cure of almost every vice, but chiefly thine. Wrath, pride, ambition, and impure desire. Lorenzo, thou canst wake at midnight too, the not on morals bent, ambition, pleasure, those tyrants I for thee so lately fought, afford their harassed slaves but slender rest. Thou, to whom midnight is a moral noon, and the sun's noontide blaze, prime dawn of day, not by thy climate, but capricious crime, commencing one of our antipodes, in thy nocturnal rove, one moment halt, twixt stage and stage of riot and cabal, and lift thine eye, if bold and I to lift, if bold to meet the face of injured heaven, to yonder stars, for other ends they shine, than to light revellers from shame to shame, and thus be made accomplices in guilt. Why from yon arch, that infinite of space, with infinite of lucid orbs replete, which set the living firmament on fire, at the first glance, in such an overwhelm of wonderful, on man's astonished sight, rushes omnipotence, to curb our pride, our reason rouse and let it to that power, whose love lets down these silver chains of light to draw up man's ambition to himself and bind our chaste affections to his throne. Thus the three virtues, least alive on earth and welcomed on heaven's coast with most applause, in humble, pure, and heavenly-minded heart are here inspired, and Canst thou gaze too long? Nor stands thy wrath deprived of its reproof, or unupbraided by this radiant choir. The planets of each system represent kind neighbors, mutual amity prevails, sweet interchange of rays, received returned, enlightening and enlightened, all at once. Attracting and attracted, patriot-like, none sins against the welfare of the whole, but their reciprocal, unselfish aid affords an emblem of millennial love. Nothing in nature, much less conscious being, was e'er created solely for itself. Thus man his sovereign duty learns in this material picture of benevolence. And know, of all our supercilious race, Thou most inflammable, thou wasp of men, Man's angry heart, inspected, would be found, As rightly set, as are the starry spheres, Tis nature's structure, broke by stubborn will, Breeds all that uncelestial discord there. Wilt thou not feel the bias nature gave? Canst thou descend from converse with the skies and seize thy brother's throat? For what, a clod, an inch of earth? The planets cry, forbear. They chase our double darkness, nature's gloom, and, kinder still, our intellectual night. And see, Day's amiable sister sends her invitation in the softest rays of mitigated luster, courts thy sight, which suffers from her tyrant brother's blaze. 
Night grants thee the full freedom of the skies, nor rudely reprimands thy lifted eye with gain and joy. She bribes thee to be wise. Night opes the noblest scenes and sheds an awe which gives those venerable scenes full weight and deep reception in the intended heart. While light peeps through the darkness like a spy, and darkness shows its grandeur by the light. Nor is the profit greater than the joy if human hearts and glorious objects glow, and admiration can inspire delight. What speak I more than I this moment feel? With pleasing stupor first the soul is struck, Stupor ordained to make her truly wise, Then into transport starting from her trance. With love and admiration how she glows, This gorgeous apparatus, this display, This ostentation of creative power, This theater, what eye can take it in? By what divine enchantment was it raised? For minds of the first magnitude to launch in endless speculation and adore one sun by day, by night, ten thousand shine and light us deep into the deity. How boundless in magnificence and might! Oh, what a confluence of ethereal fires! Form urns unnumbered down the steep of heaven, streams to a point, and centers in my sight, nor tarries there, I feel it at my heart, my heart at once, it humbles and exalts, lays it in dust and calls it to the skies, who sees it unexalted or unawed, who sees it and can stop at what is seen, material offspring of omnipotence, inanimate all animating birth. Work worthy him who made it, worthy praise, all praise, praise more than human, nor denied, thy praise divine. But though man, drowned in sleep, Withholds his homage, not alone I wake. Bright legions swarm unseen and sing unheard by mortal ear, the glorious architect in this his universal temple hung with lustres with innumerable lights that shed religion on the soul at once. The temple and the preacher Oh, how loud it calls devotion, genuine growth of night. Devotion, daughter of astronomy, an undevout astronomer, is mad. True, all things speak a god, but in the small, men trace out him. In great, he seizes man, seizes and elevates, and wraps, and fills, with new inquiries, mid associates new. Tell me, ye stars, ye planets, tell me all, ye starred and planeted inhabitants, what is it? What are these sons of wonder? Say, proud arch, within those azure palaces they dwell, built with Divine ambition, in disdain of limit built, built in the taste of heaven. Vast concave, ample dome, wast thou designed a meet apartment for the deity? Not so that thought alone thy state impairs, thy lofty sinks, and shallows thy profound and straightens thy diffusive, dwarfs the whole, 
and makes a universe an orrery. But when I drop mine eye and look on man, thy right regained, thy grandeur is restored. O oh, nature, wide flies of the expanding round, as when whole magazines at once are fired, the smitten air is howled by the blow. The vast displosion dissipates the clouds. Shocked, shocked ethers below's dash the distant skies. Thus, but far more, the expanding round flies off and leaves a mighty void. A spacious womb might teem with new creation, re-inflamed thy luminaries triumph, and assume divinity themselves. Nor was it strange, matter high wrought to such surprising pomp, such godlike glory, stole the style of gods from ages dark obtuse and steeped in sense for sure to sense they truly are divine and half absolved idolatry from guilt nay turned it into virtue such it was in those who put forth all they had of man unlost to lift their thought nor mounted higher, but weak of wing on planets perched, and thought what was their highest must be their adored. But they how weak who could no higher mount, and are there then, Lorenzo, those to whom unseen and unexistent are the same? And if incomprehensible is joined who dare pronounce it madness to believe why has the mighty builder thrown aside all measure in his work stretched out his line so far and spread amazement over the whole then as he took delight in wide extremes deep in the bosom of his universe, dropped down that reasoning might, that insect, man, to crawl and gaze and wonder at the scene, that man might ne'er presume to plead amazement for disbelief of wonders in himself. Shall God be less miraculous than what his hand has formed? Shall mysteries descend from unmysterious? Things more elevate, be more familiar? Uncreated lie, more obvious than created, to the grasp of human thought? The more of wonderful is heard in him, the more we should assent. Could we conceive him? God he could not be, or he not God? or we could not be men. A god alone can comprehend a god. Man's distance, how immense, on such a theme. Know this, Lorenzo, seem it near so strange. Nothing can satisfy but what confounds. Nothing but what astonishes is true. The scene thou seest attests the truth I sing, and every star sheds light upon thy creed. These stars, this furniture, this cost of heaven, if but reported, thou hadst ne'er believed, but thine eye tells thee the romance is true. The grand of nature is the Almighty's oath, in reason's court, to silence unbelief. How my mind, opening at this scene, imbibes 
the moral emanations of the skies. While not, perhaps, Lorenzo less admires, has the great sovereign sent ten thousand worlds to tell us he resides above them all in glory's unapproachable recess? And dare earth's bold inhabitants deny the sumptuous, the magnific embassy a moment's audience? Turn we, nor will hear, from whom they come or what they would impart, from man's emolument, sole cause that stoops their grandeur to man's eye. Lorenzo, rouse. Let thought awakened take the lightning's wing, and glance from east to west, from pole to pole, who sees but is confounded or convinced? Renounces reason or a god adores? Mankind was sent into the world to see. Sight gives the signs needful to their peace. That obvious signs asks small learning's aid. Wouldst thou on metaphysic pinions soar? Or wound thy patience amid logic thorns, or travel history's enormous road. Nature no such hard task enjoins. She gave a make to man, directive of his thought, a make set upright, pointing to the stars, as who shall say, read thy chief lesson there. Too late to read this manuscript of heaven, when, like a parchment scroll, shrunk up by flames, it folds Lorenzo's lesson from his sight. Lesson, how various! Not the God alone. I see his ministers. I see diffused in radiant orders, essences sublime, of various offices, of various plume, in heavenly liveries, distinctly clad, azure, green, purple, pearl, or downy gold, or all comixed, they stand with wings outspread, listening to catch the master's least command, and fly through nature ere the moment ends. Numbers innumerable, well conceived by pagan and by Christian, or each sphere presides an angel to direct its course and feed or fan its flames, or to discharge other high trusts unknown. For who can see such pomp of matter and imagine? Mind. End of section nine, part one. Recording by Anya E.